Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Unibet Open here in Cannes, in the south of France. Uh, we are on day 1B. We're just starting level 3. The blinds are 75 150. I'm sat here with one of our Unibet ambassadors, none other than Dan Glimner. Yes, the man himself, or whatever you prefer to call <laughs> it, that bastard. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're a lovely guy, Dan. Don't you worry about that. Thank you, Graham. <laughs> All right, the tech guys are surrounding us, connecting stuff to each and everything, the iPad. Let's see what comes up on it. But anyway, it's day 1B here at the Unibet Open in Cannes. And of course, all the puns and jokes are like hailstorms. <laughs> can we do that? Yes, can we can. And so on. Yes, we can. <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. We'll have the names on the feature table in a few seconds. But in the meantime, how many starters are we today? I can't see the number from I here. think it's 160. 160. Uh, from what I can see, we had 145 yesterday. That's right, yeah. Out of which 47 survived into day two. Yeah, that's right. Um, we do have late registration until the end of level four. Uh, for the first four hours, normally That's two hours with late, the event, but it's a late, late registration, yeah. Um, so with a bit of luck, we may make, uh, make out a few more buy-ins or right. more entries. Um, but yeah, it's still, it's still a pretty good turnout. We've had over, over 300 now. Okay, so I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, it's, it's, a good, it's a good turnout. But it's a long way to slog it all the way to the final table on Sunday. It is, it is. And it's this, I spoke to some of the Swedes at the break, and they're... I mean, they're tagging along at 16k, 17k, and 18k, complaining, slow table, getting nowhere, etc. It's you know what, Don, uh, to get through. We had a table last night for three hours where no play happened at all. It was a situation where it was check, bet, fold, check, bet, fold, check, bet, fold, all the way through. Oh, wow. For that, about, that for about two, two hours, 30 minutes in total. And then in the last 30 minutes, it went crazy. Uh -huh. So we had not eliminations, double eliminations, <laughs> double ups and everything. Um, I wonder why. Okay, I think so. I think it's something to do with the fact that they want to uh, obviously have a lot of chips going into day two. It's fascinating uh, how the dynamics of a table can change in the blink of an eye like that. Yeah, of course. From a slow slog and yeah. suddenly everybody's going crazy. Ulyanik sounds like he's, well, Polish, Russian, white Russian, whatever. Don't All right, forget. everything is getting powered up around us. The monitors, the iPad, etc. We're going to keep you up to date as much as possible. We're still waiting for the list of the names here at the feature table. See what nationalities they are and so on. Anyway, I can tell you there's at least one Swedish guy, the guy with the sunglasses, sitting over there in a t-shirt. That's Daniel Barry from Sweden, who was, well, some 1670k, something like that at the break. Seems like most of the people are at 1670k when you hear them come yeah. at the break. <laughs> well, I've just posted up on the chat box there that uh, myself and Dan are the, are the commentators today, so... Uh, we do hope you enjoy today. Um, if you do have any questions for Dan, if you have any questions with regards to the tournament itself, any players you want to follow, um, anything at all. Um, yes, please. Any reasonable questions, welcome. Yeah, of course. Um, we also have the, the Twitter feed as well. So we're using at Unibet Open. Um, I'll be monitoring that along with Ramco Not today. Not Unibet Can. Uh, the hashtag we're using is going to be Unibet Can. Okay, because I was using that when I was posting my tweets. Ah, okay. Uh, at Unibet Open, ideally, and then hashtag Unibet Can. Okay, both of them then. Yeah. All right. So, if you want to get in touch on on, on, on Twitter, you can do that. That's not a problem. Um, and again, obviously, we do have our Facebook page as well. Uh, Remco is monitoring that all day. Um, we'll be asking a couple of questions, giving some um, giving some goodie bags away. We had a winner yesterday of a goodie bag. Um, I actually won it myself. Oh, you did? But because hey. I'm working, I can't claim it. <laughs> no. The, the question was, who, has the, who would have the most chips at the end of day 1A? Ah, yeah. You and picked the And I said right 241,000, and it was actually 243. Oh. oh, you had to pick the number. You had to pick I the see. figure, yeah. So I was the closest. Yeah, I saw the, that. Uh, that was Paul Tadish. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 243,000 yeah. something. And I mean, he featured how, on our How do you run 20K into 243K in 10 hours? Well... It's like we need the lottery. <laughs> I said yesterday um, I would expect somebody to go crazy right at the end and have two big stacks fight against each other, trying for that dominance for day one. But you're supposed to stay away there. from the other big you're stacks supposed if you to. get one yourself. You are supposed to, but that never happens, does it? So, okay, uh, yeah, share hand, tournament series. Oh, here we have. Well, we have the iPad in hand at the moment. 
with the oh thank you natalie here we are oh we have all the nationalities oh we have two sweets at the table yay well seat one that's ronnie espenson from denmark seat two that's patrick hedelin from sweden seat three that's frank buma or duma whichever it is yeah country from netherlands in any case then we Jani Rasinen from Finland, seat number four. We have Lennart's chef, I think it's, well, I can't read the handwriting perfectly, but Lennart's <laughs> chef, I think, from the Netherlands, seat five. We have British player Jeff Ansel, in seat number six. We have Ulya Uyanik, I can't read the first name, Snat, Swat? <laughs> it looks like snot, but it's snot. No, it's not going to be snot. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Uyanik, seat Uyanik, number seven, yeah, from wherever he is, and Daniel Barry in seat number eight. And that's the count at the moment. We'll also have those names on the screen for you as well, normally just their surnames, um, so you can get a better idea of which player is which. We also have the chip stacks as well underneath. Um, so yeah, when you're following the action, you can actually see how much they have behind, um, who their players are, and kind of uh, how much they bet as well. Yeah, so you can see the action pretty automated. I have yeah, absolutely. That. Yeah. Interestingly enough. Thankfully, they need a bit of personality over the microphone. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, <laughs> yeah, we'd be out of a job then. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Computer commentators. Well, looking at the chip stacks, seat number one, that's uh, Esperson, 20.7k, is it? And then we have Patrick Hedelin. That's 21.5 in seat number two. Frank Duma, 17.7, .7, seat number three. Jani Rasinen, 15.3, seat number four. That's, oh, Leonard's chef, there we have it. 23K, seat number five. Jeff Ansel, 22.5K, seat number six. We have Suat Uyanik, 24.2. Seat number seven, and seat number eight, Daniel Barry, 17.5. No doubt we'll have the chip stacks up on the screen as well as we go by. Well, the game is on, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for tuning in, all you listeners and viewers out there. And like I said, are we having any questions so far, Graham? Uh, just about how many players there have been so far in day 1B. I've wrote around 160 so far. Yeah. Um, I've also just posted up there for you guys listening at home the actual chip counts. Uh, what, the, what each chip's value is worth. Um, so the green chip is 25, the black chip is 100, the blue chip, uh, sorry, the red chip is 500, the blue chip, uh, the turquoise chip is 1000, and the yellow chip is 5000. Yeah, that's right. Um, so if the, uh, if the graphics don't appear on the screen at any time, um, you can actually see the number of chips. There we go. Oh, there Thank we you very much. Thank you very much. How good are our technical guys? They're, they're that's the best. Action. Yeah. As you uh, can at see the, the numbers very we clearly. don't have the 10,000 chips or the 25,000 chips in play at the moment. No, they will be switched in day two. Uh, probably day two, yeah, when we do the chip ups. Well, thanks. The graphics department took that one beautifully. They did, yeah. Without any. Absolutely. Thank you, any guys. Inclination. Yeah, yes. Well done, guys. That was fantastic. There's a bit of action backstage here as well with the press corps sitting there hammering away at their laptops, bringing you all the latest news. But so far, I mean, day 1B more or less just started. We're into level 3, 7,550 blinds. And well, everybody's sort of hunkering down and trying to survive. We do have a question. What is the name of the player in, in seat 7? Um, in seat 7, that's... We're not 100% sure. Suat Uyanik, according to this iPad. Suat. So it's Suat, so S-U-A-T, U -A -T, U -A -T, Uyanik. Yeah. <laughs> but we haven't been able to find out his nationality yet. Suat sounds Finnish. No, not really. Do you not think so? No, Uyanik. It sounds more like he's from the Baltic states. Or he's French. <laughs> he's French. <laughs> Just been told he's French. Uyanik. A great player, yeah. Apparently. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Thank I'll you write to that one. Thank you very much. We appreciate that, that info. And France it is. Okay. There we have it. We have the piece of paper in front of us. There we are. Yeah, we do have Antoine on the French stream at the moment, so uh, if you do have any questions at all for Antoine as well, you can get them on the unibet.fr uh, blog. Um, there is a live stream on there in French, 
And also, um, if you have any questions in French, which we may not be able to answer, uh, <laughs> not Antoine, in French anyway. Antoine will jump in there and, and give us a help. Uh, All right. We both worked 10 levels solid yesterday, and we're, we're prepared for today as well. So let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do, Graeme. So how did day one A go for you yesterday, Dan? Unfortunately, busted in level five. I got my second pair of the entire day, jack-jack. And just like it happened when I picked up my first pair an hour earlier, I had 10-10, I got outflopped by deuce-deuce. Ouch. And this time I had jack-jack and got outflopped by 9-9. <laughs> oh, dear. To make a long story short. Yeah, no, no, not great. <laughs> no, it, it wasn't my day. Besides, I... Partly my fault. I overplayed the jack jack anyway. So. Yeah, but if you overplay it and then you get it in good against 10 10, or did you get it in on the flop? Or? I got it in. It was after the turn actually. It was a ah. bit of drama. So yeah, I had an over pair, but he got me out flopped immediately, of course, hitting the nine. And I wasn't quite. It was the second loosest player at the table, this French guy. Right, right. He busted eventually during the rest of the day anyway. So. I wonder where my chips are. Bagged up, of course. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you'd like to keep track of exactly where your chips are for the rest of the tournament. Changing hands and so on. Probably a bit of philosophy over there. We've been asked by JD, where can you find the full entry list or the list of chip counts? You At the UnibetOpen.com website. That's correct. Short answer. I just posted the link up. It's unibetopen.com uh, forward slash events forward slash can 2013. Yeah, look around that one. You'll find all the chip count pages and so on. That's look right. under the tournament, not in the live poker updates. And down there it says chip counts and prizes. You'll find everything. It hasn't been updated after the last break, but I do know that they are doing that right now. Um, if you do have any friends or family playing in the event, uh, what I'd like you to do is basically post up their name, um, maybe if you, if you have their, their, their ID, play their ID card, uh, post up their ID, and then we can try and find out kind of how they're doing for you to make your experience a bit more uh, pleasurable, really. And follow Absolutely your friends. at your service, madam yeah. or sir, as the case may be. And don't forget on Sunday, if you want a piece of the action for the next Unibet Open in December, there is the Sunday final running for Riga. Yeah, that's going to be fantastic again. I know, it's, it's a bit strange to say, it's surrounded by sun outside here by the Mediterranean, but Christmas shopping in Riga in December is actually quite an experience. Yeah, it would be, um, if you can get away from the, the cold and the snow. And no, no, I enjoy the cold <laughs> and the snow, I was born and raised in Sweden. Exactly, yeah. And it's yeah. a beautiful city to walk around in, in the Christmas time. Well, it will be my first time visiting, so I'm, I'm looking forward to ah. it. Been there a couple of times and it's, it's enjoyable. It's one of those lovely cities with the medieval core. Yeah. Really. From where I'm sitting, I can see the Dutch poker ambassador, Universe Ambassador Paul Valkenberg sitting over there. And he has his wife, well, formerly they're not married, but, and their 10 year old, 10 week old, so, sorry, 10 week old son with him, Oscar. And he's the centre of attention at the moment. <laughs> he is, he is. He's a lovely baby as well. He's a cute kid. Absolutely lovely, yeah. Congratulations to uh, Mr. and Mrs. Valkenberg. Yes, that's right. Anna and Paul. I think he posted the picture on Facebook um, a few days after the baby was born, and it went global. Everybody was <laughs> posting up, congratulations, <laughs> congratulations. And, uh, yeah, hundreds of likes, hundreds of comments, and... Well, well deserved. Yeah, absolutely. Besides, absolutely. Paul and Anna are two of the nicest people I know. So. Yeah, I've, I've been lucky enough to spend a few times uh, commentating with Paul, uh, speaking to him outside in the casino as well. And a thoroughly nice guy. Absolutely, absolutely fantastic. Through yeah. and through. And when I spoke to Anna yesterday, he said that Paul is turning out to be a fantastic father. He really grew into the road yeah. very quickly. So, kudos. It's one of those things, you, when you have a child, you have no other option but to, to learn very fast. Ah, uh, well, let's see, there's a small percentage of people who yeah, don't live up to that, absolutely, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I remember from when my daughter was born. You had to sort of partly grow up in a hurry. Yeah, exactly. Well, there we have Ronnie Espenson sitting in seat number one, thinking about it at the moment. And you have Patrick Hiddelin sitting there beside him, seat number two, from Sweden. 
And Espenson's one of our uh, Munibet Open team DK members, isn't he? He's uh, I think so, one of the yeah, team pros, so yeah. If memory serves me right. Yeah. Note that they have a black dealer button here in France. Yeah, that everywhere else can. they're white, aren't they? That's I know that. It was a bit strange. Well, in Malta, one of the casinos, they have beautiful pieces of glass. They're actually sculptured glass pieces. Wow. I got a couple of photos of those. I'd love to have one of those for my collections. So, but usually they're white, but some yeah, yeah. for some strange reason they're black here. I don't know why. Okay, Espenson bets out. I think that's a four bet, isn't it? We've had uh, Anaras has made the three bet to 1200. Four bet to 26 k four bet to 26. So um, we are playing the um, double the double the size bet here in France. That's the rule over here. So the next bet must be a minimum of 52, uh, 5,200. There's no difference between the bet sizes. It has to be double the, okay. the original bet. But you can raise a few more players. than that. Yeah, course. you can raise more than that, of course, yeah. yeah. Um, but it has confused a few players who normally raise the difference between the two bets. Yeah, exactly. Now they have the to minimum raise, raise. double. Yeah. yeah. And we're also playing the first card off the deck rule. If you're not sat down on your seat, yeah, I saw that. Dealt, you don't get yeah, the they hand. didn't enforce it 100% at my table yesterday. I mean, if somebody flopped down into the seat while his second yeah, or third yeah. car was in the air, that was okay. It's one Nobody of those situations. It's, yeah. you know. Yeah, we're all gentlemen and ladies. At least That's we try right. to be. Everybody likes to have the rules enforced, but there is common sense as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, know, you the can't the be sticking for the last, don't play up, you know, the last decimal of the percentages. Yeah. There'll be a lot of players who have transitioned from the online satellites to playing live as well, maybe for the first time. And you have to obviously uh, compensate for that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I mean, we have to, will you be have made. to keep it a friendly game. Yeah, of course. We're That's only human at the end of the day. Exactly. It's unusually quiet out there in the competition room. Yesterday was a bit noisy. We had uh, a lot of players kind of who knew each other. Um, having a good, you know, good laugh and carry on, good, not a good conversation. But you're right, today seems... Yeah, it seems more like... Very somber, very... Exactly, somber, yeah. that's the word I was looking for. And usually there's less conversation than normal at the feature table. Yesterday we had a dealer, one of the um, blonde female dealers. She was very Hang active, on there. very chatty. We have somebody called Anaris. Yeah. I can't find that person. In the list, I presume he is seat nine. Is he? he? Must be seat nine by the looks of things. All right, we'll have to keep track of that. Yeah, just says on our iPad, seat number nine, and that's it. We do have a flop here. Um, three, ten, four, rainbow. There's doesn't look like an action flop. Well, pending further investigation, I'll write down the name Anaras in seat number nine. Well, it seems like it just had a ninth player added to the table to mix things up. At the moment, that's Patrick Kiddelin from Sweden sitting in the dark sunglasses over there. It looks more like he's taking part in a business meeting than anything else. We've got one of our other English players on the... Uh, there's two actually English guys playing today. Uh, Kevin Frame. He just posted up on Twitter that his um, highlights so far. He uh, did a cold 4-bet through with 7-2 off. Um, and got it through. And there's been a guy at the moment who's virtually falling asleep at the table. Uh huh. So not very many exciting plays happening on that table. I spoke to one of the Swedish guys, I won't say whom, but you actually fell asleep at the table because there was so little happening. <laughs> Just for a few short seconds, but still. I mean, you can't a very exciting game, right? <laughs> he was picking up no hands, nothing was happening, so he literally fell asleep. Yeah, that had to be Anaris at the far left at the moment in the picture. Sitting to the left of Daniel Barry in the speckled t-shirt. 
Yeah, it must be, yeah. Because he's, well, he's the only one we didn't have a name for, so... Yeah. Um, well, that's the only thing we have, the name Anaras. We have no idea of which nation he's representing. Let me have a look. Uh, yeah, we'll go to the old hand on mob database. And go for Anaras and see what happens. That looks like him. He has big hair and a Yeah, beard, so absolutely. And he's Bulgarian or... Lithuanian. Lithuanian. Aha. Uh -huh. Does have well, quite sorry, a good record his, here. Um, what's his first name? No, his first name is Anaras. Alek Barovas. Alek Barovas. His notable result, he was uh, first in the Masters final presented by EPT in Dortmund uh, for 45,000 euros. He did actually finish, um, well, have a bigger, bigger win. Uh, he was fourth um, in the EPT main event in Barcelona in 2012 and won 301,000 euros. Well, he has a list of credits there, absolutely. Yeah. And he was most recently, back at the start of the month, 13th in the EPT Barcelona main event for just short of 60,000 euros. Not a beginner by any means no, at all. No, so yeah, a pretty good player, yeah. He looks a bit like you, Jackman, as the Wolverine. <laughs> Slightly, slight resemblance. A bit younger, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, we once we all were. Okay, seems to be doing good so far. Remember, the chips to keep track of basically are the light blue ones, one thousand each, and the yellow ones, which are five thousand each. That'll give you a clue. And the red ones are five hundred each. And that is Suat Uyanik in the jeans jackets, denim jacket over there. We've got uh, Ronnie S. Benson um, in seat one. Notable result uh, for, for Ronnie was um, 14th in the Paradise Poker Tour um, in London in 2010. Won just over two and a half, well, sorry, 2,200 pounds. Um, no other big wins anywhere near that. One is, um, yeah. Looks to be like Scored a, a couple of cashes in Vienna yeah, yeah. as well. Yeah. Megastack Series Las Vegas. Well, well, a modest but still existing record for him. That's right, yeah. <laughs> so it's Hedelin in the picture at the moment, Sweden versus Ansel. Do you pronounce it Ansel or Ansel? Uh, Ansel, I think, Ansel. Uh, well, depending yeah. on how you... Yeah, with the double L at the end. Yeah, Ansel, yeah. Ansel. I don't have any information on Patrick Hedlin uh, or Frank No, Duma. to tell you the truth, this is not a familiar name, Patrick Hedlin. Does it exist on the... Uh, no, he's not on the Hedlin mob. Uh, All right. Maybe it's just a recreational player. Well, yes and yes, but still. Yeah, Swedish businessman is what we're getting told, yeah. All right. Um, Jani uh, Rasinen, um, he won the Partouche Poker Million in Portugal, the 3,000 euro buy-in, he for 57,000 euros. He has t three other notable caches, EPT Barcelona, IPT San Remo. Um, well, and a few good finishes. And also That's another right. one. Uh, <laughs> Oh, the Puff Poker Challenge. There will not be many people have a flag from Afghanistan. <laughs> no, that's the Orland flag. What? They put in the wrong flag for him. <laughs> yeah, they put Afghanistan. That's a fantastic that's flag ridiculous. to have. Orland has their own flag. <laughs> I mean, it's blue with a yellow cross in the middle, and the yellow cross is uh, edged by a red thin line. That's what the Orland flag looks like. I want an Afghanistan flag on my record. <laughs> there will not be many players have one of those. No, but that's the wrong one. Flag anyway. hunting, yeah. <laughs> um, who else can we check? Daniel Berg? You'll find dozens of Bergs, I'm sure. I know, that was the wrong move, wasn't it?
Does it go for both names, the hen, hen and mob database? Uh, well, I can search for Berg, but like you said, there's about 1,600 Bergs. So, <laughs> um, Berg means mountain in Swedish. Yeah, 1,646. So we're probably not going to find him very easily. Not that quick, you know. <laughs> so we'll leave Daniel for now. Um, well, he's a steady name with the Swedish circuits. No big caches as far as I know. It's a number of minor ones. There he is. Oh, Suat Uyanik. First from in France. the Hold'em series, 3,000 euro buy-in in Paris for 157,000. Yes, Most of them seem to be in France to finish this on yeah. the handle model. 157,000 euros is his biggest by the looks of things. That's the Moroccan flag, even. Yeah, that's one uh, ex colony. WPT uh, Chili Poker Festival in Marrakesh. He does have a EPT Grand Final Monte Carlo side event uh, nice, win nice. for seven thousand six hundred euros. But mainly, by the looks of things, places think plays his poker in France. Um, yeah, he's got quite a nice little record here, though. Total wins of just over five hundred thousand dollars. That's good. Yeah. If you look closely, by the way, when this dealer is dealing, just before he has a very interesting variation of the Skarn Cut. Take a look at that again. When he divides the deck into three parts and restacks it differently, and then makes a normal cut, and then he deals the cards. Oh. Check it again for the next hand. You can pick up a few pointers there. Or it's nice to add to your repertoire this variation of the Skarn Cut. Well, the French player, player Uyanik, has quite a long list of finishes in France, mostly. Yeah. But Daniel Berg makes the call. Mainly in Paris, by the looks of things, for uh, Uyanik. HGX6. And don't forget for you guys at home, if you do have any, any information on any of these players, Make sure it's real, though. Uh, do let us know. And we can uh, let the other viewers know. Absolutely. Add to our knowledge. We'd appreciate that. So we've got a puck developing of 2,600 here. Between Anaras and Uyanik. Should actually be Alec Berovas. Or is it one of those where you put the names in the other way around, like the Polish players do? Usually you have the first name in the front, but they do it the other way around. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's stick with Anaras for now, anyway. Yeah, that's, that should be okay, shouldn't it? So the tennis spades on the river completes a number of uh, straight draws there. Absolutely. Could yeah. no flush do wonders for somebody. Yeah. Do you need to register to see the live stream? Um, no, you, you don't. Um, you can register to chat, which you've, um, you can do via Twitter or Facebook. Um, I'll put your details in. Um, I would check your, your own settings, your flash settings and anything else, just to see whether it's that. Um, possibly just refresh and keep trying that. No other video is running at the moment. Um, apologies if you can't see it for some reason. Yannick folds. Yeah. And the um, pot goes to Anaris. From Lithuania. Yeah. 
So how have you been since the last time we spoke? Uh, I think it was in Copenhagen, wasn't it? You were That's right. You were nope. travelling yeah, over Copenhagen. to Hong Kong, was that right? Was I think, yeah. Yes, I was on my way to Hong Kong on the day of the final table, actually. So I spent a couple of days in Hong Kong and Macau. And then, well, been travelling to all sorts of places. I was at the World Series of Poker in Las Vegas this summer. Spent the usual three weeks on the uh, ar islands in the archipelago outside western Sweden. Yeah. Which is a very nice holiday. And, well, it's back in the saddle. Not charging, it says on the iPad for some reason. I'm going to try and figure this one out. Well, we're surrounded by all sorts of high-tech stuff. Screens up there on the wall, laptop in front of Graham. I have an iPad in my lap at the moment. So we can follow it hand by hand. But it is not charging for some reason. No, it's going to die on us sooner or later. Well, I don't know why, but that's an advantage with an ordinary standard book. It doesn't need to be charged <laughs> every now and then. Yeah. You don't need to plug a book in the wall, do you? Yeah, I probably sound like an old dinosaur <laughs> saying it. But <laughs> so we have a little interesting five-way pot here. No yeah, doubt that flop will be very obvious. This happens, is it? Yeah. Nope. Well, we just got the. Our iPad was just downgraded into a mini iPad here. <laughs> I sh should have brought my reading glasses. Like we said, it's a very uh, slow and quiet feature table, that one. I haven't heard a single piece of conversation since we started. It does seem very, very quiet. No doubt, they're all concentrating on surviving. Besides, we're on the feature table. You don't want to be shown screwing up your moves in front <laughs> of the whole world. Exactly, yeah. That does obviously affect a lot of players as well, doesn't it? Where they kind of uh, they know that they're getting watched. <laughs> it does. It if gets you're, if to you're a nervous actually. player to start with, then it's never yeah, going to yeah, be great. Yeah, it does get to something. I remember we were taping the Poker Million show in Sweden a couple of years back, sponsored by Univets. And at one of the qualifying events, I mean, you had a number of qualifying events and then a final, final table. Yeah. So, heads up, you had a Swedish actress, well known, and he, she was up against a uh, internet qualifier, a young guy, unused to playing in front of people. And just in f at the, as the heads up was going to start, this actress, this lady, Magdalena, she gives him a real sunny smile, the other guy, and he says, you know that all your friends and relatives back home in Exville will be watching this right now, right? <laughs> and he froze up completely. Really? Yeah, he didn't <laughs> want to be seen screwing up or being bluffed or anything like that. So he did all the wrong things at the wrong time. <laughs> that was a beautiful piece of psychology. Okay, let's follow that dealer shuffling the cards. First of all, the soothsayer shuffle. This is called, come on, get it back, we can see that. For any of my friends back at home, um, listening or tuning in, um, if any of you are near the Manchester area at the moment, there's a, basically a, another poker tour, poker tour going on at the moment, um, which has, <laughs> at the moment, you can register until 7 p.m., but at the moment there's a £100,000 overlay. Wow. It is a £1,000 entry. If you're in the Manchester area. If you're in the Manchester area, there's a £100,000 overlay. Okay, sorry we missed. I was going to demonstrate how that special cut worked, but uh, we'll be showing it later. We'll check sure. it next, yeah. Yep. I'll make a point to speak to Patrick Hedelin in seat number two, that Swedish businessman, at the next break. I'm just curious. Never seen him, never heard of him so far. No doubt the recreational player.
And getting back to yesterday, day 1A, there was a French player coming out ahead at the end of the day with 243,000. And that's a, an enormous amount. That was Paul Tadesh, by the way. That's right, yeah. Paul was on our feature table yesterday for a while. Um, did look a very solid player, um, very capable player. I'm sure he is, but yeah. you need luck as well. And nobody runs up 12 times the size of the starting <laughs> stack. On on I just did say, alone. though, I did mention it, that I would expect two big stacks to go head-to-head. -head and that was the one? For dominance, basically. Um, I don't know if that happened, because um, he was off our feature table when he, well, by the sounds of it, but when he amassed his stack. Um, but yeah, he, I'm finding now, while, while watching a lot of poker, you do get a couple of big stacks always wanting to fight it out to be the dominant stack going into day two. When normally you would settle back, you've got a massive stack, you don't need to fight. You don't need to worry about it. No. But you want to be that number one chip leader. You can't win it on day one, but you can have a great start of day two. You can. Well, on the other hand, you can sure as hell lose it on day Which one. is what somebody must have done. I, I, it can't be on the other way, Dan. It's to, like you say, to, to bring your stack from 20,000 to 240,000, that's... Phenomenal. I've seen statistics from the main event of the World Series of Poker. They're very good at keeping records over there. And it shows that if you're the chip leader at the end of day one, you have about a 50-50 chance of making it into the money. No really? better than that, yeah. But remember, it's a much longer event. Yeah, of course. Of course. The World Series of Poker main event. So it's good to be ahead of at the end of day one, but nevertheless, it's only a 50-50 chance of making it into the money. I read a story... Um on one of the poker uh, websites. I don't know if it's 100% true, but I heard that a player actually sat out for the whole of day one of the World Series of Poker main event, went through to day two with about six or 7,000 chips somehow, came in first hand and tripled up. And tripled up. And made day three. And that takes luck. And then and what? He went for a long break I don't again. Know, he <laughs> didn't cash or he didn't uh, do very much, but <coughs> to make day three by playing, you know, Less than a day and a half. I know it's possible now with yeah. the structure they have to survive into day two, it's two without up. doing Is it anything. Two hour blinds, or yeah, but yeah. still, you, you're going to lose seventy-five or eighty percent of your stack. Yeah, yeah. Which is not an inviolable pos position to start day two. No, absolutely not. That's for sure. Oh, it's so quiet at the feature table. They all seem hunkered down into the seats. No conversation. <laughs> Just cautiously watching each other. Sharks circling around the waters. People are asking for the password for the free roll this evening. Um, we are going to start showing that live on the air for you. I will give you the courtesy of telling you it now, though. Uh, it is Golden Palm. I will post that in the chat box for you. Golden Palms. What Golden happened palm. to Riga 1, 2, 3? <laughs> 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 they decided to spice up a little variety. There you go. So it's in the, it's in the chat box now. Password is Golden Palm. Uh, don't ask me if it's all capitals or not, um, or uppercase, lowercase. I really don't know. Um, try, try, try it out. You, you'll get there eventually. But there is a uh, blank between the two words. Or yeah. is it one word? It's all one word. Golden Palm. Golden Palm. One word. No blanks, no hyphens. No spaces. Yeah, yesterday's we had a um, green carpet. Oh! In, in homage to the, uh, to the red carpet here in Cannes. Ah, uh -huh. um, which I pass every day walking from the hotel over to the casino and back again. And there are always people photographing each other in front of it. Or standing on it, of course. I'm, I'm going to get myself a photograph standing on the red carpet as well, I think. <laughs> Just for, you know, posterity and, you know. Just like 100,000 tourists every day. <laughs> they must well, change that carpet every yeah, week, surely. Uh, <laughs> they have to do this. But of course, it's the famous red carpets. We have all these movie stars walking every year during the Cannes Film Festival. Well, let's see if we can follow him now. Sue Shuffle, standing on ends. Doing the regular, splitting into two parts, doing a riffles, another riffle. This one you have to learn if you're not familiar with it already. And now watch the cut. Three parts, 
back and forth again. And the regular cat finishes it off, and beautiful. That's what you should learn. Well, well spotted, sir, well spotted. Well, there are a number of techniques for cutting a deck of cards. And for shuffling, of course, as well. We do have um, something special happening during the dinner break today as well. Uh, we've got a magician coming along. You had two of them actually, were you? Two of them yesterday. And they're coming in right up to the table, performing under your nose magic. Beautiful stuff. Cods disappear, <laughs> turn up in the most strange <laughs> places, etc. They no, open their wallet great, and yeah. they burst into flames and all set, that sort of stuff. They were very good. Very fast, very efficient. I've always been a fan of magic, I would say that. Yeah, I'll be looking forward to actually seeing that myself. Um, we were watching um, some, some magic tricks on, on YouTube yesterday with, uh, with Dynamo. I don't know if you know Dynamo at all no. from the UK. Uh, he was just walking across water, walking vertically down a, a building um, in for, for full, full view of everybody. Just steps off the building and walks away. Don't but know how we do that, but... But they have to stand in a certain spot, otherwise the illusion is crushed or yeah. something like that. Well, it's... There was people watching from different oh, yeah, angles. Never, never the from everywhere. It's beautifully done. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Very good indeed. And there we have it. The promotions. The bad beat guarantee. Graham, take it away. Uh, yeah. Um, during the first four levels of um, day one, if you are eliminated from the uh, main event and you also qualified online uh, through the Unibet satellites or bought in directly through the poker client, um, you will qualify to win a 275 euro seat to the next Sunday final. Um, you don't get that if you buy in at the casino or win a casino satellite, but if you're a Unibet player online and you qualify or buy in on the client um, and you get knocked out in the first four levels, there are five <coughs> seats on day 1A, five seats on day 1B. The first five qualifiers or direct buy-ins on the client who get knocked out in the first four levels will receive a satellite ticket to the next And there's some final. consolation for being yeah, knocked out. just to say, you know, it always hurts being knocked out, but at least yeah. you get something for it this time. Yeah. <coughs> and we do have our live streaming free rolls, which are um, every night um, of this main event series. We have one uh, tonight, which is at 7 p.m. in the UK, 8 p.m. in Central European time. Um, it is a free roll. You can rebuy, you can add on, you don't have to. Um, basically, there are seats to be given away to satellites. Um, where you could be joining us uh, in Riga. The minimum prize at the final table will, will be an 11 euro satellite ticket. Um, and I believe the winner gets a direct satellite ticket to the grand final on, on Sunday evening. Wonderful. That's so win your free roll, qualify in the top eight on Sunday, and you could be joining us in Riga. And you never know, you might have 100,000 euros Christmas presents. Into your account. Oh, wow, yeah. that's some lovely, Christmas presents. Yeah, yeah. That's for sure. For sure. Besides, like I said earlier, Riga is a wonderful, lovely city to visit in December. If you're really looking for winter festivities and the right mood, snow falling quietly in medieval streets, that's the place to go. Yeah, absolutely. That's Espensen from Denmark, betting out. No, he made the call, sorry. He made the call. So a little heads up between Ansel from Britain and Espensen from Denmark. That's Ansel in the striped shirt and the glasses. Carefully counting out his chips. Looks like he's not afraid to bet. That's 775. And that got Espenson to cash in.
When I was at the uh, Gamblers Book Club in Las Vegas, which is a, an enormously well-assorted bookshop for gambling literature, they had a poker book with the wonderful title, How Not to Lose Money at Poker. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was rather modest. <laughs> Usually you get all sorts of promises how to win, so how to not to lose money at poker. That was quite good. By winning. <laughs> or at least breaking even. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And they wrote a book on that? <laughs> yeah, on the theme anyway. I don't know, I didn't leave through it and did buy it, but I rather like the title. Reminds me of the old player's prayer, the classic one. Oh Lord, please let me break even tonight, so I need the money. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at the buy-ins for today so far, I believe there's been 166. 166. Can you see it from here? Just about. Just about. It's on okay. the screen over there, but it's All right. not the easiest and to that, to 145 read, yeah. from yesterday. So, yeah, we're up to uh, 311. And if I understand things correctly, of course the French are in the majority, home ground and all, but I think the Swedes are second. That's right. Um, I think around about 59.60, I think. That much? Yeah, I was informed around 45.50, at least yesterday, but okay. We'll hold the exact numbers until the records are in. But yeah. But we're, well, we're here in force. In it to win it, hopefully. It's normally the Dutchies, isn't it? The Dutchies. Oh, yeah, the, absolutely. In the polls, especially. Very well represented. A lot of the polls didn't turn up this week, uh, didn't qualify. Um, we were having a good laugh with them yesterday on, on the Twitter, oh, sorry, on the, um, on the live stream feed. I was sat with uh, Matthias Mulhausen, yeah. um, and he was having a good laugh with the guys because most of his Polish friends didn't qualify. Uh, Ooh, hurt. Yeah, the they're going to be in Riga, though, for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> That's fairly close for them. I mean, you can get in the car and drive over there. Yeah, yeah. Looks like a fairly uninspiring board. Well, see if you can follow the dealer shuffle again. That sh starting shuffling technique is called the soothsayer shuffle. When you just shuffle the cards around. That's the way you should shuffle tarot cards, according to tradition. Not riffling them, but doing the soothsayer shuffles. And you saw that special version of the cat again, and followed by the standard cat. Like I said, practice it. All is good in your next home game. Yeah. They'll think you're an absolute professional if you do that, though. <laughs> Probably. At least you can work as a dealer in the local casino. <laughs> Might get some good respect at home games. I noticed that Anaras in seat number nine is sitting slightly sideways. Like he really doesn't want to take part of the game. Does that tell us something psychologically? Uh, it could be something to do with the, f the feature table. Maybe he's trying to shy away from the lights. Or yeah, something like possibly. That. I, I was just know. wondering. Um, Everybody else yeah. is <laughs> facing squarely front, but not Anaris. Or probably just wants to stretch out his legs or something. <laughs> just looking at him now through the window here. And he's, uh, he is. He's very, very relaxed. Yeah, he doesn't like look like he's nervous or anything like no, that. No, he's so. sitting slightly sideways. He's, he is keeping an eye on the room as well, so he's, he is looking around quite a bit. <laughs> Interesting enough, I've seen any number of things going on with players uh, once they folded the hand or in the middle between the hands <laughs> and they're sitting on their iPads reading books or I've seen them actually reading uh, reports from companies <laughs> Those quarterly statements and so on, probably into the <laughs> stock market. I see people doing crosswords and everything else pretty much. But that is staying away from the concentration on the game, I think. That's a nice stack of chips on RSS. Over to Espenson, seat number one. We've been asked, who is the handsome Finnish playboy? I presume it's uh If you're talking Jani about Rasinen. the feature table, that's Jani Rasinen. I have no idea who he is, but I'm not that familiar with the Finnish poker scene. Not me neither. 
Gianni Rasinen in any case. He is the Sitting in seat number four at the yeah, feature table. He has the blue top on with the stripy <coughs> orange stripe <laughs> going through the shoulders and the arms uh, with his sunglasses on. Well, obviously has a number of fans out there calling him handsome, was it? Well, I've seen Matt Damon and Ben Affleck at the same table in Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose that fits the definition of Hansen. Is that at the, um, was it the Poker for Africa or was it? Or yeah, Poker for Africa, something like that. One yeah. of those uh, charity events during the World Series of Poker. Made. Yeah, I was there myself and, yeah. and seen all the, the big guys. Um, like you say, Ben Affleck, uh, Matt Damon. That was run by, was it Annie Duke who ran that? Mm, possibly, thinking? can't remember. Yeah. Quite a nice board developing there. Um, straight Three doors, straight doors. Yeah. You have a jack and a queen and an ace. And it was over as quickly as that. Well, well, well. Somebody had it and the others didn't. Did you hear about the um, the Royal Flush versus the Full House yesterday? Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah. We were watching the, the feature table, but we heard a cheer on the outside table. So we all stood up and had a look. Um, one gentleman had a Full House. One gentleman had a Royal Flush. That's right. It was a yeah. Finnish player, Jorma Vuoksenma, who did that one. And the worst thing was, as we were standing up watching what was going on on the outside table, Peter de Corva knocked out one of the players on the feature table, and we missed it. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, due to our hand replayer, uh, you can go back to any other hands you that you need to. You can check that again. Yeah, and we actually had to read the hand out to the players at home, uh, the viewers at home. So. Oh, they were interested, of course. Yeah, because you see it. a player leaving the table, you think, what, what's happened there? So, yeah. Uh, it was um, Hedgy, I think it was, one of our players, Hedgy was knocked out by Peter de Corva, uh, tens versus eights, and we totally missed the whole hand. That's a pity. Yeah. But that's rare. We don't often get royal straight flushes. No, not at all. I mean, basically, the odds, if you go through all the motions all the way to the river, it's one in 125,000, approximately, of having a royal straight flush in Texas Hold'em. And it says the satellite to the 550 deep stack has started yep, and it's started. looking good. Um, I'm going to actually go into the, um, the list of tournaments that we do have on offer for people if they want to come down to the casino. Uh, let's have a look for you. Yeah, because it's not just about the main events. You have a high roller tournament, you have a deep stack, you have a bounty, you have the freeze out on Sunday, and you have a number of satellites including flash satellites as they're called. Meaning basically it's a one-hand satellite, which is a lottery, nothing else. Yeah, so at the moment uh, we do have the satellite to the 550 deep stack. That is a 80 euro satellite uh, with one rebuy allowed. That started um, 20 minutes ago, you can still buy in I believe. Um, at 8pm this evening we do have the deep stack itself. It is a two-day event, 550 euros to buy in. And you can re-enter for the first four levels. And then later on this evening at 10 p.m., we have a 120 euro um, unlimited rebuy satellite to our high roller event. Oh yeah, that one. 2,300 is the basic yeah. buy-in for that one. 2,500 total with the reg fee. And that starts tomorrow at 5 p.m. So That's the first time we had a high roller event during Univet Open. They say it works out. I know there are a number of disappointed Swedes from day 1A who want to enter that <laughs> one, let me tell you. Do you think they'll find um, reasons to possibly either build their chips up very fast or look to leave and then play the big high roller? Is that a possibility where they... If they specifically have to have a, On a, the other a hand, small to there will be stack. more prize money altogether awarded in the main events oh, absolutely, than in yeah. the high roller. Yeah. So I think you still, you want to take a fair shot at the main event. Yeah, of course you do, yeah. But if you bust out, it's okay, you're going to stand in line. You can always come back in, yeah. Yeah.
So, anything in the chat box, Grim? Um, passwords for poker news satellites. Uh, you'll have to speak to Poker News about those. I'm yeah, that's right. We're not familiar uh, with those, I'm afraid. No. So talk to Poker News. I presume that must be a Poker News tournament on the Unibet yeah. Poker client. Send them an email or use their chat box or whatever yeah. they have. Equipment. Normally, Poker News is associated um, where they have tournaments just for their own registered players. Yeah. So you have to have signed up to Unibet via their own links. But again, we're, we're just speculating here. If you want any information on Poker News tournaments, you have to speak to Poker News, I'm afraid. Absolutely. Sorry, we can't help you there. Even if we knew, we couldn't tell you the answer. It's not our responsibility, sir. No, absolutely not. <coughs> so what are your future plans, then, Dan? Where are you going next? What's your... Any, any other poker trips coming up before Riga? Well, yes, there is going to the Swedish Championships at mid mid-October, down in Malta. We should look forward to Yeah, down in Malta. This the time. Swedish Championships in Malta? Yeah, because uh, we have this unfortunate situation with two competing Swedish Championships. One of them is run by the state-owned casino, a chain of four casinos. They sort of just reached out and took themselves the right to call it a Swedish Championship. But the old one, the classic Swedish Championship, which has been around since 1975, which is a long time back, in yeah. the, back though, then, in those days, it was five card row, which still exists. They have to have that one abroad, so you won't have the police knocking on the doors and closing <laughs> down the stuff. They held it twice in Sweden, actually, in these so-called black clubs, but usually it's abroad. So this time it's going to be in Malta. And I look forward to going down there. Two years ago, I was third in the Texas Hold'em Swedish Championship. Excellent. So, I feel like I've got something to defend. Yeah, absolutely. No, in fact, best of luck with that. Thank you. I can eat that. But that's the next poker trip coming up. And after that, I'm going to the largest games-related events on the planet. Do you know what that one is? I'm not sure. You have 150,000 people coming for that one, wow. which dwarfs anything. It's actually the Essen Games Fair down in Essen in Germany, in Western Germany. The Essener Spieltag, or Internationale Spieltag, as they're called. For four days, Thursday to Sunday, you have 150,000 games craze people coming to play card games, board games, role games, etc., etc., et wow. with each other, from about 100 countries. It's something that'll knock your socks off. If you imagine something like a big hangar, where you keep Boeing 747s, yeah, yeah. and then you add another 13 or 14 of them, so you have all this bunch of hangars with people are sitting <laughs> and playing. Then you're beginning to grasp the scale of the thing. Ah yes, we have another lesson coming up in cutting cards, and there you had it. And standard cut, and there you go. Check it out, ladies and gentlemen. We got Bolo in the... Uh in the chat box, one of our Polish players who didn't make it, just wasn't good enough. Um, he bubbled a satellite online. Oh, um, what happens in the best of families, as yeah. we say in Swedish? And he's obviously wishing uh, Matthias some good luck. And M. Matthias Mohusen is playing at the moment. Yeah, former winner for Unibet Open, and he made the final table in Copen. No, sorry, in uh, Troja, down in Portugal. And also in um, yeah Copenhagen and Troy, yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You made it back-to-back, you're he right. You did, yeah, yeah. You're right. And he was heads up, wasn't he? He was runner-up in, in Troy. Yes. And he was telling me yesterday he, he would really love to replay that final table. Oh, um, I'm, I'm sure he would. Especially the heads-up. He says he's not the greatest heads-up player, but everything that he did on the heads-up, he did it wrong. Oh, I'm so sorry he, to hear that. Yeah, he, he says, what I would love to do is put the trophy in the middle, not play for cash, put the trophy in the middle and we replay it. I'm not sure the owner of the trophy No, I don't think they that. would either, yeah. But it's a shame we haven't got the Polish guys here. We, uh, we love having fun with you guys, especially at the bar. You know how to drink, you guys do. Well, from day 1A, we had a Polish player in second place with about 100 and, what was it, 125,000, 130,000 chips. And that was Krzysztof Stichna something. Uh, Stuschlik. Stuschlik, yep. thank you. 
he played a very very good game yesterday on yeah. our on well, our feature second table. chips that says a lot yeah um <laughs> He took a lot of chips off uh, of, of two or three of the players on the feature table yesterday. He went up from 50k to 150k uh, in the last level alone, just by picking his spots. And they had in the background, that was the end of level three. We're now into level four with 100 and 200 blinds. And I think and we're obviously we're going to switch table. the feature table. Yeah. Yep. So if you wait a few seconds, we'll have a bunch of new players coming in and we'll Hopefully, we'll get their names and numbers, and we can tell you more about them. So that was it for now. Yeah, we'll have a couple of minutes break, um, and we'll see you in a few moments. Okay, absolutely. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are back um, after a little small pause there while we change the feature table. Uh, we are going to get some information on who the players are in a moment. At the moment, we have no idea who they are, I think. I've just been informed of uh, Antoine um, in, the, uh, in the French commentary that uh, we have a lot of old school French players on uh -huh. the table. Yes, that's so basically he's hoping for dominated by French. Yeah, yeah. He's hoping for a bit of excitement from the players. The guy in the silver suit there walking past. He is one of our uh, Express HD guys. Just in advising the players of what to do at the table, what not to do. The chairs look reasonably comfortable up there at the feature table. Yeah, they do, yeah. Which is a lot more than can be said for our chairs, Dan. <laughs> at the moment, no, we're not sitting very comfortably with. Dems the brakes. You have to take it. Something my, my grandma used to always say to me. When you're sitting on, on an uncomfortable chair, you get up and you have a numb bum. Numb bum. A numb bum. <laughs> that rhymes. Yeah. Elegant in English. <laughs> a numb bum. A numb bum. 
a dum num bum even. Yeah. <laughs> well, we have a few names. Oh, Svensson, that sounds extremely Swedish. Jury. And we also have uh, Quentin Lincomte as well. Just arrived at the live stream table. We've watched Quentin um, a, a few times on our on our live streams. Quentin Lincomte. Yeah, we're trying to get some information. So Quentin has quite a few caches on the database. Well, that's a very long list. I have to say that. He was fifth in the Unibet Open in Paris last year. Ah, he was. Again, almost all of them are in France. Yeah. All via French companies, such as the Winamax events in Dublin. Yeah. Um, yeah, so pretty confident player. Has some nice, uh, nice caches. So if he's either not in Dublin or in France, he's not playing poker. That's strange. I mean, we looked at a couple of French players now on the hand on the mob database, and it seems like there are almost all of them doing the caches in France, or yeah. maybe a neighboring country like Berlin or something. But they don't travel far and wide. It's not like Bertrand Grospellier, for example, who we'll play pretty much everywhere. If you look at I mean, uh, some of the good Swedish players, they will have caches all over. Macau, United States, London, South Africa. Estripo, Haira Bere. Oh, you don't often see three seven of the same number seven. coming up. Yeah. I've seen ace, ace, ace on the flop once in my life. I flopped a full house and that got me out of the World Series of Poker main event. I still remember that one. <laughs> I had a pair of fives. I flopped a full house. And of course you had a pair of kings, the other guy. Ouch. Ouch. But it's rare to see one of those flops. So we have uh, Pierre Menez. Pierre Menez. On our feature table at the moment. Canal Football Club. Pierrot Football Club. Blanc. Is he a ex footballer or reporter? <laughs> that, that's the gentleman there with the blue, blue polo shirt on. With the Unibet Poker logos. We have Roger Hirabedian. French again. Can play my tournament in Marrakesh. Or is he Moroccan, possibly? Well, it's tomorrow he's playing, so he doesn't hold many hopes for playing <laughs> very well here, does he? <laughs> if you're scheduling your own tournament for yeah, the day well after day my one. tournament, yeah. this is in Marrakesh. We'll have to see. There he is, Roger Herabedian, Marrakesh. Is that the guy in the, yeah, the, in the white shirt? In the white shirt, yeah. That's right. He has some notable winnings. Is he Moroccan or not? What does it say? It the says flag? Marrakesh, no French. As, he in, as in he lives yeah. in Marrakesh, uh -huh, but okay. he, has he has a French, a French flag. flag. Yeah. He does have quite a bit Yeah, bit obviously he has uh, uh, Moroccan ancestry with that last He's won there. over 4.2 million in his lifetime. Oh, wow. No, I'm impressed. Yeah, let's have a look. Ladies wow. and gentlemen, the Look gentleman sitting out of the picture at the moment. I don't even think I've seen a list that long before then. If you want to see a list closing in on 250 caches, look at our Swedish player, Christer Buren. He pretty much has them all beat. Roger was first in the Grand Prix de Paris, um, 10,000 euro no limit hold'em. He won 419,000 euros for that. 
Wow. All right, I shall hold the gentleman in extremely high regard. Yeah, that's for sure. 100,000 euros for being fourth at EPT San Remo. That's a bloody impressive list, I have to say this. <laughs> and a long one. 200,000 euros for being uh, seventh in the main event Monte Carlo Grand Final, EPT. That guy knows what he's doing. Yeah, he's played this game before. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> no spring chicken. That's an enormous list. 230,000 euros at the Partouche Poker Tour main event in Cannes. And we just made it up to 2011. That's yeah. a long list to go with. Wow. Third in the 10,000 mixed No Limit Hold'em at the World Series of Poker Europe for another 112,000. First in the EPT San Remo side event for 58,000. He must be ahead. I mean, even with the buy-ins and everything, he must be ahead. Oh, World Poker. He's won a World Series of Poker bracelet in Cannes as well. First in the Pot Limit Omaha, 142,000 euros. Wow, in short. Hi, Rabido. And the list goes on and on and on and on. Hi, Rabidian, even. Yeah, look up. Rocher, Roger, that is. Hi, Rabidian. On the Handle Mob database. That's a bloody impressive list. He is well. third on the French all time list. Money and of winnings. course, Bertrand Gropelier is topping it. Yeah, with David Benjamin in second. I played with David Benjamin in the World Series of Pokemon event a couple of years ago in Las Vegas. I wasn't too impressed with him, actually. I He's a very he kind of um, old school erratic. player, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah, but still I'm an old school player myself, and I thought he played a bit erratic. Even making, I won't go as far as saying stupid, but a couple of moves I found very well offbeat. Looking at the French list here, we've had uh, we've got Roger playing today. Um, we've definitely had... Um, and Fabrice Soulier is Pascalini, cool. I'm sure Pascalini played in Paris. We've had, uh, for definite, Paul Festu plays yesterday. Uh, Luce Cailly played in London. So, yeah, there's quite a few. Uh, Hugo Le Maire as well. We've had Absolutely. A, he's played a number of uh, Unibet events. So, yeah, well supported by our French family. Well, Haira Bedian, we are very impressed with this gentleman sitting over there in the white shirt. Big Roger, one, two, three is his Twitter name. Big Roger, okay, we'll go with Big Roger. Big Roger. Who else do we have? Yeah, Quentin Lecomte, Team Pro Unibet from France. It really looks big. <laughs> he is a big guy. Not just wide in girth, he's tall as well. Yeah. His most recent big success was um, second in the 10,000 No Limit High Roller event at the uh, WPT Cyprus. In that Barcelona? In, in Cyprus. Oh, um, Cyprus, that's yeah. the one. $124,000. Okay, it was the last big one, yeah. I was looking at it. His last one was in Barcelona. Yeah, yeah. he cashed yeah. as recent as 28th August in Barcelona, EBT side of it. So, yeah, we should see some uh, some action and some good play from from Roger here. Based on merit alone, I'd say that this is the guy to watch out for, Big yeah, Roger. I would think so. But we also have Quentin Lecomte, who is the team online pro for Unibet for Team for France, so... I'm sure his lifetime winnings online will be fairly high as well, I'd imagine. Oh, yeah. Well, as it is, ladies and gentlemen, we're into round four. 45 minutes left of round four, day 1B here at the Unibet opening can. We are up to 100, 200 blinds. Then we'll have a break shaft at the end of this level. That's right, yeah. And we'll go into 150, 300 blinds with the 25 ante. And as old Stu Unger used to point out, former three-time world champion of poker, that's when the real tournament starts. Yeah. When the ante when kicks the antis in. Kick in yeah. <laughs> what do you make of these um, ante-only tournaments? What do you think of them? Have you played any? 
Uh, I only played five card draw as an anti only game, actually. I mean, it is one of the old classic ways of playing. They do it now the on, the, um, on a couple of the UK tours where they have the side events, which is just anti only. <coughs> um, I played one, it's very fast. It depends on how high you put the ant, and of course, the relation to the, the, the starting stack, stack, stack and yeah, so on. Yeah, so course, yeah. it, it depends, you can do it differently. With. You're constantly putting money in. It's obviously a psychological thing as well. If you're always putting money in, you should always be trying to win the hand as well. Yeah, you really want to do that. Yeah. I like hold in the standard structure. We can sit out a couple of hands and nothing's going to happen. You say, okay, it doesn't cost me anything to fold. Yeah. You sit out of an anti only and you lose your chips. Simple as that. The old classic way of playing, I mean, it was with an anti only. We're talking on like the 1850s now. Wow. And if you want to play five card row, there's real old-fashioned way you play with an ante and one blind and then you're talking about 1880s well Estrepo sitting over there to the left he looks like he's not too tall stacked at the moment no oh, sorry that was Estrepo who's the guy ahead of Estrepo Sorry, I mistook those. So Rosal is back 26. Estrepo has made the call. Let's see the cards. Kings. Wow. Four or five. I had the flush draw, yeah. But strange to, to bet the river, yeah. Pure yeah. bluff. I don't know why you would bet the river in that situation. Because you're only going to get called off someone with a better hand. Exactly, that's the only way he's going to get called. On the other hand, if you figure the other guy won't have any good, you want him to fold. He could have one of those middle of the road hands, you know, and yeah, you want yeah. the guy to fold. He had a great flop, had a great hand on the turn. Flush draw, yeah, oh a yeah, disguised yeah. flush draw as well, <laughs> with the four five and a pair of fours, but. By the river there, there's far too many things. That was that pretty much dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's far too many hands up against him. Yeah. But still a bit gutsy to have King King. Uh, there is an ace on the table after That's all. right, yeah. I feel you have to make that call there with the Kings. Oh, yeah. Uh, especially if you've played all the way to the river. You have to make the call. If he has the ace, you know, he's not again. Just rebuild. Big Roger phones. I must say, well, I was impressed by that list of caches, yes. Yeah, I don't think I've seen a, a list that long myself until, until today. You're mentioning a, a Swedish player who's had over 250. Yeah, is that Chris right? Burin. Ah, yes, type we, we did his... Uh, yeah, type that one yeah, in. Yeah, that's right. You'll yeah. see a list of caches. Yeah. That'll impress the hell out of you. That's right, yeah. You Dating back to the 1980s, please note. Where did, where did we see him? Was he in... He uh, was played in London last in year. In London, that's yeah. right, yeah, yeah. That's right, because we, we we commentated on the feature table on the final final day, didn't yeah. we? All, all He's day. been on the final table of the World Series of Poker main event. Yeah. Even. And the interesting thing, if you look through his list, he's cashed in about just about everything. When it comes to World Poker Tour, European Poker Tour, World Series of Poker, Swedish Championship, and so on, and he's cashed in all kinds of disciplines as well. Seven card stud, mixed events, five card draw, and so on and so on. On our, screen, on our screens there now, Dan, we do have the information for the free roll this evening. Um, it is password of Golden Palm. Presumably yeah. capitals only. We, we're not sure. Um, okay. Best not to, to tell it. Just <laughs> try, try it out. It should work. Um, password is Golden Palm. It starts this evening, 7 p.m. in the UK, 8 p.m. Central European time. The name is called the Unibet Open Live Streaming Free Roll. If you make the final table, you'll win a guaranteed an 11 euro satellite ticket. If you win the actual uh, free roll tonight, you'll get a satellite ticket to Sunday's final worth 275 euros. Exactly. And you never know. And you could it's be it's a free us. roll. Yeah. How can you lose? Exactly. And what I'd like to know. Riga. Yeah, what I'd like to know is if anybody's actually qualified for one of our main events via the live satellite free rolls. The live streaming free rolls. If you have, please yeah. give us a little drop in the chat box. 
in theory, it doesn't sound too difficult. You no. Somebody should You finish on the final table. Somewhere. Yeah. Get a satellite ticket. Finish in the top five or six of normal satellites. And finish in the top eight on a Sunday. It's not... Type in Crispy Ring. Yeah, yeah, there it is. How do you spell the surname, Dan? B-J. Yeah. O-R. I-N. There you go. And there is the man, if you want to take a look. <laughs> the world's biggest list. He's based in London now, is that correct? Or yes, he lives yeah. in London. For tax reasons. Yeah, of course. <laughs> He's a very nice guy, and look at the string of caches. I mean. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we can go through some of them in a few moments, but that is massive. Dan, you are not, you are not, you're not even joking, that is crazy. It is in the region of about 250, possibly more than that. Wow. And if you look at the earliest ones, they date back to the 1980s. 1989, wow. <laughs> well, if you're looking at the long string of caches, unfortunately he's not playing here, good old friend Chris, but there he is anyway. But nevertheless, we are very impressed by Rocher Hayrat Bidou. Yeah, Chris has made $5.5 million dollars in, in prize winnings. Yep, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> He's number one in Sweden. He's not the number one in the Nordic countries because you have Peter Eastgate. Yeah, Nordic all time winner. He's fourth. Yeah. Um, wrong way. Yeah, behind Gus Hansen, Peter Eastgate, and Patrick Antonius. Yeah. Uh, has to be expected. If you're going to be fourth, those are the three guys you want in front of you, really. Exactly. You know? Yeah, it's fantastic. Well, I thought I'd just show you. But Tyra Bidian, we're impressed by him. Absolutely. 38 minutes left of level four. Nothing much dramatic happening over here. 166 players we have at the moment entered for day 1B. That seems to be the official number, but there is still time to buy in. We could have one or two more late buy-ins. We're getting told that Big Roger was um, a member of the French uh, judo team. He was? Yeah, according to, to Bolo. Aha. I didn't know that. Let's face it, you're not going to stand a chance really if he throws you anywhere, are you? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> if he gets his hands on you, you're not going to stand up very long. He has me outweighed by 60 or 70 kilos, that's for sure. <laughs> First of all. He doesn't have very many chips there, though. No, strange enough, but it's okay. Ruck, luck can run <laughs> against even the best of players. Yeah. Say 16,000 there, but I don't think it's even near that, is it? Ah, we do have a 10,000 chip on the table. That's why we have the purple chip 10,000 on the bottom. Aha, I didn't see that. I didn't see those at all either. We must have run out of chips, I presume. Oh. I had no idea they had started switching in the 10,000 chips this early. No, it? me neither. Okay, Harabedian versus Estrepo. Let's see who has it. Check from Estrepo and the bet from Harabedian. 4,000. Yeah, yes, 11.4 at the moment after this one. Will Estrepo make the call? It's can't a see sizable amount of his chips. You can't want see much in front of him because of Big Roger's head. That's Big Roger's head in front of us there on the screen. <laughs> He's a very tall guy, it seems. Bit of tension there today. <laughs> he really gives, gives a good stare down. Yeah, he does. This Harabedia. That's one time I like to hide behind sunglasses when he stares at me yeah, like that. Yeah.
He folds. Estre på. Okay. And big Roger takes down the pot. So <coughs> that was a nice one. Yeah. Hmm. That's a nice smile. It looks very grandfatherly there <laughs> for a few <laughs> seconds. <laughs> Retracted this wall screen and the stair. Maybe that's a bit of a tell that he wasn't really that <laughs> strong there, perhaps. <laughs> perhaps not. Or he was exceedingly strong and he's grinning because he should have got more chips out of it. Well, it could run either way. Yeah. You don't know with those tough birds. I have been around for years. Just trying to find out whether we've lost any of the prop uh, prop bed guys from the uh, from the duchies. Oh. Uh -huh. um, Matthias was mentioning yesterday that uh, basically Sander Hart didn't qualify um, for this event. Yeah. So in Riga, he has to wear a banana suit when he's playing poker. <laughs> One of those crazy, crazy side bets again. And we have a second side bet, which is actually available to bet on on Unibet. I don't know whether the uh, the betting is still available right now. But um, there was a bet um, available where it's not going to be in that one. Basically, um, the first person to get knocked out out of the the five, the, well, the four duchies now um, has to wear a kiwi fruit costume. So Sander Hart is wearing a banana suit. The next person who gets knocked out here is going to be wearing a kiwi suit, <laughs> kiwi fruit suit. Um, That's ridiculous. <laughs> I remember one of the Dutch players playing in Troya, dressed in a donkey suit. That's right. Um, that was Eggy, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Let's have a look. So. Well, one of the worst prop bets I've ever heard of was a couple of years ago by three American players. And whoever got knocked out first of the World Series of Poker main event, he had to tattoo the faces of the other two guys on his ass. <laughs> and he did. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We got Paul Askam, Alex Hendricks, um, Peter Hox, and Matthias Mulhausen. Uh, Sander, unfortunately, was in the prop bet, but because he didn't actually qualify, oh. he's now being forced to wear the banana suit anyway. Okay. Um, between the other four players, we do have the the odds on the Unibet Open betting client. <laughs> without obviously um, without Sander anymore, so Alex went down to two point two five, and Matthias was six. Hold that one, I'll take a photo of it while I'm here. Just to get out my camera and shoot that one. Thank you. Well, all kinds of crazy bets. Well, if you feel like putting in a bet on that one. I was talking to him Matthias yesterday. Um, he could put his bankroll on himself getting knocked out first. Why? And then just leave the tournament. If he puts 100,000 on it now, <laughs> <laughs> exits first hand. Guarantees himself seven hundred thousand in winnings. That's crazy. If it, yeah, if, if the bet if they is wanted to be nasty about it, you know, and yeah, well, it's, it's I an honest man. Be I'm sure. Yeah, I presume it's going to be limited to a, a twenty euro, thirty euro bet. I can't see it being. But that would open it up to less honest souls. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Oh, this gambling world is full of <laughs> these crazy bets. That's for sure. The things people have risked, life and limb and all kinds of strange stuff.
Half an hour left at level four. Still 166 plays as far as I can see. Average chip stack is up to 21.5. So just a few plays have been knocked out so far. Slow starts. And yesterday, in case you missed it, 145 people started. 47 are left. So it's less than one third of the starters. And shuffle again. One of the true sayings in poker is that chips have no home. They will be going back and forth between the players. Yeah, for sure. Well, Mena is there, has just picked up the uh, three of a kind in the middle. <coughs> to take down that hand. Um, we do only have 30 minutes left of this level for the buy ins. If you were watching the screen carefully just about 10 seconds ago, you would have spotted the thing that identifies the player in seat number three, uh, which is looking at in the white shirt, the blonde hair, as a Swedish guy. What he did was he put in this piece of snuff inside his upper lip. And there are only Swedes and Finns doing that. Why is that? It's a way of using tobacco, simply. Smokeless tobacco, if you wish. Right. It's ground down tobacco mixed up with some other stuff, and you just. You put it in inside your upper lip, between the teeth and the upper lip. And there he is at the left, the guy in the white shirt. I'm sure he played in Copenhagen as well. Oh, yeah. I might be wrong. Um, I recognize the face. I recognize his face as well, yeah. <coughs> Svensson is the quintessential Swedish name. Son of Sven. Yeah, I like Smith. He would yeah. be in London. I think the UK's most popular surname now is actually Mohammed. I believe. As a surname, not as a first name. As a surname, yeah. I didn't know. There's that. obviously numerous spellings of it. Double M, single yeah. M. Yeah. With U or M U I M O, yeah. But uh, the actual surname itself is. Uh -huh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, statistically, the most common last name in Sweden is Anderson, followed by Johansson. I think Svensson is fourth or something like yeah, that. Yeah. It's one of those names that you always, you know, recognize as being kind of a Scandic name. Oh, Sven, yeah. So. But it would be spelled differently in Danish and Norwegian. When you spell it with double S and O-N, not E-N at the end. Yeah, yeah. That signifies it as Swedish. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, not much to tell at the moment. Like you said, it's slow slog getting through day one. Yeah, day one's always for all quiet. The players. It's one of those situations yeah. where we expect that now. It's you see a few small dramas being played out here and there, but not that often. It's not until kind of the later levels, isn't it, where we start getting a, a number of bust outs and... No, you have more drama towards the end of day two and the yeah, yeah. final table is looming somewhere there. Not many people like commentating or working on the bubble time because it takes ages. Not much I know, happens. I know. I love it. You do? I love it. We, uh, I can understand why. Because okay, it's one of these situations where you can kind of see what players are doing, how they're reacting to the table, knowing that they're not going <coughs> to play or whether they are going to play. And I, in my own opinion, it gives away a bit of a, a read on how the players are actually. Yeah, you might get going to be able to get a future. deeper insight into their souls yeah. when they're actually playing on the bubble. How much are you going to willing to risk? If you remember, we had a, a gentleman um, in pa in Paris. It was who blinded down to to one big blind. Yeah, that's right. You remember? That sorry, to one ante. Sorry, one ante. Yeah, had left. Yeah. That crazy thing. And he cashed in his first ever live event. <laughs> so I was berating him. I was, why are you doing this? You have to push. You have to push. Don't blind down. And he went every single hand to one ante. He really was somebody to, to lost it. And then the he, money. he cashed. It was just one of those amazing situations. Yeah, you know? it's okay. It worked out for yeah, that one. Yeah. He wasn't putting himself in a position to win it. But he said to us um, <coughs> afterwards, all he wanted to do was cash. He'd never played properly before. Played a few office games, home games. But all he wanted to do in Paris was to cash in a tournament. He wanted to do cash and the bragging rights to go with it. Oh, oh yeah, yeah that's I right, took yeah. down some money in that event and uh, I cashed in that one. 
And there he is, Hara Bedian. Harabedian looks a bit like the Moroccan version of Orson Welles, the film director. Thank you. And there he is, Svensson. Check, check on the river. <coughs> King four and Earhart takes it down. <laughs> We've not had any chatter in the uh, in the live chat box for the last 15 minutes. What's going on, guys? Are you still there? Anyone still watching us? There's 48 online watching now. I'm uh, in the chat box, logged in. What's going on? What are you doing now? Are you supposed to be at work? Are you uh, are you skiving? Are you hiding from the boss in the, <laughs> in under, the your office desk? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, under your desk? Tell us what you're doing uh, when you're watching us. Uh, yeah, where are you in the world? Yeah, where what are, are you doing yeah. exactly at the moment? Are you playing online? Are you? Uh, <coughs> let us know who you are and what you're doing. Yeah, you could be playing online, having second or third screen open yeah. somewhere. It would be interesting, a sort of mental exercise, to pick the most interesting tables when it comes to talkative. I mean, imagine Mike the Mouth Madiso and Tony G and Phil Helmuth and a few others at the <laughs> same table. I mean, and if you want a conversation well. yeah, or yeah. whatever you'd like to call it. Yeah. I think that's why everyone likes watching the, the high stakes poker episodes because. Yeah, it would be interesting the, the to hand pick well, yeah. tables for a certain specific reason. Yeah, yeah. Or like we were saying yesterday, get all the duchies to wear fruit costumes and then <laughs> in on the feature table. We'll have them all on the feature table, maybe for a special... <laughs> whoever wins gets a hamper of fruit. <laughs> I could consider it a charity event or something Yeah, like we that, could do something. It'd be fantastic, wouldn't it? So we have one banana, one kiwi fruit, one tomato, one carrot. Uh, yeah. Okay, the donkey race and the banana court. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> How fantastic would that be? As you say, for charity reasons, why not? Hendon Mob Database, winner of the charity event, a carrot. <laughs> <laughs> the first caching vegetable. The first caching vegetable. <laughs> That's a good one, Green. I think we should do it. I think we should get a uh, get some sponsorship and get this get this sorted out. Could be interesting. Yeah. Well, for charity, why yeah. not? Side event sponsorship charity. Hundred euro to enter. You have to be dressed in fancy dress <laughs> as a vegetable or a fruit. Or making it a masquerade event. The masquerade poker event. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. That we'll pass the information through to Natalie and we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll see what we can come up with. <laughs> okay. 
You never know the surprises that will wait for <laughs> you in Riga. Who knows? Who knows? At least you would be guaranteed getting some good reporting. Yeah, can you imagine the, the media? media? Yeah, it would be fantastic. So FU in the chat box is actually eating in Norway. Ah, eating in Norway, in a restaurant or at home. It's the obvious follow-up question. And what are you eating? Exactly. <coughs> at the moment, Graeme is leaning over towards Natalie, who is the uh, tournament leader here. And uh, <laughs> with putting over our suggestion for a charity event where people would dress up as animals or vegetables, etc. That could be interesting. We'll see how she reacts. At least she's getting a good laugh out of it. Okay, Graham, I was explaining to the listeners <laughs> the way it works and you just told Natalie about our right yeah. idea. Na Natalie's going to look into it for us. Yeah, why not? Something crazy. Little charity side of it, but every player must be dressed in fancy dress. And you'd have to have a couple of guarantees that they will turn up for it. Yeah, well, simply if you don't turn up in fancy dress, you don't play. No, you, can't you, you have to guarantee if nobody turns up, it's not much of an event. Yeah, you true, have to at least some of them sign up, promise that yes, we will turn up. Yes, we will. Well, every like Unibet ambassador should be forced to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Dan? If for charity, sure, yeah. why not? I love going I'll to I'll good do it. I'll, I'll play as well, yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, yeah, it should be easy. Get a minimum of nine, it should be no problem. I actually, won, in my student days, I actually won first prize for the best male costume at the uh, annual academic uh, masquerade, which I had in the city of Lund. I was dressed as a medieval hangman. Wow. With the <laughs> black leather cloak over my face and a homemade axe in my hands <laughs> and everything. And the noose, the rope noose hanging from my belt. And that actually won. Excellent. I looked fairly convincing. I'm pr still proud of that. <laughs> you imagine the looks when you're walking down the high street. <laughs> Together with a friend, dressed up as an Arab sheik, we walked from my flat over to where the party was. And I can tell you, people were really staring when you walk as a medieval hangman carrying an axe like that through the streets. People yeah. will stare. Yeah. Eighteen minutes left of level four. See if I can see how many are left. It's up to 167 players now registered for the day. Sorry, I can't see the bottom line. How many are left? But 21.9 is K, is the average chip stack at the moment. So you could work that one backwards. I think it says 162. 162. Which would mean five players have exited. Should be slightly more. It's not the easiest of colours to read, is it? No, white not on the that one. Grey and grey. Yeah. White and grey. No, no. We've got uh, Johnny Dollar at the hotel at the moment, the Hotel Majestic. Uh, he was knocked out on day 1A. Unlucky well, Johnny. Is that uh, actually his last name? It's a fantastic name if it is. He's registered as a Swede. Come on, Johnny, if you're watching this, are you truly Swede? And do you actually carry the name Dollar? I'm and curious. Janis um, is in Latvia drinking some beers and watching us. Uh huh. Okay, not much to watch, but <laughs> yeah. thanks anyway. There's not we'll much happening uh, at the moment. We'll take it as an implicit compliment. Should be about 150 something players left at the moment. If I work backwards from the chip stack. So 167 starters so far. This day 1B and s slightly over 150 left. There you have the numbers at the moment. Again, note that the player is sitting in seat number nine is leaning slightly sideways away from the events. Just like the last feature table. I wonder if it's got something to do with the lights. Could be. Maybe oh, yeah. it's slightly just too hot underneath that light. Yeah. Or, or something could be. Uh, you just want to 
stretch out stretch their legs. legs a little bit. Yeah, possibly, possibly. Because if it's a nine-seater table, which this one is at the yeah. moment, uh, normally on a ten-seater table, you're fairly yeah. tight together. Yeah. That was truly betting out of 850. The ace of clubs on the river. Doing chip tricks, the man in the middle. I actually saw a book in Las Vegas on doing chip tricks. And of course you can go on, on to YouTube and you can find plenty of instruction videos on how to do chip tricks. Yeah, we've just been asked about the prize pool at the moment. Um, we're going to announce the prize pool probably at the end of level four. Yeah. Um, as the late registration is still available at the moment. Um, we had 145 enter yesterday, around about 167 so far today. So, yeah, <coughs> a very healthy prize pool. Absolutely. With nearly 500,000 euros. So. Yeah, and it will be six figures for the winner. Yeah, absolutely. And again, we see this French variation of the scorn cuts, followed by standard cuts. But not every dealer at my table was doing it yesterday. Only two. No, I didn't notice it yesterday at all. The, yeah, the three cuts. It was <coughs> Earhart folds, Svensson folds. Bazzi, where are you? Where are you watching from? Where? What are you doing now? Bazzi, who asked us the question about the prize pool. Whereabouts are you? What are you doing? And how are you finding the live stream? Is there any particular information you want, if we can help you with? Just the prize pool information at the moment. Yeah, or we're looking for a good poker joke or something. <laughs> That's one thing that you don't often hear, though, is it poker jokes. It's oh, there are plenty of poker jokes around, actually. You have, to, you have to tell us some. I don't think I've right. any poker jokes. You have the guy who's much too regret he's been sitting all night playing poker and realizes towards morning that he should be home. Long since. So he gets out of the game, he rushes home, rushes outside his house, he rubs himself with, you know, soil and mud and stuff like that. And he rushes through the door and shouts to his wife, Don't pay the ransom, honey, I escaped! <laughs> Just to block the fact that he's playing poker again. <laughs> <laughs> and that's an interesting card on the river there. The five of clubs. Brings up a number of straight draws and the flush draws, of course. That's right. And so someone clever. does have a flush there by the looks of it. Is it queen four? It's not a flush, it's just no, a, just a, a queen four. <laughs> it's a lousy Second pair, pair. Wow. with an even lousier kicker. And it wins the hand. I'm surprised sometimes that the hand is people will go in with. Yeah, exactly. And the hands they will win with, even. You are good commentators. You comment only poker or football matches, too. I, I would commentate on football matches if there are any football matches. Ah, I never did that in my life. Football commentary agents watching. <laughs> <laughs> Get in touch. I don't know enough about football, I'm afraid. So I wouldn't be able to be, be a very good commentator on that one. What's your sport, Dan? What's your... Well, I love watching ice hockey. Yeah. Coming from Sweden, for obvious reasons. Yeah, of course, yeah. It's a much faster game than football. Sometimes I wonder what football would be like if you're actually playing with plexiglass walls around like that. That's one difference. Indoor so football. Yeah, so they could bounce yeah. off. And you could play behind the goal like you can in ice hockey. That would be interesting, yeah, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's one very interesting thing. Those are the two main differences. I mean, except for a smaller playing area, of course. but. We do have, um, it's called the kind of the Legends Challenge, where all the ex-footballers um, do play in a, in a six-a-side tournament. Yeah. And that's based indoors in the arenas around the UK. Um, and they have the plexiglass walls, but only for six-a-side and only five minutes per side. Okay. So, so the ball is allowed to bounce off the plexiglass Off the plexiglass, wall. behind the goal on the sides, but they're and not the allowed to go behind. Smaller. Yeah, uh, of but he can't, it, yeah. he can't play behind the goal. He can't play behind the goal now because that's one very important feature of ice hockey. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <coughs> Ten nine four on the flop. Rainbow, very uninspiring.
And to the left in the white shirt, you have uh, Rocher Hayrabedian, living in Morocco, French player living in Morocco, and has an enormous list of caches if you look at the Handel Mob database. That's right. Known so as Big Roger123 on Twitter, if you want to follow respect. him. Yep. Big Roger123. One thing I will mention about Twitter, Dan, I can never read any of your posts. Because they're in Swedish? Exactly. I'm sorry about that. I'm feeling left out. <laughs> well, you could always go, go to Google, Google Translate. Translate yeah. <laughs> if you want. I sit there waiting for a dang to post and it's in Swedish. Well, sorry about that, but it's, it's not one of the major languages of the world. <laughs> no, it isn't. Besides, everybody thinks we speak like the Swedish chef in the Muppets. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Uh, you don't? <laughs> That's how I was brought up. Actually, it's, it's an interesting invitation. Of it. You recognize the rhythm of the language. Yeah, sure. yeah. <coughs> Less than 10 minutes left of level 4. Then we'll have a 15 minute break. And you will have the prize pool sometime during level 5, I'm sure. Once we know the total number of players. But again, it's a very quiet table, this feature table. <coughs> but we will go with something like 100 players into day two. One third of the starters. And that's going to be a long day, day two, as we play down from about 100 left down to the final nine on the, fi on the final table. If you have something to ask us, the chat box is still open. Remember that. <laughs> At your service, ladies and gentlemen. Are any of you watching now um, planning on coming to Riga? Are you playing the satellites? Um, maybe even just come for, for some of the parties and to uh, play some side events. Yeah, don't forget that one. The free roll this evening at 8 p.m. Central European time. That's 7 p.m. to you British. And the password is Golden Palms. Or was it singular, Golden Palm? Golden Palm. Just Golden Palm, singular. singular. Yeah. yeah. Just one word. Golden Palm. That's your password. You can win satellite tickets ranging from 11 euros upwards. So, um, <coughs> you never know. Final table tonight. Qualify through a satellite for Sunday's final. And finish in the top eight of any of the Sunday finals. And you'll get yourself a package to Univet Open in Riga. And Riga is worth a visit. Trust me, I've been there a couple of times. Yeah, I'm, especially I'm in December. Now, yeah. Lovely place in December, with the lights and the snow on the streets. What's the temperature going to be roughly? Do you know? Right oh. then, you count on minus ten, minus five, something like that. I remember being in uh, in Helsinki um, at the start of February. Yeah. And it was minus sixteen, minus seventeen, and we played a poker tournament over there and. Yeah, it was. Uh, I've seen worse. Very interesting, yeah. My personal cold record is minus 42, but that's what? high up in the North Sweden, up in the mountains. Wow. But that's the coldest I've ever been, minus 42. And that's uh, at the point where you have to be careful when you breathe too hard because too much cold air in the lungs. So that, I mean, talking that cold, it will damage the windpipe in the lungs. Wow. So you have to breathe carefully. But that's the coldest I've seen in person. I overheard the French commentator sitting to our left here, discussing a previous hand, and I recognized the word voleur, thief, in French. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously somebody made a swipe at the pot and won it. 
Well, our Swedish player in the orange t or orange hoodie, sorry, isn't doing all that well. 14.7k. Still, he's in it. We've had quite today. a few of these flops, though, haven't we, where we've had the, the flush straight off on the flop? Yeah, unlikely often. Or it's just selective memory, possibly. About five minutes left of level four. And we'll have a, a small break at the end of this level. Oh, he's now up to over 20k, Harabedian. Big Roger. Nice little comeback there. Yeah, absolutely. <coughs> We've been asked, can we say this gentleman's name? Doodly do? Doodly do. <laughs> can you say my name? Doodly do? If it's your real name, it's a bit unusual, but yeah. Anyway, there you are, we said your name. Ah, here we have the chip counts at the moment here. Our chip lead at the table is uh, Menez of France. 29.3. 29, yeah. And the short and Low man, 13.4. And that's Le Comte in seat number one. Yeah. 67 big blinds, 13,475. It's surprising he's one of the, uh, the French online pros here. Expecting him to play well, but obviously he has lost six or seven thousand of his chips. Oh, I like that cutting, shuffling, and cutting method. <coughs> Something to take home with you. Absolutely. Learn it, practice it, become a professional dealer. <laughs> <laughs> There's Big Roger, the former judoka of the French team. People do have interesting backgrounds at times. I remember Phil Helmuth talking in a blog post or somewhere when it was when he was at university. He was working extra as a cleaner of monkey cages. There was some research institute near to where he lived. Ah. So he's working extra cleaning monkey shits out in cages. <laughs> <laughs> Remco has just posted up on the Unibet Open um, Twitter page. Um, you can win a Unibet Open uh, can goodie bag by guessing how many chips the smallest stack will have at the end of today's play. Well, I'd say the smallest stack will be in the region of four, three thousands, possibly even down as low as two thousand. But, go into Twitter, it's at Unibet Open is the tag, of course. Yep. Hashtag um, Unibet Can. And yeah, leave your vote, leave your message, uh, let us know and how many chips. A goodie bag is up for grabs. There's a long way to go to the end of the day. We are going to play 10 levels today, just like yesterday. Two minutes left, level four. Lines of 100, 200. And just for the results of yesterday's competition, <coughs> I won. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't accept the prize, unfortunately. No, no, so no. Uh, you're and the prize you're goes to guessing. Martin Senk. He guessed 337,000. The actual correct guess was 243. So he's only 6,000 off. So congratulations, Martin. Um, I can't win the prize, so you actually win it by default. So be proud of yourself. You've won a prize by default. I wouldn't have guessed over 160,000 myself. I mean, 243,000. That's yeah. unlikely. I said 241. I just had one of those feelings yesterday. We're going to have right. a big It hand. was a good feeling, obviously. Yeah, yeah. So. If you win the goodie bag, I believe the goodie bag has um, a pair of our Unibet can glasses, sunglasses, the new nets. Ah yes, it's these uh, lovely sunglasses we have. At the moment, yeah. At the moment, here they are. Where it says "Unibet Open" on your right eye in Can 2013, your left. And it, when you put them on outside, it feels like you're drunk. <laughs> like as you can see, your spots. They are a bit weird <laughs> to yeah, have on, yeah. which I am at the moment. <laughs> you can win a um, a phone holder, a Unibet Open Can T-shirt, 
and a <coughs> deck of plastic playing cards. So a nice little good bag in short. So put in you guess who will have the smallest stack at the end of day one B. Sorry, not who, but how big will the smallest stack be? Yeah. So what do you think it is? Three thousand two hundred seventy-five or something like that. Um, no, the twenty-fives will be switched out by the end of today. It will be an even hundred number. I can tell you that. I'm going to say. All right, they are on the last hand of this level. If you can hear the voice in the background, finish the hand you're on. And do you have the signal? I've said 2,350. All right, you put that one down. Somebody just blinding through. <laughs> I'll put what? your guess down for you, Dan. I guess slightly more, actually, 3,100. There we go. Yep. And that All is right. it, ladies and gentlemen. We are having a 15-minute break. Um, thank you for tuning in. We hope you come back. And we'll, uh, we'll see you again soon. And don't forget again, Golden Palm is the password for this evening's free roll at 8 p.m. Central European Time. Good luck in that one. And see you in Riga. Start of day 1B and players started behind me and I'm joined by Remco this morning. Let's have a little talk about what happened yesterday. Give me some official statistics first. Well, we started with 146 players yesterday. We lost exactly 100 players and we played down to 46 in 10 levels of play. We're going to play the same amount of levels today, so the combined field will come back tomorrow on Saturday and then we'll play down to the final table. Well, yesterday was a really good day. Um, we saw uh, former EPT Grand Final winner Peter de Korver, who made it to the next day. Um, Runner-up from Unibet Open Copenhagen, uh, Johnny Ostberg was here, and um, plenty more Scandinavian players that we always see, like uh, Davor Pavic and yeah. Thomas Brolin. They're always here. Um, and then, besides that, um, a lot of French local players. And it was good to see um, the chip lead at the end of the day was a French player, uh, Paul Tedeschi, a uh, young guy, good aggressive player. He finished with 243,000 chips, which is a lot. And I'm not quite sure if we're going to have that many chips at the end of the day for the chip leader today. But um, there was a lot of good play yesterday. It was one really fun hand, actually. Um, a Finnish player uh, managed to make a royal flush. And usually when you make a royal flush, it's hard to get paid off because your hand is so strong. Mm -hmm. Well, his opponent happened to have a full house. So he got all the chips. Uh, this Finnish gentleman made it to, to day two. So if the luck stays on his side, he might make a deep run. Mm -hmm. And uh, what do you think will happen over this tournament? If, if you had to guess at this stage, what do you think? Do you think we'll have a French winner? I mean, the numbers should point towards a Swedish winner because we have more Swedish players than ever before. Um, but there's also a lot of French local players and a lot of good French players showed up today as well. Um, Roger Harbijan is playing today, who's the third on the all-time money list from France. Uh, this guy has quite the reputation uh, as, a, as a very slow player. He doesn't slow play, but he plays slow. So he throws off the, his opponents and he has a very unique style. Um, he has uh, 13 six-figure scores behind his name, so this guy is one to watch. Yeah, absolutely. And we talked a little bit yesterday about the French playing style and you said, you know, if you're going to go in against a French player, you better have a good hand. W what's that? Explain that a bit more. Well, like, every, every country has kind of its own style. So it's Scandinavian countries are quite aggressive. Uh, Italians and French and Spanish, they just want to see a lot of pots and play a lot of flops. But when you play that style, that means you're going to see a lot of flops, turns, and rivers. But it also means that every now and then you're going to hit a pair, or you're going to hit a straight draw, or a flush draw. So that means that you have to realize that if you're playing against a French player, they're going to want to see the turn, and they're going to want to see the river. So by the time you put in your money on the river, you better have it, because there's a good chance that they have at least some part of the what's on the table. Right, right. And finally, 
Can Dan make it a third? Can Matthias make it a second? Well, of course, that's a numbers game. And they have a mathematical disadvantage in this situation because, of course, there's so many players trying to win. And in order to win one tournament, you have to be very lucky and good. But in order to win two, you have to be even luckier and better. Uh, Matthias came really close in Troja, so he had a shot at, at, at winning another tournament. But they're very good players, both of them, so of course they have a chance. They have a bigger chance than some of these amateur players, but because they've done it before, it's going to be hard to do it again. I look forward to seeing what happens. the end of day 1A and I'm here at the Welcome Drinks. As you know, Cannes is a city famous for its film festival. So I'm going to ask your players, if a movie star was to play you in a film about your life, who would it be? Tom Cruise. Uh, Nicholson. Julia Dench. I'd say Julia Roberts for you. Uh, Julia Roberts. <laughs> no, I think Julia Dench. Julia Dench is a great actress. I think uh, DiCaprio. <laughs> and how about you? Yeah, I think George Clooney then. Uh, yeah, also a good one, right? I don't know, but I would play myself. Uh, Sandra Bullock, I think. Hot, sexy, funny, quirky. Yeah, that's me. All the things are Rachel is, yes. Uh, Matt Damon. Al Pacino. I like Rachel Vice a lot. You know that one? I like her. I don't know, I don't remember anyone else now. Rachel Weiss is a good call. It's a good call. Thank you, Eva. Uh, Gérard Depardieu. <laughs> uh, maybe Sharon Stone? Uh, maybe uh, Robert De Niro. Uh, can, I, can I choose a beautiful one? <laughs> yeah, I can. Okay. Jessica Alba. <laughs> uh, Jason Stratton. Scarlett Johansson, because we have the same surname. Obviously, Brad Pitt. Moi, uh, Adrian Brody, because people say I look like him. Julia Roberts was always good. Marilyn Monroe. Nicolas Cage. Nobody, I think. Because it's, it's too hard to be me, I think. Uh, Sandra Bullock. Cameron Diaz. Yes. Donald Duck. What is he going to look like? Chuck Norris, actually. He's a dead ringer for me. Uh... <laughs> I li I'm living a rock star life, so why would I be uh, want to be a movie star? I mean, I'm here, I'm here in Ke in Cannes, so nice hotel, no problem. You're a movie I'm star living, already. Living dream, yeah. Very good answer. Right. Sorry, I have this Clooney in my head. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's distracting. <laughs> um, who had to play me? I don't know. You tell me. Angelina Jolie. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Hello. Very good. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. If you were going to choose a movie star to play you in a film about your life, who would you choose? Like, which movie star? Oh, t'as compris quelque chose? Yes, I'm very happy uh, to to play the Unibet Open. Uh, it's my uh, 13 Unibet. Uh, no, no, uh, 15 Unibet Open. Long time, yeah. your favorite movie star. Ah, okay. Uh, the only better one was, uh, uh, it's uh, uh, Varga. You know Varga? Oh, I don't think I know him. It's a 
beautiful in Ibet Open, but uh, Cannes, it's uh, very beautiful. Perfect, thank you. <laughs> It's the start of day 1B and play has started behind me and I'm joined by Remco this morning. Let's have a little talk about what happened yesterday. Give me some official statistics first. Well, we started with 146 players yesterday. We lost exactly 100 players and we played down to 46 in 10 levels of play. We're going to play the same amount of levels today, so the combined field will come back tomorrow on Saturday and then we'll play down to the final table. Well, yesterday was a really good day. Um, we saw uh, former EPT Grand Final winner Peter de Corver, who made it to the next day. Um, Runner-up from Unibit Open Copenhagen, uh, Johnny Ostberg was here, and um, plenty more Scandinavian players that we always see, like uh, Davor Pavic and yeah. Thomas Brolin. They're always here. Um, and then, besides that, um, a lot of French local players. And it was good to see um, the chip lead at the end of the day was a French player, uh, Paul Tedeschi, a uh, young guy, good aggressive player. He finished with 243,000 chips, which is a lot. And I'm not quite sure if we're going to have that many chips at the end of the day for the chip leader today. But um, there was a lot of good play yesterday. It was one really fun hand, actually. Um, a Finnish player uh, managed to make a royal flush. And usually when you make a royal flush, it's hard to get paid off because your hand is so strong. Mm -hmm. Well, his opponent happened to have a full house. So he got all the chips. Uh, this Finnish gentleman made it to, to day two. So if the luck stays on his side, he might make a deep run. And uh, what do you think will happen over this tournament? If, if you had to guess at this stage, what do you think? Do you think we'll have a French winner? I mean, the numbers should point towards a Swedish winner because we have more Swedish players than ever before. Uh, but there's also a lot of French local players and a lot of good French players showed up today as well. Um, Roger Harbijan is playing today, who's the third on the all-time money list from France. Uh, this guy has quite the reputation uh, as, a, as a very slow player. He doesn't slow play, but he plays slow. So he throws off the, his opponents and he has a very unique style. Um, he has uh, 13 six-figure scores behind his name, so this guy is one to watch. Gosh, yeah, absolutely. And we talked a little bit yesterday about the French playing style and you said, you know, if you're going to go in against a French player, you better have a good hand. W what's that? Explain that a bit more. Well, like, Every, every country has kind of its own style. Scandinavian countries are quite aggressive. Uh, Italians and French and Spanish, they just want to see a lot of pots, play a lot of flops. But when you play that style, that means you're going to see a lot of flops, turns and rivers. But it also means that every now and then you're going to hit a pair or you're going to hit a straight draw or a flush draw. So that means that you have to realize that if you're playing against a French player, they're going to want to see the turn and they're going to want to see the river. So by the time you put in your money on the river, you better have it because there's a good chance that they have at least some part of the what's on the table. Right, right. And Finally, can Dan make it a third? Can Matthias make it a second? Well, of course, that's a numbers game. And they have a mathematical disadvantage in this situation because, of course, there's so many players trying to win. And in order to win one tournament, you have to be very lucky and good. But in order to win two, you have to be even luckier and better. Uh, Matthias came really close in Troja, so he had a shot at, at, at winning another tournament. But 
they're very good players, both of them, so of course they have a chance. They have a bigger chance than some of these amateur players, but because they've done it before, it's going to be hard to do it again. I look forward to seeing what happens. End of day 1A and I'm here at the Welcome Drinks. As you know, Cannes is a city famous for its film festival. So I'm going to ask the players, if a movie star was to play you in a film about your life, who would it be? Tom Cruise. Uh, Nicholson. Judy Dench. I'd say Julia Roberts for you. Uh, Julia Roberts. Mm. No, I think Judy Dench. Judy Dench is a great actress. I think uh, DiCaprio. <laughs> and how about you? Yeah. I think George Clooney then. Uh, yeah. Also a good one, right? I don't know, but I would play myself. Uh, Sandra Bullock, I think. Hot, sexy, funny, quirky. Yeah, that's me. All the things are Rachel is. Yes. Uh, Matt Damon. Al Pacino. I like Rachel Weisz a lot. You know that one? I like her. I don't know. I don't remember anyone else now. Rachel Weisz is a good call. It's a good call. Thank you, Eva. Oui, Gérard Depardieu. Maybe Sharon Stone. Uh, maybe uh, Robert De Niro. Uh, can I can I choose a beautiful one? <laughs> yeah, I can. Okay. Jessica Alba. <laughs> uh, Jason Stratham. Scarlett Johansson, because we have the same surname. Obviously, Brad Pitt. Moi, uh, Adrian Brody, because people say I look like him. Julia Roberts was always good. Marilyn Monroe. Nicolas Cage. Nobody, I think. Because it's, it's too hard to be me, I think. Uh, Sandra Bullock. Cameron Diaz. Yes. Donald Duck. What is he going to look like? Chuck Norris, actually. He's a dead ringer for me. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I li I'm living a rock star life, so why would I be uh, want to be a movie star? I mean, I'm here, I'm here in Ke in Cannes, so nice hotel, no problem. You're a movie star living, already. Living a dream, yeah. Very good answer. I'm sorry, I have this crony in my head. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's distracting. <laughs> um, who has to play me? I don't know. You tell me. Um, Angelina Jolie. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. If you were going to choose a movie star to play you in a film about your life, who would you choose? Like, which movie star? I don't understand something. Yes, I'm very happy uh, to, to play the Unibeto Pen. Uh, it's my uh, 13 Unibet, uh No, no, uh, 15 Unibeto Pen. Long time, yeah. your favorite movie star. Ah, okay. Uh, the Unibet Open, uh, uh, it's uh, uh, Varga. You know Varga? Oh, I don't think I know him. It's a beautiful Unibet Open, but uh, can it's uh, very beautiful. Perfect, thank you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, um, I'm going to say a welcome. Um, I'm uh, Peter de Corver. Um, uh, I got my colleague. Uh, I'm uh, Tobias Peters. And uh, we're going to tell you for uh, at least an hour or an hour. We're going to do a live commentary. And uh, well, let's see what's going on uh, over here at the Unibet well, uh, main event here in. Uh, <laughs> I see we yeah, I see we have a new blind level 150 300 and right. 25. Yeah. Can you tell me uh, Tobias uh, are you still in the tournament? No, I knocked out yesterday. Ah, too bad. That's too mm -hmm. bad. Very early in the day, so. Oh, yeah, okay. So you're now have a kind of holiday? Yeah, enjoy my vacation here. It's, All right. it's a nice place to have vacation. Oh yeah. Yeah, well, we did, we did, we did uh, do a little stroll through Cannes and <laughs> uh, oh, it looked uh, Okay, here I come. Well, I know this uh, this big man, this big Roger, and uh, well, only a few of these guys uh, are familiar for me. Do you know some? Uh, no, for me only the familiar faces. Roger also. Roger and I heard about the uh, Quentin Lacombe, but um, yeah, well, I've I've been a little bit out of the poker scene here in Unibet, so maybe there are some regulars, but. I cannot tell you anything really about uh, these players, but maybe they're gonna give us some uh, action and. Uh, it's a big opening, 11.50. 11.50. And a call, yeah. and a raise to 1700. Hmm. It's a, uh, that, uh, a but big that's opening? not possible, right? No, here yeah. in France, you have to double the bet. Yeah, I think so. so I don't know what's going on over here. We cannot see it correctly, but. I don't think 11.50 was good. Probably it was 6.50 or yeah. something. I think I 6.50, 6.50, and he makes it 1.700. I think that's the case, and now we got 1.700, so 1,500 in the pot plus. Well, we got a 10 3 deuce flop, so. Normally, the the free better will take this pot down. Yeah, the one who makes it 1,700. Well, that was Mr. Rosel. I think so, yeah. Well. He's betting 1200. It's kind of, well, yeah. inducing to call yeah. or inducing to let him race. You, you would al or almost expect something like uh, a set there, a set of tens or something. Well, if, he, if he's betting like this, yeah, well, they're both call and, well, we're going to see a turn yeah. and maybe that's going to make a big difference. But a frost card will, 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 will kill the action, probably. Yeah, so I think a Jack of Diamond would make a, would would make some interesting. Yeah. Oh, card on the board would make it nice. It's yeah. Is it a race now? <laughs> well, there's some confusion over yeah. here. All right. <laughs> so a check race from the second core. Well, Mr. Earhart. All right. Well. It is also for us sometimes difficult to see what's going on. And um, the purple chips, what, what is it worth? 5,000? Do you see 10, purple 000? chips? Yeah, you froze in a purple chip now. Yeah, I've, uh, well, I, I, d I never had a purple chip yesterday, yeah. so probably that's a 5,000. No, the, the yellow is 5,000. Yeah, so the yellow must is 5,000. Maybe purple is 10. Well, 
I always think it's kind of funny. He, 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 he makes a. Yeah. Do I really have to call? And then, then he races to 5,000. That, that, that <laughs> looks so this strong. This is going like. Too bad we don't have a good angle uh, and we just see. Well, oh, all right, there was already a turn. Uh, I, I never saw okay. it, sorry. <laughs> but that went quick. No, all no, right. the, the turn is, is, is a throw on after the free bet on the flop. Yeah, it yeah. was 1200, 2400, and then oh, 5000. Okay, okay. But this I card is probably extra killer. <laughs> this, well, Mr. Rosal yeah. almost all in. He only has got blacks behind. So I don't think he's going to fold anymore. Uh, me too. I think it's a flush against the set. Yeah, kind of something like that. But I'm uh, Ro Rosal with uh, the flush. Eric with the set. Well, the Rosal made it pre-flop. He made it uh, mm -hmm. different. So you th now think that Rosal has a flush? Yeah. And the river is a six. Well. All in for 3,600. What, what can he think yeah, about? <laughs> <laughs> the pot is more than 33,000. <laughs> and he's thinking about 3,000. Well, Mr. Earhart, you should have known how much stack he had. Yeah. And w it should have been... Would he only have the, have the ace of space or something? Yeah, well, probably then. No, but that that really doesn't make sense. No. But <laughs> sometimes you do see ace like king with a king with, uh, with ace of spades. Yeah, well, I'm very amazed uh, now, mm -hmm. actually. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, this is the first but end. Huh? I'm also very curious in <laughs> what they have now. He calls. Yeah, he's the tens. Guess what I said. And Mr. Rosell, what does he got? A7 for or actually nothing. nothing. Wow. A7? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm sorry. We should not laugh, but <laughs> this is kind of kind of strange. It, when we talked about the flop bet of the 1200 of, of Mr. Erhard, we already uh, we already said it, it, it's inducing a race when yes. he made 1200. But <laughs> uh, yeah, well, uh, I exactly. Yeah, Mr. Rosa uh, really he played he it well, and he, he was thinking, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he he got his his <laughs> double up. Uh, wow, <laughs> Mr. Rosa, indeed, he, he played it well, but I'm uh, amazed yeah. by Mr. Erhard. Yeah, and I'm amazed that, but he. <laughs> yeah, I'm he really he amazed about this hand, but hey, come he on, this is beautiful for yeah. you, uh, for you guys. He check raised the flop on two, three, ten with a seven. Yeah, well, that's uh, but he, he, uh, he, and he, the turn. He, he, he had to back back to diamonds. Hmm? Oh wait. Oh. Right. Well, this was a. Uh, Next hand. <laughs> Let's say we're going to do a next hand. Yeah. It was an interesting hand, and I think, well, Roland Rosal, he played it well. He got totally his double up. Yeah. And, um, well, in a new hand, we got the Olivier Estipio. He opened 650. But, but he, he and two callers at this moment. Quinton Lecomte and getting a good price, of course, for his big blind. <laughs> Maybe he has some other plans. Just a call. Just a call. Well, he, he he doesn't have a lot of chips, so it's still twelve thousand. Yeah, forty big blinds. Forty big blinds. But yeah, he was priced in to now see a miraculous flop, of course. I'm still amazed by a brief hand. Yeah, I'm, I'm also. I'm, I'm like, <laughs> oh wow, that's a great hand to commentary the yeah. first. But for also, us, right? <laughs> also, Mr. Rosal, he looks like a conservative guy. 
Yeah. And, and when, when, when he bet the 1200, we were both 1200. 1200 and 5200 pot. Yeah. That's like a. He looks very strong <laughs> and he, and he yeah. gets all the action with air there. Wow. Yeah, well, that's, uh, that's maybe, well, for us a big tell, but for some people it wasn't. And a continuation bet of 1300 into three colors. Yeah. You probably would do that with, with, with every ace there. Mm -hmm. We got a call from Pierre. It Roger folds. And Quinton is thinking about it. It's kind of an action board. With a flush well, draw, a straight draw. 10 jack, yeah, that y you're, you're doing good. And we got a flush draw possibility. Well, yeah, it's possible to get a set of nines here, but I think a set of nines would have raised over here. Uh, this is an action board. And yeah, we got two callers. And we're gonna see a turn. The turn. It's a five of hearts. Well, that can. Whoa, oh, that was a river. very quick check from everyone. And already everybody, have river. everybody afraid for the flush. Yep. And who's gonna try to pick it up? He could fail you bet here with with uh, ten jack or something. Yeah. Well, if you if you have ten flush. jack and would you like how much big bet? How big would you make it, oh. Tobias? Forty percent of the pot or something. Yeah. Don't want to commit to too much chips, but you want you want to get value from from, from that hand. Yeah, Pierre. Pierre is reluctantly calling. He's like, oh, I cannot fold. But what does Quinton do? King Jack. Yeah, that's not good. There's not a winner, of course. No. The other got a five. A five. Uh, yeah, again, an uh, interesting hand. Yeah. Because that's kind of light. He's calling King Jack only like a gut shot. No, no, he, he was the better, right? No, no, Pierre Mendes. He was called with just a king? Yeah, with King Jack on a queen. He was thinking, Ladis, Ladis, oh, wow. let's go Ladis. <laughs> but too bad. He got a king. <laughs> and he paid him off. Ooh la la. <laughs> Pierre, what do you do? You call. Oh, yeah. And you're wrong. But oh, yeah. Happens. Sometimes you think you have a read on someone and you're wrong. Oh, yeah. yeah but that, that board, multi way, was, was, yeah. uh, was, uh, I was too dangerous to think that your King Jack is good. Yeah, that is uh, very optimistic, yes. <laughs> but maybe, come on, we're just, we just entered and maybe they got some tells of each other. They're playing the whole day. To, because, uh, yeah, this uh, tournament has absolutely a great structure. Um, you're playing a lot of hours with people and sometimes you have a read on someone and, hey, sometimes it can be good. But this time it wasn't. All right, new hand. We got an opening by Roger. Big Roger. Makes it 1,000. And he picks it up. I've seen it more of the way with, 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 with Roger. I've played a couple of tournaments with him. Yeah. But his big pass, he, he, he also opened, opens big. Yeah. He's, uh, he's not of a min raising. No. Uh, and, uh, he's, uh, if you want to play, you play. Yeah. But, but, but it's good when you also do that with your uh, with your Sulu connection. Yeah, yeah, not only of course. your big pass, of course. No, of course. Yeah, no, and uh, Roger, well, he's uh, already. Uh, well, I've seen my first time was in 2000. Uh, and, uh, an eight actually, and uh, there I already saw him, and uh, there I, I was, uh, yeah, I, I thought, okay, this guy, well, he makes it so big, but he does get a lot of chips, so he knows what he's yeah, doing. For sure. He knows absolutely what he's doing, and if you see his resume, well, then you see that he's winning, and uh, he's well, on the circuit for the couple of, uh, for, for yeah. almost seven, eight years already, I think. Yeah, a long time. Mm, probably and longer. Yeah. And he's, he's still here, so he's, do, he's doing something good. Absolutely. 
And we have Pierre who is uh, limping in. We got Benjamin who raises up to a thousand. And uh, Felix is calling. Yeah, well, Felix. Oh, I thought Mr. Aaron <laughs> yeah. was, was out, but he, he's got some on tips left. No, he got 10,000. He had 33,000, uh, wow. Tobias. He had the big stack. So, probably he uh, he did good mm. in some pots. Do, do you think he's, he, he's uh, uh, cooled down now? Or he's still a little bit... Well, you see him even calling with uh, only 10,000 yeah. chips. Yeah. He's still defending his big blind. I don't know what with what. Maybe he has a real hand, but... Um, in my perspective, as I, the first impression I have of Mr. Earhart is kind of too loose. <laughs> mm. I would say that. How come? Well, it's a quick opinion, but you're probably right. Yeah. You c often can see it at the body language, and well. Uh, a lot of times when, when people lose the big pots, you, you see the enjo enjoyment of the game is <laughs> totally gone for a oh couple yeah, of yeah, minutes. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and uh, yeah, they want to win it back. Yeah. And only the, well, kind of professionals, they know when to hold your tilt, sit. But sometimes you pick up a big hand right, right, right away and then you can yeah, use, you use the, the image Th of tilting. That's the most yeah. beautiful part. When, when you're like kind of when you're really actually on tilt, everybody thinks you're on tilt, and then you get aces or kings yeah. and stuff like that. That's the best. And best don't, don't make it big. <laughs> yes, of course. Of course. Yeah, no, no, that's good. Oh, yeah, but it's better not to tilt yeah. and not to get on that stage. Oh, yeah, but that's difficult sometimes. All right. We got a new hand. New hand. All right. Mr. Harabadian. It looks like a race to 625. Yep, 625, Bastian Jolie. Oh, we got a call by uh, Roland. Rosel. Roland Rosel, yeah. Oh, yes. Roland also looks like a guy who likes a lot of flops. Don't, don't give too much action pre-flop, but just uh, yeah. Well, he plays his hit. hands kind of. Oh, Mr. S. Tripo, frozen in a five thousand. Just what he it looks like he made the race to nineteen hundred. Yeah, Quinton Lecomte uh, with a small stack of eleven. He made it nineteen hundred. And now, Bastion. Well, he's thinking about going for it or not. His stick is also not that big. He, he has like 20k or something. It's a jolly, yeah. <laughs> Maybe he's thinking about. It. If he wants to go for the hand, yes or no? For the whole 10k. Oh, now we Let's got a go. fold and Roselle. Looks like a fold also. Yeah. Oh, maybe no. not. No, he likes to call. What, what would be uh, would be his range of calling there? Well, I think a queen jack, a king jack, king queen, that kind of hand. <laughs> he wants to see a flop. This guy, well, he now got a big stack, so he's going for it. Uh, he could hit a queen there. He could have hit a queen. It is always like, yes. I didn't know it was public. 
Standard confirmation bet. In it really looks yeah, like Mr. Rose so like, uh, really he hit his queen. Has a queen. I, I think I was good with a queen jack or a king queen. Kind of, kind of that kind of hand. But oh, we see, we'll see soon enough if uh, Mr. Lacombe really has a hand. Yeah. Or only has his king. Oh. oh, oh. That's the action card. Sure. The, the flash completes. And the king. It's a strange section. Now suddenly Rosso is I think is going to bet out. Into the uh, the aggressor. What kind of hand should he bet out there? King Queen? Yeah. Would you I, I don't think he has a flush. But he wouldn't bet his flush there. And Lacombe, is he thinking about his ace king? Ace queen? Is it still good? Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it just has the X or something. Then it's the easy, easy fold now. Oh. <laughs> well, I think really he has a queen and he's really thinking, yeah. is my king good over there? But uh, Is my queen good over there? But I know for sure he wa he was in front on the flop, but the yeah. king changes a lot. <laughs> yeah, especially king of diamonds. Ah, uh, he c he could not honestly have like an ace of diamond, maybe ace king, but he can also make it a kind of bluff. Mm, let's go. Let's go. Oh, what's it? It's a strange line to uh, to uh, check all the flop and uh, don't bet that, that turn. Yeah. Normally, if, if he really has a, a, has a failure hand there, most of the time he goes for the check raise or check call. Well, yeah, it's uh, th these three hands. We only still have three hands, and all three hands they're like, hmm, uh, nice. <laughs> 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 all right. D do you think that um, the fact that they are on, on the TV table changes their game a little bit, like the the, the a uh, a seven bluff? It was just a just a random bluff. Yeah, it w I really couldn't. Well, I couldn't understand this no. thinking process. No, actually. not at all. <laughs> Should, should, uh, should as players think about it now, now I can show what, what I've got and then uh, put some pressure on the other, other players? Yeah. Well, it was the wrong timing. Yeah. <laughs> but that's that's uh, yeah that's a beautiful part of life game uh, of live poker. If you see somebody like yeah he he made a made a three bet so he's, he's really telling you okay I got a hand and then he's like. For me, it was strong. The 1200, I was like, okay, this is an yeah. inducing to let him raise because mm. normally it would make like 3000 something. And this was like so little. Mm. He was like a um, milking factory. <laughs> mm. <laughs> he tried to. And then he got like, a raise with A7 with, with 2400. Yeah. And he still called the re raise to 5000. Yeah, so I <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm really mm. surprised. But yeah. <coughs> Maybe I was hoping maybe I hit my ace. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, and then uh, on the referee falls, but ah, maybe my ace is good. <laughs> oh, yeah. But uh, we're already gotten in a new hand, and uh, yeah. we see Jax over here. And that's the winner. Yeah.
Uh, the flop, turn and river went check check all the way. Yep. Pot control of the jacks. See it. The yeah commentary is sometimes difficult because we we can't we either can't see the cards of course and sometimes there's a kind of delay. It looks like a delay or or it sometimes goes too quick. So um, well, if you see whole cards, it makes it a. Uh, much more interesting, yeah. of course, and only at the final table of uh, the Unibet. Uh, then you see the whole cards. There's a half hour de de delay, so that is making it interesting. And uh, well, I hope I will be on it, and uh, you can do some commentary. Uh, <laughs> oh, I will for sure. Then, <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be funny. Oh, yeah. But it, it it's always nice when, even in, in a non-showdown spot, they, 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 you can see the hands afterwards. Of course, of course. In, in, you can understand the whole thinking process of a, of a player. Exactly. Oh, and sometimes you still don't understand the thinking process. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, well, sometimes, hey, yeah. Uh, there's like a, well, why do you do that? And um, everybody's thinking differently about poker, so that makes it interesting. Mm. And, of course, there will be like really some fanatics who say, okay, this and this, that's the right line, but uh, in live poker, you so shouldn't always take the right line. Sometimes you have to, well, the creative trust, line. Your, trust the, your instincts yeah. and be a little bit creative and, well, play it like a lunatic. And, uh, oh yeah, it works sometimes like that. All right, we got a three king four, and uh, there was a bet on the flop, and we got a king on the turn. I thought uh, Jolie was a pre-flop racer, but Roger took over the action on the flop, and he continues his action on the turn. No, it's a check check. It's a check check, and we got a jack on the river. Roger makes it thirteen hundred. It's actually it looks like he wants a call now, or it is a blocking bet. Yeah, it, it's a block bet for for a hand like uh, Jack Queen or something. Yeah, well, he he can also like call with uh, with four, five, four, six, that mm. kind of hand, and he's thinking, hey, my four is good over here. And probably Jody is is thinking, is my ace high good? Yeah. If you look at the, at the small small bet, Roger has has at least two pairs. Of course, that, that's not difficult because yeah. you only have to have, have a three or four or, yeah. or jack, and then you have two pair. So, and well, he, I, th I think Jolie had an ace high, and he was thinking now, and probably Roger had a, maybe a four or something, four, five, four, six. He defends. Yeah. He Roger, I, I know, <laughs> like, yeah, I know Roger likes flops, and he plays a lot, and I also like that game. And um, well, yeah, I think this was like a typical. Uh, I got a four, and uh, pay me off. Oh uh, yeah, Jolie couldn't do anything more because there was like a typical that he had the ace high. So <coughs> a race on the river uh, would have been okay. Yeah, of course. To represent a hand like uh, ace jack or something. Ace, uh, of course, the jack can he could uh, use it, but it's it's life on uh, on online. You see that a lot of more, of course. Life, you see it less because. Well, a lot of time people tell with their whole body and uh, face that they missed it or <laughs> they just only have an ace high or something and then they're like, ah, oh, what should I do? Some people, they're good and they can, of course, uh, try to steal it. But we have an undergun race of Surayo and a call of Rosso. And we got... Roger, you know, he folds. It's typical, uh, Mr. Erhard only has uh, 11 big blinds and he, and he calls the race. Oh, hey. He has 20 big blinds, he calls the race. Well, it's, it's, it's okay, but... 
il a vu le style dans le magazine de Erard, c'est pour ça qu'il a fait le style. Il 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 a fait le style.
Yes, Mr. Lacan. Well, you already fold. Test if you. He opens. It's a quick hint. Looks like it. Or yeah. maybe uh, Mr. Rosell has some plans. Yeah, he yeah. likes to see it. Yeah, looks interested and yes. We got a flop. In a short time we're sitting here. Mr. Rosso has the biggest uh, TPIP. I know it. We have to have a certain time to be able Sorry. No, no, no. He has a 7 minute bus. I too. Hi, hi, hi. And the Benga bus. All right. We got a ten. We got a jack on the turn. Well, That's an interesting card. It's an over card. Over card. It and makes a straight. So. And Rosal, it's a pretty big bet. Sixty percent flop or something. Uh, pop bet. Oh, and that oh. looks like a good card then for Mr. Rosal. In my opinion, Mr. Rosal looks pretty strong now. The way he takes the chips. Yeah, uh, I just read an interesting article, and uh, it was on the, in the Dutch website. Uh, maybe you read it also. It yeah. was about the strengths of hands, and uh, there has been a study. That uh, the poker face, that's not the biggest indication of somebody's bluffing. And uh, yeah, this uh, but has the, the way people take their chips. And it throw them has in. to do with the hands. The hands, for you people uh, who are listening and watching, watch the hands. The hands the, and the betting, that makes the biggest tell, actually. Yeah, it was kind of interesting. Uh, uh, they did uh, uh, um, in America. There were students. I thought I thought it was America. And there are a lot of students who watched uh, well all kind of videos about well, of poker players. I, I, I don't know if you saw it now, but when uh, Escapel called uh, the race, he w uh, his hand was shaking. So yeah. it it could be a signal of, of very strength. Okay. Or, 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 but most of the time it's weakness. Yeah, and Rosal he checked. It's an interesting card, the, the king, because it, it, it's a one card straight board now. A single queen makes a straight. Yep. But there's still the flush. Yeah. Well, uh, Rosal only called preflop, so he can have like a ten jack. Oh, this, this, this is interesting now. Uh, Estripeu takes over the action again. Yeah, Rosal. He bets out. About bets out. No, I think Rosal checked. Yeah, Rosal checked. Yeah, he checked to Estripeu. What what is it? Is something like like two pair hand or something? Yeah, Jack maybe nine? he had a ten jack or a ten nine. Then yeah. Well, now the king. It looks like it, it makes a difference for him. So. But he. It would be like uh, beautiful when he now shoves mm. all in, and you would ex uh, expect Estrepeu to to fail you bet his straight yes, or something here. Exactly. He would, and yes. Too bad we cannot see the the whole cards, <laughs> but I would definitely want to see this one because he was <laughs> shaking when he called the turn. Yeah. Uh, maybe 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 he's shaking always. Well, some people have that. Yeah, of course, of course. That's that's true. But uh, for all you people watching uh, this, take good notice at the betting and the hands of, well, the ones who are playing, because uh, that uh, is very interesting. Normally, when the hands are very re relaxed and cool, then it's people are relaxed, or their hands oh is, yeah. is strong enough. 
but you you often see some um, how do you call it in, uh, when, when hands are, are really tight in the uh, uh, anxious yeah anxious yeah when no uh, yeah. see for some people uh, here at Unibet um, it's their first live tournament and uh, well there's a lot of people who are excited and who are thrilled of course and some people who are a little bit scared and it's, uh, it's a lot of money so hey of course hey uh, first prize well there's n at this moment we don't know yet what's gonna be the first prize <laughs> well, we got like a 320 330 and yeah, entrance. The first prize will will be at least one hundred thousand, probably a yeah. little bit more. I think there's gonna be a maybe a hundred and ten. <laughs> that would be a nice number for all the Dutch viewers. hundred and ten. Rotterdam? No, it's my phrase from uh, PCA Bahamas. You know, when I won on the team K, on the team K, I said one hundred and ten thousand. Yeah, that was a. That was a good moment, a television history mo making moment in poker. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, the action. We got a opening by six uh, from six fifty from uh, Olivier Estrepio, a uh, caller from uh, David Svensson, and Bastian Jolie. He made it eighteen hundred, and it looks like. We got a re-race. Oh. Re-race. Re a four bit. Yeah. Uh, well, like often, often, because he just played a big pot, so this is often it is strong. Yeah. Um, it, 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 it is in my opinion, it is strong. So, because he just won a, a won a nice, sizable pot, and he was like, well, normally you you take a little bit rest, but when you won just a hand, and now. Uh, yes, Jolly also thinks he is very strong. Wrong timing. Next Wrong hand. timing. <laughs> At least there's a lot of a uh, lot of action on this table. People Absolutely. Like, like to play hands. Every hand, almost every hand is a. Uh, Multi-way hand. Yeah. I think Mr. Erhard is, 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 is pretty relaxed after losing a big pot. What's on? He found back his patience to uh, to look for the good hand. A race from Roger and everybody falls. Mr. Minas, he folds. We got Roger, and he's <coughs> limping. I don't think we, we we've seen Mr. Minas uh, play a hand yet. 
Yeah, we do. We did yeah? with the King Jack. Oh, you caught it with the yeah, King Jack. Yeah. <laughs> and he's thinking, okay, I should protect my stack, so I'm not playing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and at this moment, we got Roger. He limps. Well. I always find it interesting that people are limping, and uh, especially people with a lot of experience. Well, it was curious. We, we, earlier we were talking about uh, Roger, uh, who raced pretty big. Yeah, most and now time. suddenly he's limping. End, he, he min raced, and everybody thought. Yeah. yeah and he, he showed, his, uh, showed his hand, but I couldn't see it clearly, but I thought it was aces. But now, except, uh, the hand after, he limps, so it, it changes his game a lot. So the yeah, yeah. But yeah, you have to, because yeah. well, some players, and maybe this was like a, a whole, yeah, the whole. Uh, uh, probably he wanted this because of Mr. Earhart, the player who's playing kind of opportunistic. Well, and th th this, this is also strange. Bet. He bets two thousand in two thousand five hundred, and what's your goals? Yeah, so I think. Bo I think. They both have a, like a kind of monster or yeah. something. Yeah, uh, maybe just top pair, but no, he's all in. He's yeah. he he was. Did you see what he did? Earhart, we was he was taking yeah. okay. a big breath. I throw it in. He was like, oh shit, yes, I have, I go all in. I think he has a monster. Yeah, mo most of the time he's strong. And Roger, he probably was. Searching for maybe a diamond, and he has yeah. a kind of eight or no nine. Yeah. He had nine, ten or something. That's exactly what I think. Also, he's limping. So he, if he had a queen in his hand, he al already caught. I think because of the size of the Roger, clutch. what uh, he's really thinking about? Uh, this is no show. He's really thinking. <laughs> Always like the way he sits. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> a big, big fist on the table. I saw him do it one time, and that was my f uh, when I won Monaco. Um, I saw him uh, act, uh, act asking the clock on him for oh himself, yeah. and that was like, wow, huh? Yeah. Why would you do that? But I kind of liked it. He was just saying, okay, I'm thinking too long about this hand, and nobody asked me a clock, so I'm gonna ask myself a clock, and yeah. And what do we got? Did he call? Yeah. Yeah, he called. Set of eights. Set of eights. Ten nine. Yeah. Yeah. We said, we said nine. Yeah. But he didn't have di diamond with it. And I knew he had Felix. So was test. But Roger. <laughs> but if I, I don't I don't like the play of Roger now. Because no. he, he called a very big bet on a flop with only a gut shot. Yeah, well no no it, it was check on the turn. It was check check on the on the flop. flop. Yeah, oh, it was check on the nine. Oh, okay, yeah. that's uh, understandable. On the nine he and he got a gut shot. He's just calling and he's thinking, okay. But he should have seen when he went all in it was like, Oh yeah, yeah. well then I have to go all in, I don't have anything. Please call me <laughs> He was saying, nah. And uh, yes, now I can understand. He had a set, Mr. Erhard. Well, but his patience paid off because when he lost a bit big pot, yeah, next to yeah, hands, yeah. he st he still killed. But after that, he he found back his uh, his rest. Yeah. And he waited for his hand, and uh, he doubled up. Good for him. Good for him. All right. And we got a 
Minrez, Enacolba, Benjamin and Felix. Well, he just played a hand and now he's 3-betting to 21.50. And again... It is... Hey... This is interesting. Bastian, he made it 4,600, oh, 4, I mean. And now the action comes back at Felix and he calls. Well, that's a flop. is a three, a jack, and a ten. Two diamonds. Well, Felix checks and Bastian Jolie is going all in. Kind of all in, he bets 10,000. Oh, he's betting 4,000. He's thrown in his purple chip, that's a 10,000 chip. What was the pre uh, action? Sorry, I missed it. And Felix only calls w oh. with his, with his 10,000 stick. <laughs> yes, so it is uh, kind of remarkable that it's not already going all in, but they both got only, only a third pot behind. A nine of diamond. Well, does that make all the difference? Well, it can make if he ha would have I don't king, think queen, but... I, I don't think it matters because bo bo both of them not going anywhere anymore. They shouldn't go anywhere. <laughs> well... Yeah. Jolie is all in for 7,000. Huh? Wow, this is... Oh, oh man. What was he what looking a, for? What a, what a very creative person is Mr. Earhart. <laughs> Can we please see what he has? <laughs> He's not happy with himself. Uh, I think uh, uh, Mr. Earhart isn't playing a lot of times. He's kind of... Kind of... Strange in his lines. <laughs> He's calling so many chips for more than half a sub stack for maybe a drawing hand. Well, I just well am probably amazed as all of you viewers. <laughs> oh yeah. These kind of guys, yeah, they're sometimes so not predictable, so unpredictable, that it it makes still great television. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And yes, well, the but sometimes it's also very difficult to play against because you don't, you don't you don't you, you don't know their thinking process. Exactly. Well, so, uh, you know, I, I still like to play also sometimes small tournaments and uh, very small tournaments and just to have fun. But also, yeah, I like to to see the these 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 strange lines. But this one was really like a line that I haven't seen a lot of times. <laughs> Well, I just saw it when I was in uh, Leeuwarden. I played uh, the 60 euro uh, freeze out there are only on, 30 on a Thursday. There. Yes, yes. <laughs> Sometimes when I when I'm uh, yeah when I when I'm back home, I just just like like the the whole poker. So, and then people get funky against me. They want to bust my ass, of course. <laughs> and um, then they throw it in very yeah. sometimes very lightly, only with ace high when well. I sometimes <laughs> really do have the nuts or the trips or... And yeah, uh, that's also like... This was kinda... Such a hand. <laughs> if, you, if you love the game, some, uh, most of the time the amount doesn't really matter. No, exactly. Luckily I'm not having problems with that. Hmm? All right, we get a three ace ten deuce three clubs. Svensson with his 10,000, no, 9,000 stack. 
Oh, he's betting. Twenty-seven hundred. <laughs> and Pierre, well, he makes the call. I'm always like uh, kind of amazed when people, when they have very small stacks and still play big pots, and yeah, this can change a lot. But for who? Pierre doesn't look interested, but... <laughs> Alright, it's a check. And it Pierre... Yeah, he didn't look interested, but often it is strong. Uh, we ten high flush, I see. No, no, that was not ten high. That was two pair. Oh, and he, Pierre, he made a bluff, and he just showed it. Yes, David Svensson. He gave him the opportunity to bluff. So yeah, well, it's difficult, but I think the first one who made action, yeah, he would be the winner and. Svensson, he was afraid for it, and he would have lost with a ace 10 because. But it was possible for Svensson to bluff over here, just to say all in. But yeah. All right, we're gonna fold Bastian, Benjamin, and Roland. Quinton is folding Olivier. He's making a bet six, seven, five. Felix Fold, David Fold, Pierre Fold, and we got Roger, and he Fold. Oh, we, I didn't see that, but Felix made the call. Oh, all right. And we got a Queen 7 deuce, all spade. Flop. All of your first action, he makes a continuation bet. Mr. Erard, yes, he likes that flop and calls it. Yeah, still, there's a seven. Does that make a big difference? But the, the fact that, that, that he called the flop. With and only four, again, four and a half hours behind. Yes, yes, makes it makes it kind of strong. It's kind of strong, and now he saw him already again. He, he, you, you saw him breathe very easily, actually, or very. I think he has a monster again. This is going to be the last hand for round five. Then there's going to be a uh, we go to 200, 400. No, oh, this is the last hand and 150, 300, I think. Oh yeah, last hand, that last hand for 153. Okay. Okay, our last hand, Tobias. Yes. We're gonna have our dinner break. Let's see. 
if we're gonna get some action. Well, it looks like Roland Rosal, he just calls. We got Mr. Earhart. He raised it up to a thousand with his small stack, so let's see if that's strong. And Roselle, he calls. All right, flop. Three diamonds, eight of hearts, and a tree of spade. Well, that's a quick check. We got a nine of hearts. Mr. Rosal, he bets two thousand. And we got a quick call. Mr. Earhart. <laughs> the river is a king of heart. Well, that is possible for uh, Mr. Earhart to And yes, we got an all-in situation. It's not a lot for uh, Roselle. Uh, only 2200, uh, and he calls. I think. He calls. He hits the king on the river. And what does <laughs> Evert has? Stray. No, and flush. 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 Yeah. And he finds his du double up again. And yes, he got his double again. <laughs> oh, what a magic turn card this was. It was a 9 of art to give him a gut shot and the flush draw and yeah there he the did it again that's it that's it for us uh, yeah that's it for us we're gonna we get have some our replacements uh, our dinner break <laughs> all right thank you thank bye you bye. and bye bye Ah, pardon. Merci. Euh, 
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Unibet Open here in Cannes. We are currently um, watching the feature table at the moment. The blinds are around 300, 150, with a running ante of 25. Uh, we have just changed levels, and we are proud to pronounce that the prize pool has been announced. Nice. 100,000 euros for the winner. And we're paying, I believe, 36 players today. So, a lot of money. Be one. Yeah, I agree. Few days. Um, I'm sat here with Norcha. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Gonna tell uh, tell the viewers what you what you do for Unibet. Yeah, of course, no problem. I'm uh, Norcha. I uh, work as an account manager, uh, serving uh, the Dutch market. So obviously, I'm very happy to see quite a lot of Dutchies are playing today. Yeah. And are still in and doing well, so it's good. Um, even from yesterday. There's nearly like one guy, chip leader as well, or at least number one of best out of three. Yeah, yeah. So it's really good. And uh, yeah, I'm very pleased to be here. It's a very nice tournament. And uh, yeah, I'm very curious what's going to happen and who's going to end up on the final table. <laughs> nice prize to be given away. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> That's um, good. Did you take over from Ward? Um, no, Natalie. Jobs? Natalie, okay. Yeah. Awards for the uh, Belgium. The Belgium market, of course. Yeah. yeah, of course. Even though Ward is actually... Is he he's Dutch? He, is he? Uh, no? He's from Belgium. He's from Belgium. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's well. kind of the same. <laughs> it's not they the think same. it's the same. No, it's not. <laughs> it's the same as England and Scotland. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're kind of the same, but we're not. <laughs> no, they want to be Dutch, but we don't really accept that. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> but he's actually uh, here as well. Yeah, I'm looking forward to saying hello. Um, I haven't seen him for a, for a while now. So. Yeah, he's going to play side tournaments. So That's right, yeah. We normally do some commentary together, but yeah. I haven't seen him for the last couple of days, so... Um, try and find him, maybe he's up for we'll, it. We'll grab hold of him and tell yeah. him to come over <laughs> for half an hour, yeah. <laughs> but looking back at our table here, I've just been passed over some information from the, uh, from the Dutchies who've just been on the, on the live stream, uh, Peter de Kova. Um, he mentions that Felix Erhardt um, has been playing like a, like a madman, basically. All right. So this should be interesting to see how yeah. he does. Um, if anybody in the chat box or on Twitter or on our Facebook page have any questions they'd like to ask, um, anything at all, don't don't hesitate. Give us a shout. We'll try and find out what we can do for you. If there's any players that you're following, if there's anything that you want to you know know about them, just let us know who they are, and we can get our bloggers on the case, and they can try and find out how many chips they have or if they're still in, um, you know things like that. So. Don't be quiet, come on, talk to us. <laughs> We've got a uh, big famous French player on the table at the moment, uh, Roger, Roger. Harabedian. Yeah. Um, he's won over five and a half million oh. dollars in prize pool, <laughs> prize winnings. That's uh, pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see, he's playing now. Someone having questions? Uh, no, nothing yet. They're asking, basically there's a couple of people speaking in French, which is fine because we do have um, Antoine sitting beside us who will answer in French. Uh, but if you can, guys, if you can keep it in, in English for us in the chat box, yeah, that means we can actually speak to you. If it's in a language you don't speak, then we can't answer yeah, your question. It's <laughs> as simple as that. I can speak a little bit of French, but that's like Je m'appelle and that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Un beer. Dos. So let's see what's what's happening. Well we have a hand with uh, Pierre Menez and Roland Rosel, along with Felix Erhardt, who we've been telling uh, has been going a bit crazy. Um, <coughs> big bet here by Pierre Menez, three thousand. Roland Rosel is still in the hand. I think Felix is folded. Looking very happy. <laughs> he really wants to be here. We should try and... <laughs> what, 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 what I say? Trying lip read. 
Yeah, it's too Ooh, fast. It's oui. all French. Hola. Yeah, yeah. Oui, oui. <laughs> Where are <the> baguette? <laughs> yeah. Fromage. <laughs> du jambon. Still looking relaxed. Yeah, the password for our free roll this evening. There you go. It's Golden Palm. And you could win a satellite ticket to uh, one of our super satellites or to the weekly final. If you finish in the top eight of the weekly final, you will win a package to Unibet Open in Riga in That's December. That's going to be it. Super I've nice heard a lot one. of good things about yeah. Riga. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to that myself. And, uh, this is my second, and I've been. I was in Copenhagen now yep. here, and to say this one is amazing as well as in Copenhagen. But everyone was so pleased. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's so looking forward for so, Riga. Yeah, so exactly. Yeah. It would be super nice to have a big group coming. Yeah, absolutely. I missed the last Riga one, so I'm. Uh, I'm looking forward it's to this be one. Cold. Yeah, yeah. It'll but be very cold, but uh, yeah. No one seemed to complain about that. <laughs> well, the good news is we're indoors. We're in a, we're in a casino. It's yeah. not really cold inside the casino. And yeah, Riga is a fun city. And if you do get too cold in Riga, there's plenty of uh, plenty of ways to you can you can heat yourself up. <laughs> Parties, yeah. alcohol, you know. Uh, yes. It should be fun, whatever happens. Uh, nothing happened. What is? Nah, they no. just check bed fold. That's all that happens for day one. It's not really. Yeah, it's not the crazy most exciting, exciting days. at yeah, the moment. Yeah. Tomorrow and Sunday, they'll, they'll be... Few are uh, out now, not too many. Yeah, I, think. Um, I don't see the, the board hasn't been updated yet for us, so yeah. we can't see how many have actually been knocked out or, or still remain at the moment. But um, I think we had close to 170 players registering today. Yeah. And like I say, with the prize pool being over... Um, it's 100k. Yeah, for, for the winner, they're, they're going to receive 100k now, so... Oh, nice. Nice flop, yeah. Ace, Ace, four. Let's see what I gotta do. Check. Olivier Estripeau and Benjamin Surya. Oh, yeah. yeah. Better thousand in the calls. Nice club would be nice. Well, what we got here? Are we gonna see? Yeah, six of clubs. Oh, wow. Well. Two Sweet. aces on the board, flush draws, <laughs> straight draws. This is what we like. Okay, what are we going to do? And a six on the river, so we've got full of houses, straights, flushes, everything. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. That's going to be a tough call. What do you reckon? What? Oh, he's betting. Yeah, um, Estropo has made a bet, 2100. He could have a king high, he could have anything here. He's just check, checked all the way through, so really they could have absolutely anything. Yeah. He does have, um, was that a pair of fives? Did he show them? Oh. I'm not sure. I think he showed a pair of fives, which is playing the board basically with a five kicker. Yeah. Because we have two pairs, aces and sixes, so the fives didn't really play, but... He won the hand, which is good. <laughs> nice little bluff there. So yeah, we have the um, first place payout will be 100,000 euros. Second place will receive just under 70,000 euros, 69,800. And our third place finish will get 44,900. So nice. Beautiful money, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we're paying all the way down to 36. So That's pretty good. And usually it's get double their money, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's worth the visit. What was the highest payout? You know? um, about 130, I think. Got it on my system here for maybe two seconds. Um, yeah, of course. Yeah, Unibet Open um, London 2009. Um, it was a special edition, kind of a 2,500 high roller. And uh, Than Doan walked away with 187,000 euros. That's very 
nice. It's very nice indeed. <laughs> yeah, the biggest normal Unibet Open was um, in Budapest in 2010. Uh, Anton Pieter Wink, Wink walked away with 172,000. What would you do with it? Spend it Buy all. Buy a new car. <laughs> 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 I would go shopping. Shopping for, for yeah. a week and then, yeah. Have I'm at the right left. address here. You are, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, the biggest one that I've been involved in uh, was the Paris one in May, yeah. and that was uh, that was 140,000 for the winner. Nice. That was May 2012. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty good. good. Yeah, That's pretty a nice good one to win. Yeah. We do have a, a big hand here developing. There's quite a few players in the pot. There's uh, four players. So we've got Erhard Lecomte, Menez, and Svensson. All sitting next to each other as well. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Uh, four race, nine queen on the board. Menez makes the first bet of 2,200. Quentin Lecomte makes the call. And Hart says no, thank you. As does Svensson. So we got heads up to the river. Five of hearts on the river. Menez all in. Quentin Lecomte calls. Wow. wow, two pairs against the, the set of fours. So Quentin Lecomte. <laughs> yeah, takes a nice little pot there. Increases his stack by 13,000 chips. So a dangerous player getting some good chips. <laughs> I feel like film stars now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On the TV, getting our photos taken. <laughs> so, do you play poker yourself then? Well, good question. Well, not really. I know I like to play a little bit, but I just notice I just don't have the patience. Yeah. yeah. Like I really respect everyone being here, like playing for hours and hours, and you know you have to pay attention to what everyone is doing, and to, I just get like yeah. To be, I just get bored myself. Right. Because I can't sit still for too long, <laughs> and um, you know I play with friends at home, frying some nice food. Yeah, yeah. Some snacks and I mean, a, nice a beer. Game, yeah. yeah, it's just yeah. very. Because um, I don't recreate. Uh, whoa, I never can. I'm never able to. Play. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the one. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say as a hobby, but it's not a hobby. Yeah, it, it kind, kind of is. It kind of is, yeah. But uh, yeah, it's fun. And you know, sometimes with some colleagues and uh, do a little bit of small games. I like. I enjoy it. I like to watch it. But uh, yeah, it's not not for me to sit there for hours. Oh, that's I, I always like to pretend I have an awesome poker face, but once I get two aces or something, I just yeah, start yeah. smiling. It's <laughs> really horrible. <laughs> it's impossible to get that grin off my face. So normally they always know and fold. And yeah. It's not fun <laughs> <laughs> if everyone is folding. When yeah, you have, like, if, if, if people get a better idea of how you're doing, then yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not the greatest yet. Let's have a look. 
But I, I wish, because it looks so much fun to be playing, and especially if you're on a nice table, you know, it's some nice people. I think it's always better to play live, to be honest with you. I think uh, online, obviously, uh, there was a lot of money to be made, and a lot of money to be made very fast. Yeah. But I think, um, you know, live, you got the the fun aspect of it as well. Yeah, you're there with some players. You, know, the players who you, you meet the same players as well, so you get, you know, a lot of friends. Um, yeah, I think that's what's some good so chatter super as well. nice here. Yeah, like nice you social really know event. the atmosphere yeah. is yeah. great. Yes, we had some welcome drinks and everyone was enjoying themselves. Oh having a laugh, a few beers. And uh, yeah, some of us regulars. There's so yeah. many that have been here for so many times. And uh, so yeah, I think it's always a great vibe. And I think it is. I mean, uh, when you kind of walk into the actual casino itself, you see... Uh, groups of players all together, all talking. You know, they might not have seen each other, all, you know, in person for for months, but they play with each other online all the time. They speak to each other, you know, MSN, yeah. Skype, and you know, it's it's it yeah, is, it's, it's nice. a good friendly atmosphere. Yeah. It's not like yeah. oh, we just have a group of Dutchies there and Swedes. No, Everyone it's seems totally to mixed. I mean, you yeah. know, you you got your obviously you're going to have your countries all staying together and talking to each other because it's easier. It's easier, to speak but language, still, everyone but is. You know, everyone knows a each other, so yeah, yeah. you know, and yeah, there's no really kind good. of. There's no airs and I mean a British term. There's no airs and graces. There's nobody who thinks they're better than somebody else. Yeah, true. Yes, and there might be millionaires in the room. Yes, there might be you know. <laughs> yeah, some famous people around. Yeah, but nobody is kind of so kind of. It's up, fun. We up just thought that the word, so, David yeah. Guetta was in the casino, but I think it was a lookalike. I did see him outside. <laughs> I wasn't sure if it was him or not. Uh, it no one like really him. knows. He really it really looks. It like did look like maybe him, yeah. someone at home knows if David Guetta is playing somewhere. Er Somewhere in the world, we don't know, but... We can Google that. Let's have a yeah, look. Yeah, let's have a look. It's actually funny, because we're like, some people even taking pictures. It did look like him. It yeah, the same hair. But, I'm not sure, maybe we should post a picture and uh, someone can tell us if it's if it was him or not. DavidGetter.com, surely. Yeah. Best turn the sound off just in case. <laughs> Copyright Maybe issues. Dave Guetta, yeah, yeah, let's have a look. Uh, let's have a look for his tour. Where is he now? Let's see. If it says Monty Collar, then we're laughing. Yeah, yeah, that is that might have been him. But he he came out of like a white, massive, super nice Porsche. Oh, he's in France. Where he is, is he? in France. Okay, so maybe it wow. was him then. Where is he playing? Because we we're really not sure. His next event is September 26th in Pasha in Ibiza. Okay. But there was an update there saying that he was in France. I think we need to check like the sun or like <laughs> <laughs> French sun. It he was him. It was him. I'm surely. not sure. Really? He looked. I think David was skinnier than the guy we saw. But some took pictures and even posted on Facebook, like, yeah, me and Dave Ketter. So I hope it was him, or <laughs> 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 I don't know if Dave Ketter likes a bit of poker or casino. Yeah, you never know. We should try and get him in the high roller event. Yeah. Free entry for a, for a set at the players' party tomorrow. Oh, that would be awesome. Yeah. yeah, I would be up for that. Yeah, if anybody is in Cannes, or if anybody is uh, indeed in the lobby at the moment, if you see David Ghetto, tell him to come and see us. We'll happily all chip in and buy him a seat if he wants to play. Oh, yeah. I think yeah. We all, if we all give a tenner. I'm not sure. I, he's, I think he's quite expensive. I think he would be, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Isn't he French? Where is he from? I think he is French, isn't he? I don't know. Um, I think he is. He likes girls' boobs. Yeah, <laughs> is he touching them? Oh yeah, he is. Yeah. Oh yeah, why not? Have a look at Wikipedia. Wikipedia. Let's have a look. Yeah, he's a French house music producer. Yeah. I don't know if it's him. We should find him and post a picture to see if it was him. He, he does look like him. It does, yeah. <laughs> but he, he looks a bit more skinny, I think. What, the, the, the photographs look more skinny? Yeah, but I yeah. think... Did you sure take a photo? No, I didn't, ah. but I know someone who did. And 
Because some, let me get the name. Someone thought it was him. It wasn't Al David Gettin. Yeah, a, a poker player from France. So it's or him or it's David Guetta. <laughs> <laughs> so it was Frank. Let's have a look at Frank. Uh, yeah. Albertine. Check if we can Google the name. Maybe we find the picture. Yeah. See if he looks like David Guetta. Yeah. But for the rest, I've not seen anyone. I was hoping to see some Brad Pitts walking around, or <laughs> but so far I was not really lucky. No, we said that last night. Wouldn't it be fun to actually. He does look. That is Stefan Albertini. Oh, is it? Wow! <laughs> yeah. It could be David Guetta's body double. Oh, so it wasn't David Guetta. Ah. Is he playing? We thought Where we had David Guetta in the card room. It's yeah. Stefan Albertini. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Someone took pictures with him, like, yeah. That's David Guetta. Yeah. That's Stefan Albertini. <laughs> <laughs> They're twins. But someone took the post off Facebook because <laughs> they were like, oh, yeah, look at me here with David Guetta. And we I were wouldn't like, take it off. I would leave it on and say I was with David Guetta last night. Yeah, no, well, no. Yeah. Who's going to know? But I think he was driving a nice white Porsche. Oh, I think someone is all in, no? Yeah, Svensson's gone all in. Menez has made the call. We've got tens versus fours. We'll tell you who's Let's got what. See. So oh. Menez has the fours. Svensson is at risk, though. What is it? So he needs a four. Uh oh. Oh! Or as the French may say, it, ooh la la. Ooh. <laughs> and we lose. Oh, yeah, that's it. We lose Svensson. David Svensson. Wow. A bit of a bad beat there. But, uh, Pierre so Menez. very happy? No, not at all. You get it in there with tens and you come up against fours, you expect to win, really. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, wow. You never know. I, that's what I like about both. Like, of course, there are strategies, and yeah. obviously, some people are actually better than others. But like this, it's in the end, anything can happen. That's Especially right. Especially when you go all in. You, you can't win a tournament without having some luck along the way. You just can't do it. It's not possible. Yeah. You know, you can play the best poker in the world, and then if you don't get the luck, you're not going to win. It's one of those situations. I mean. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. There's obviously skill involved. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So but if your skill gets, out, you know, I'll play by luck. There's nothing you can do. Nothing you can do in the world. That that situation there shows it. You know, you get your money in with tens. You come up against fours. You think excellent. I'll double up. Have a nice day. Nope. <laughs> yeah, you're going no, home. Out. Yeah. Well, it's obviously everyone is disappointed, but. Yeah, it's 26 it's one of those degrees. Yeah, it's yeah, exactly. It's nice. You know, you go outside. Tomorrow. There's million, million pound boats outside. <laughs> yeah, and, you know. some side tournaments. So yeah, not really. You don't have to be bored. But no, not yeah, at it's all. disappointing. Not Everyone is hoping to win some money. Yeah, that's right. How many well, are out now at the moment? Um, you know, you cannot see on the on the screen over there. Yeah. If you ever look at it now, it's very difficult to read. It's, it's a grey in the right writing, and you can't read it. It's, We can ask some of our our bloggers if they're listening to uh, perhaps find out how many are remaining at the moment for us. That's cool. So yeah, the blinds at the minute are 400 and 200 with the running ante of 50. We've got half an hour left of this level and then what will happen is half of the room will go on a lunch break. The other half will continue playing for one more hour. Yeah. And then at It'll the swap. end of that one hour they'll swap over. The other half will have their lunch and the other half will complete the level, so... I'm not sure when we're having our break. I think it's at the end of this level. It was yesterday, but we'll, we'll find out. Yeah. Yet again, another interesting oh, flop. Nice. Jack Ace Jack. 
Oh, look at that. The th three relatively short stacks now on the table. Felix Erhardt. Yeah. Roger Harabedian. And uh, Ben Sorrell. Olivier is doing, uh, he's doing well. Yeah, yeah, 40,000, yeah. yeah. That's very good for this, uh, for this time oh, of the day, yeah. basically. Jack A screen. I'm curious what they have. Yeah, they've Checking. all checked all the way through. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> Not a queen. Two jacks, two queens, ace, kicker. Oh, well, Unless somebody's got kings, jack, or a queen. Or an ace, I think that's, not gonna like for me, these hands are just... I just never know what to do with those. You're effectively anything, calling to yes, chop the board. Yes, there's You're hoping so many to, options. to draw, yeah. It's a difficult one because... If one has an ace. Like, yeah. If you'd had an ace, though, I think you might have bet the flop or bet the turn, perhaps. Yeah. So really, you can only hope for a draw. You're hoping to, to chop the pot. Uh, you'll lose money eventually doing that, so... Yeah, I guess that's why I'm... And there we have it, guys, on the screen now. We have a total play amount of 313. Total prize pool, 450,000 euros. Wow, half a million. The minimum payout for 36 will be 3,050 euros. All the way through. Guaranteed final table of nine, sorry, 10,000 uh, euros. The winner and Unibet can champion walk away. will walk away with 100,000 euros. Is that like, is that an Audi? Nice yeah. Audi? Or yeah. <laughs> What can you Straight get next for Prada, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you buy well, two, two dresses and a handbag. Yeah, well, I was a super nice coat. And I was like, oh, that's a nice one. That was like 20,000. So wow. Go, okay, wait, that's not... <laughs> yeah, Natalie, we need a pay rise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Any questions coming in or? Nope. <laughs> yeah, it's Friday. It's all very quiet. It's Friday evening. Yeah. Some people will still be at work. Some people will just be getting home from the, you know, with their families. Yeah, enjoying dinner. It'll all pick up tomorrow. We'll have lots of fun tomorrow. Yeah, I always like day two. It's good fun. People are excited again. There we have it. We are, we are famous on YouTube. Sorry, on, uh, on Twitter. Hmm? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> we are live. And there's a photograph as well. Live and kicking. <laughs> wow. <laughs> one of us is beautiful, one of us is not. <laughs> <laughs> you guys just you guys just decide. Yeah. <laughs> See, I tried my, my dry shampoo today, this morning, and it's not really working. Yeah, the lights it's affect my hairline. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm not really going bald, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> I need to wear a hat. <laughs> <laughs> Can get you a nice wig, green one. Yeah, cool. It's a Unibet and brand some big fingers. <laughs> yeah. Miley Cyrus, Miley Cyrus finger. Yeah. We have around. <laughs> Do some twerking. <laughs> Unibet side side event twerking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Best oh, that, that, That's something I would be able to win. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. We'll I check like it out. We'll check it out at the players' party. Yeah. Yeah. Beers. Beers. <laughs> Lots of twerking. <laughs> Bit of Miley Cyrus tongue action going on. Oh no, I'm not really no, a fan of that. It's disgusting. It's <laughs> yeah. crazy, yeah. The dress I was thinking, it's like, it's fine, let her dance. She looks good. But I, I don't know, I didn't really get the tongue. No. Getting out. We understand you've got a big tongue. But good on you. Yeah, just leave it. Yeah. It's fine. No need for it. Let's see what's happening. A few more hands to go. Yeah, so uh, Olivia I raised hungry. it up to 8.50. Me too. Uh, Felix called, and so did Roger. Nine eight seven on the flop, two spades. Oh, okay. This dealer's doing a good job of getting some action flops. Unfortunately, the players aren't not responding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah Felix has to. Not much left. Nine thousand. Yeah. Kind of has to win a bit. Well, Roger, big Roger, um, has bet fifteen seventy five. I think Erhardt has folded. Yep, and Estrepo has called. Yeah. So our two Frenchmen in the in the pot at the moment. King of Spades. Wow. 
dealer is actually doing some lot of action cards here. <coughs> that is Big Roger Herabedian. Big Roger123 on Twitter. He is going to continue here. 2,150. See what Olivier is going to do. Is he calling? Or? Yes, he's made the call, yeah. yeah. 2 one fifty for the call. Nice spot. Ten of spades would be interesting here. Two of spades instead. Ooh. Let's change the, change the game slightly there. 10,000 in the pot. Roger's only got 11,000 behind, so... Could double up here. But it's Estrepo who's going to lead out, I believe. He's check-called all the way through. He's now going to ask Roger the question instead. Is that 5,000? Oh yeah, he's chucking some chips. I think that was really five. Yeah. 4,000, and oh, Roger folds. folds. Yeah. So Roger loses another 30% of his stack. I don't think he's really pleased with that. Um, in the chat box, cool, so cool Story Sister has asked, um, do we know if the dealer called Kevin has been on the TV table yet? Well, I'm afraid we don't. Uh, we can try and ask for you, but I'm not sure. I don't really recognize, like, I see a little bit of hair. <laughs> yeah, we don't get another name, unfortunately. I don't names, recognize. Uh, and, uh, we, can out, we can find it out, maybe. Bolo, one of our Polish guys, has asked, uh, do we know the... Um, the events planned for next year yet. Um, Natalie is working on it, she's yeah. told me already, but she's keeping it very tight lipped. She's not letting anybody know nope. where we're going. I'm trying, doing. I'm trying. We're all trying. We yeah. all want to know where we're going next we're all year. Bugging her. Yeah. But, I've heard uh, there was some gossip going on, but that's always, you know, I've yeah. heard so many options. Yeah, we had some people asking yesterday for Prague, uh, for Malta. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Malta was very popular. Yeah, yeah. But at the know. minute. What, what, what would you like? Um, I asked for Las Vegas. Oh yeah. You it up awesome. in Las Vegas would be fantastic. But I would like another Saint Martin. Yeah, yeah. Some in the Caribbean again. Yeah. That would be quite good. Australia. <laughs> yeah. You need to be far away. Or Melbourne. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah. A bit of long flight. Yeah, it'd be worth it. Yeah, true. No, I don't know. See, on a serious note, I mean, kind of, um, the UK is always a popular place to go. It's always yeah. big events. Um, so is France, for that matter. But I think obviously the Univet do try to use different events and different venues just to try and keep the, the market, you know, happy. Yeah, and it's um, nice of course to go, you know, different places. We try to do there is summer places that destination. Are not to, though, isn't it? Kind of like of Poland. Yeah, it's with the legislation the laws and, yeah, and laws yeah. and you know, they make they, they're trying to make it a bit tough for everyone, yeah. but there are always ways to get around that and yeah, I'm very curious because I'm waiting for it as well. Yeah. I've been asking nearly every single day. But uh, yeah, she Natalie promised too that it's going to be a nice, exciting one next year as well. But yeah, I saw on Facebook there was a uh, like a kind of little forum or a questionnaire. Yeah. And I think Malta was very popular. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, well, to me, I, I would like to. I'm, I've never actually been to Malta, so. Never? Um, uh, no, never. Oh, well, I know Unibet I lived have there for a while. Yeah, Unibet have offices there as yeah. well, don't they? So. That'd be Super good. Nice. It'd be kind of a local, local home tournament for Unibet. So yeah, they did it two years, two years ago, I think. Yeah, there was one in Malta. So I maybe think it's uh, nice. It's sun. It's Mediterranean. It's yeah. very cheap, which is yeah. very good. Yeah, have absolutely. Ten shots of tequila for ten euros. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone four euros a kind of pop. Yeah. And a diet coke for you. So. Like we were at the players' party yesterday, or at the welcome drinks. Yeah. And uh, you know, a hamburger with a bit of fries is 36 euros. What? So it better be good. <laughs> yeah, it better, better be the world's biggest hamburger. <laughs> yeah, with a slice of uh, a bit of caviar on it, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And the beer is like 10. So yeah, it was a nice Slightly trip. But it's, yeah. I mean, it's con, it's, it's cool. Well, that's it's that's part what of I was saying yesterday, you expect that when you come here. You know, yeah. you're, you're not expecting to go to kind of a, an off license and buy a, a you know, <laughs> yeah. Eight cans of beer for five dollars or five euros. And, and go to the beach. Yeah, go to the beach and just have a good drink party. Yeah, that'd but be, I have to say most people are like 
if I ask around, and some players have been here for like 10, or some even have been, I think Paul, for example, has been to all the Unibet Open. And yeah, I even still think he said, like, obviously St. Maarten, which is an awesome destination. Super, like, fun, yeah. and it was good. Everything was fine, the food. Yeah. But yeah, Riga guys has popped up a lot. I've looked at the table here. We've got um, six three. players in a hand, which very, very rarely happens in a in a big tournament because people sometimes raise and then everyone else folds. But at the minute, they've all just checked the big blind of 400. Six players in the hand. And another interesting board here, 3-3-8. Three, three, all rainbow, so no snow flushes or, or straights at the moment. Yeah, I think Felix and Roger need to try and Yeah, they're going to have to do something, yeah. yeah. I'm seeing in half an hour the blinds, well, 20 minutes the blinds will raise. So we need to start making a move, really. Quentin's nope. bet here. Everyone's folding. Yeah, Quentin bets. Olivia uh, made the call. Folding. So from six to two. What do we have? Queen of Hearts. Quentin's going to continue here. Yeah, chips. Should give the dealer the name tag. Yeah. What is he going to do? Yeah, he's <coughs> calling. He calling? I think so. I think so yes. see, it's a very, very small bet. Yeah. <laughs> see a bald head. <laughs> Nine of hearts. hearts. So we've got a straight draw now and a flush draw. Quentin, who's bet twice in a row, checks, as does Estrepo. Oh. Uh, what having? did he have? Pair of eights with the king? I think I saw a king. Yeah, eights with the king for Quentin. And Ooh. yeah, he wins the hand. Nice <laughs> one. Yeah. So a young, uh, young online professional that plays for the Univet.fr pro poker team wins the hand. Smiling. <laughs> oh, he's doing well. Yeah, so per back to where we'd like the, the next year it opens to be. I think um, you always have kind of two in the summer period where it's nice and warm. So yeah. maybe, um, let's say, Punta Cana. Where? Uh, in the Caribbean again. Oh, Put, Punta yeah. Cana in the Caribbean. I would love to. Uh, Malta for, yeah, your, for your summer fun. venue. Yeah, and um, I know some nice places. I live there. Helsinki, maybe, in Finland? Uh, we can play this, this casinos in Helsinki. We have yeah. a big Finnish presence. I don't know, maybe Denmark Somewhere we again. haven't been. Yeah, possibly Denmark again. Or I would like to see one again in London. Yeah, London would be nice, yeah. Be nice. yeah. I don't know if I would be able to pick. I would like to go to uh, Italy. Did you say Italy? Yeah, maybe nice it's a San Remo <laughs> or... Yeah. Somewhere like I know, we only need to just bug. Mil 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 Milan or... Yeah, yeah Rome. Rome. Rome would be nice. But I have to say, I'm actually really enjoying myself here. Yeah, and everyone yeah. seems to have, uh, and seem to enjoy themselves. The weather is great. Well, we could do it in Italy and go to Paul Valkenberg's house and play. <laughs> yeah. He's got a big house in the country, hasn't he? And yeah. Set up some marquees in the garden. Riding. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, can I ask him? Yeah, give him a shot in a minute. Yeah. Maybe a side bet on something <laughs> come up with. <laughs> He's just sat opposite us, actually, uh, outside the room here. Yeah. Still playing. Yeah, he's still playing quite a lot. I think a lot of people are out yet. Yeah, there's not not it's much like happening first at the day, moment. Yeah. yeah, only a few exits. So, guys in the chat box, where would you like to have the next Unibet Open for next season? Is anyone where would in you the like? chat box playing for trying to qualify or? Yeah, we've had a few. We've had a few people uh, mentioning that they are trying to qualify. Okay, for nice. It's going to um, be a few free rolls, I think. Yes, yeah, there's, there's a free roll every evening um, at yeah. this festival. Um, one. Yeah, so the second one is tonight. The password, um, I'll put it in the <coughs> chat box again. again. So the password is Golden Palm. That starts at 7 p.m. in the UK, 8 p.m. Central European time. Top 10 will get satellite tickets. The winner will get a satellite ticket to the um, to the weekly final where there are eight Sunday. guarantee packages here on Sunday. Yeah, uh, I think so normally, yeah, and it also depends a bit on how many players are. Yeah. yeah participating but yeah it's a good chance of a few players already won last week was the first one yeah one of my friends uh, who's normally here but he can't, he can't make it this time because he's at work 
um, Fred Yannick, one of our French okay. guys living in Finland, actually. Um, he qualified, yeah, first time. So Yeah, Johan as well. I spoke to him yesterday. Well, I spoke to him before, but this, he mentioned it yesterday. He's out, unfortunately. Right. But uh, yeah, he got himself already a package for Riga. So yeah, first good. one. Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. good. Yeah, I've heard uh, the casino's lovely, the hotel's really nice, the, the players' parties are fantastic, obviously. Apparently even have a strip club in the casino. <laughs> Not really sure what to think of that, but... Yeah, it, it depends on my wife's listening or not. <laughs> yeah. If, if my wife's listening, I hate strip clubs. I'll never go to that. Uh, he's uh. not a, he's like, I see his fingers crossed now. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, well, I have to admit, sometimes it's just the only place that is open. Yeah. After well, the it's event, not always yeah. my fault if you have to go there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bolo said that it were Barcelona, Malta, oh Italy, yeah. Barca. Greece, uh, oh, Greece, Prague. Yeah, good shout. Yeah, it's so funny because ev every time you ask someone, they come up with a lot of options. Yeah. Uh, Barca, I would be up for that. Yeah. I love Barca. It's such an amazing city. Maybe it's time it so we can actually go and see a, a Barcelona match on the Sunday as well. <laughs> yeah. That would be nice, yeah. That would be nice. I'm actually going to see Ajax Celtic. Oh, excellent. That's going to be good. Yeah. Is that the Champions League? Yeah. yeah. The group stage. Ajax took a bit of a beating on, on Wednesday. Yeah, they did. Yeah. But I, can't, I, I think if they, even if they would play only against Messi, it would still <laughs> be... Still win, yeah. it would still, <laughs> Messi would still be able to beat them. But uh, they tried. No, it's all, it's not very I many was teams surprised go for Chelsea. Yeah. I was so was I, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Basel. Well, I'm a Newcastle fan, so kind of we have a oh, are you? lot of ups and downs. Our season's always... Newcastle. It's always fun. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to go to uh, the Derby, Everton, Newcastle. But it was sold out so yeah. really quickly, so I wasn't able to go. I went up the up north to, with a friend, because he's a massive Newcastle fan. Right. So I just watched it in the pub. Is that the Sunderland, Newcastle Sunderland? Oh, Robert. sorry, yeah, yeah. Uh, Sunderland. Yeah, yeah, not Everton, Sunderland. No, no, sorry. that's all right. Yeah, yes. it was last year. Yeah, we were there. We got, we got beat beaten off, uh, 3 yeah. 0, yeah. That was yeah, a bad he was so was he was day. so grumpy. I've never seen yeah. him so grumpy in my life. But then we just decided to go to a pub, and it was actually fun in the end. Yeah, <laughs> it's always fun. Yeah, but uh, so yeah, you, so you sampled the nightlife in Newcastle then. It's well, it wasn't Newcastle. It was um, they live a bit. They live a bit outside of Newcastle, so we had to we went by car and stayed right. there. But uh, I've not yet been in Newcastle. However, I'm a fan of Geordie Shore, so <laughs> I have to go there. And the You'll enjoy it then, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Geordie Shore's tame, you know. Compared yeah, to compared, to compared to the some valleys. Of the yeah, yeah, yeah. The and especially is compared crazy. to the valleys, I was That's like, wow, crazy. Geordie Shore, they're really the normal people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, real people. Maybe you should do a tour, uh, tournament there. Yeah, that'd be Let's fantastic. Go We've got three casinos, so we could easily do that. Okay. Are you from yeah. Newcastle? I am, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're a Geordie. I'm a Geordie, <laughs> yeah. Wow, and I'm able to understand what you're saying. Or is this your proper... This is my professional voice. Professional English. <laughs> <laughs> After a few beers, you can't understand the word I say. Oh my God, no. I've but, uh, it's so hard. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they talk very fast and very <laughs> kind of it's like slang words. and Yeah. Yeah. I think it's the same as in, in Holland. You've got different dialects and different... Yeah, I'm from the South. Yeah. I don't know if there are Dutch people in the chat, but... Yeah, I have like a quite a strong accent. It's impo I can't get rid of it. I don't have a professional Dutch voice. Like it's just, it's just there. Yeah. I can't get rid of it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, some like it, some don't. Sometimes they make yeah. fun of me. But yeah, I don't really care. Things, eh? Who cares? It's all right. Yeah. I'm born there, so I can't help it. You can't change it, can you? So <laughs> no. <laughs> it's not your fault. <laughs> but it's quite good. It's very close to the Belgian border, so right. I'm able to understand people speaking Flemish. But it's fun. I make fun of my colleague or Wart or Steven because they, they think they speak Dutch, but they don't really. Nah. <laughs> but it, what I find interesting, it's funny that they have words that in Dutch, is, it's this, I mean, it's the same language, but it com it's a completely different yeah. word. And I, I worked in Belgium for a while and uh, they really made fun of me. <laughs> so I'm not sure if is this, is it too early to talk about some stuff? 
No, we're, we're, we're an adult organization. Yeah, right. yeah, okay. You have to be 18 to play poker. So oh, okay, good. So I, maybe I can. Anything you want, yeah. Well, okay, if, if no one wants to listen, it's, it's, it's going to be a useless fact, so whatever. But if you say in Dutch, oh, it's going to sound too horrible in, in English. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whatever, I'll just do it. If someone has a problem with it, I'm sorry. But in Dutch, shit is sex in Belgium, so that's really weird. Right. That's so that could get you in a bit of trouble. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of a misunderstanding if you I'm talk going, about I'm going stuff. For a <laughs> yeah, <laughs> could turn into something completely different. Yeah, if you at work, yeah. well, normally I, n I never really say I'm going. Yeah, yeah. For number I know, two, of course you won't. Yeah, but <laughs> you know. But you never know. And you could tell a friend or a colleague a for a laugh, and yeah, it turns into something crazy. Yeah. Yeah, and they're like, <laughs> oh, okay, have fun. It's like, huh? I'm just going to the toilet. <laughs> go to the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that much fun. But it's quite f because it's you know it's so close and it's the same language. Yeah. We have yeah. some. It's not much. You don't really have that in English or Scot or... No, it's the same language. I mean, um, they just pronounce it. Obviously, different areas have different different dialects and, you know, kind of words that we use, but... Uh, but even for me, because English is not my main language, I always thought that frisky, is it means that y it's cold, but it's obviously not... No, frisky is kind of where you... Um, <laughs> yeah, getting kind of a bit uh, amorous, I think the word is. Yeah, yeah. and I always thought... Because it's it's very close to a like a Dutch word, which means that you know, and I'm just having oh, it's cold outside. Yeah. So I was with my uh, I actually went to Wimbledon to watch the tennis. Yeah. And we were camping, and uh, it was getting a bit cold. So I was telling my my you know my friend I was with it's like, ah, oh, so frisky here. And I was yeah, you know, just walking, and everyone was like, oh, what Whoa, is, is she gonna jump on us? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, and she just started to laugh because they just make fun of me because they're they're English. Yeah. And they just make fun of me, what are, you know, all the stupid things I say. <laughs> and that is good though, isn't it? It's <laughs> yeah, it's fine. <laughs> it's just the like fun of different languages. That's the yeah. yeah. But, well, hey, I'm trying. What's happening? Come on, no. we still have seven minutes. Yeah. Again, it's more... People are getting hungry. Yeah. Do you know what's for lunch today? No. I don't know. Um, I know that we have a lot of nice desserts, so it's good. I like that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's different every day, but I think it's good. There's our chip counts on your screens now, guys. The chip leader at the table is uh, is Estrepo with 43,575, yeah, 109 big lines. Yeah. Um, Roger, Big Rog, what are you doing? You've only got 8,000 chips left. I think it's about time Roger made a made a move. Yeah. Blinds are going to start hitting him soon. Uh, he is in the small blind at the moment, but with the blinds raising in the next level, yeah, he needs to, he make needs to start to, to do something really. What's the average now? Do you know? Oh, it's going to—they're going to count now. Twenty-seven thousand, I think. Okay. I think it says twenty-seven. It's not the best um, screens here in the casino, though. No, or it's my eyes. Grey background with a white writing. You can hardly read it. I don't know if you can change that or not. So they just announced tables 16 to 24 will be going on within a break at the end of this level. Yep. And the other tables think? will go after yeah. Who do you think he's going to win or you have no idea? Or I would love to see um, two of my good friends through Unibet. I'd love to see them win. Um, who are they? Matthias um, oh, yeah, We always have a good laugh nice. and joke. and you know, we, <laughs> yeah. We're good friends. He's a nice it's, guy. Yeah, he's a lovely guy. Lovely guy. I hope he's doing uh, well. Yeah, he had a nice win. He did, yeah. He did, yeah. Uh, WQ9 on, online. Pretty pleased. We yeah. just need to get him a new hat because apparently a parrot <laughs> tried to eat his hat. So well, he just told us yesterday he's going to be getting a new um, Audi R8 oh with wow. his winnings. So Shit, that's nice. Yeah, he said he's only young once. Why save it? He can save later. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, yeah, we only have one. Good luck, sir. Good luck. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to hire you to take me for a ride then. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. <laughs> We're all going to fight a war, so just to get in there. Yeah, in the R8, drive yeah. back. You can pick us up at the airport. And <laughs> I don't, know, don't think there's a lot of space. No. 
I don't know, sports car. Oh, look at that. Look at that flop. Yeah. 10 Jack Ace of Diamonds. Ooh. Harabedian raised to 1,000. Yeah, he's only got 7,000 left behind him. He does make the call, which is a bit strange. So he's only got 5,000 behind. What's Roger doing? He's calling. Yeah, he's called, yeah. Wow. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He has the upper hand. All in uh -oh. from her heart. Yeah. Menez says no thank you. Roger says no thank you as well. So Roger's really? left with his 5,000. Was he bluffing? Might have been. Yeah. Mm, you'll never know. That's the thing. I always like to know. Yeah. Well, you can <laughs> do that on the final table. You can see the cards. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like that. It's the Let's best part it. of poker, that. Cause yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. I hope... Uh, but who's your other friends? Who uh, you Paul, uh, Paul Valkenberg. Um, okay, you I've like the Dutchies? Yeah, basically, yeah, <laughs> the Dutchies are all good, good fun, yeah. No, I mean, I've spoken to Paul, we've done some commentary together, and yeah. um, again, oh, he's a very nice. good guy. He's got a young baby now as well, so uh, we, need to, we need to feed so the baby. Cute. We need to give yeah. him, you know, 100,000 pounds. Diapers. Yeah. It's such a cute one. Yeah. Oscar's going to cost him a fortune in the future, so... Yeah. Uh, yeah, he, he needs the money. <laughs> he has to send him to poker school. Yeah. Normally, I have three or four friends from home coming over. Um, Andy Bell at the minute, who's um, preparing for his wedding. Okay, uh, Fred, like I say, who's at work at the moment. Um, I think he's actually working in Poland at the moment. All right. Um, so yeah, kind of. I normally root for those guys, but with them not being there this time, then I've got you know my, my universe friends. And yeah, it's good. I like yeah, to see I'm them do well. I'm, I mean, I, I think I agree. I wouldn't mind seeing them at the final table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, getting some champagne for the winner. Yeah. Getting something yeah. out of it here. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Joining in the pl the players' photo at the end. Yeah. 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 Pop some champagne. Celebrate. Yeah. Hit the beach with some glasses of champagne. Yeah. That should be nice on. Oh, that would be super. Yeah. Sunday evening. Let's see what's happening. Wow, Roger is. What is Roger doing? I don't know. I'm going to ask the French guys. What is Roger doing? <laughs> We don't, we don't know. know. <laughs> we don't know either. <laughs> yeah. Anyone at home? Some suggestions? Would they like to see winning? Is he gone all in? Is he? Check. Check. Uh, check. All in. All in from Roger. Come on. Wow. Someone join. Erhard uh, surely has to call here. He does. Yes, he does. Roger right. is at risk. We have two all-ins. <laughs> well, an all-in and a call. What do we have? Do Queen we have? seven for Roger. And? King seven with oh. a flush draw. For a heart. Roger needs some serious help. Oh, wow. That's not going to help. Just a queen and not a heart. Ten of diamonds. We lose. We lose big, Rog. Unlucky, Roger. Uh, you can get an extra dessert. <laughs> <laughs> he has plenty of time. And the next mistake. I don't think he's. Yeah. Doesn't look happy. No. Well, he has over half. Sorry, five million euros in prize winnings. Yeah. He can smile. Wow. What did he win? Like what? Uh, lots. <laughs> lots. Lots and lots and lots. <laughs> if I could type that, would be fantastic. What was the biggest payout ever? Um, Over a million at least. I think so, yeah. Uh, yeah, he's won, oh sorry, it was 4.2 million he's won in his lifetime. Dollars. Dollars, yeah. <laughs> um, it doesn't really matter if it's It doesn't really matter, yeah. A lot. It's a lot more than I've won. <laughs> um, big scores, let's have a look at his biggest one. 142,000 euros for nice. finishing first and getting a World Series of Poker Europe bracelet as well. Nice. In the uh, Omaha event. I know he's had a bigger one than that. Uh, he's playing everywhere. Let's see. 112,000 euros third in the World Series of Poker Europe again. 230,000 euros. <laughs> Partouche Poker main event in Cannes. 
200,000 euros, seventh in the EPT main event in Monte Carlo. That's, that's another Audi R8. Yeah. Hundred thousand for finishing fourth in San Remo. Um, Hundred thousand for finishing second in Paris. Yeah, he's been doing well. Goes on and on and on and on. He has a long list. Long, long list. Since yeah, when? Like actually, nineteen ninety-nine. Wow. Yeah. Some have been playing for such a long time. Yeah. Obviously, making a lot of money out of this as well. So. Yeah. His last cash was in the. Um, Money EPT lifestyle. Barcelona, yeah. Barca? Yeah. This this last last month. week, yeah. or last month, yeah. yeah. For any of our English followers, we've lost Kevin Frame. He went out uh, with Ace Queen on a Queen 999 board. The other guy had 910 for quads. So we lose Kev, unfortunately, Kev. Um, we did have two Brits playing, I know that. Um, one left. One left, hopefully, yeah. Another nice little pot developing, though, here. It's gonna be a, everyone is going to have a small break, I think, at the moment. Or not, or soon. Yeah, I'm not sure which ones are going over. I don't know if we are or not. Let's, we'll find out. Yeah, they're finishing this hand. Yeah. Pair of ten. First draws, straight draws, everything here. Yeah. So... So we are, bets 1,050, Rosal calls, and so does Menes. They've all got fairly similar stacks, 20,000 and then two 16,000s. Mana clubs on the river, yeah. What's going to happen now? What are they going to do? Checking. Yeah. Check, check, background to uh, Pierre Menez. He's asking, have you checked? They said yes. He says, well, I'm not. I'm going to bet 2,000 chips. It's getting interesting. So. <laughs> Doesn't really know what to do. <laughs> he looks a bit puzzled. Yeah, he's like, uh oh, yeah. oh no. What have I done? <laughs> What do you think? What is he going to do? I think he'll fold. If he was going to call, he probably would have called by now. Unless he's thinking of what Roselle's going to do. If he calls, Roselle then could come <laughs> over the top. So. Look at his face. <laughs> looks like he'll... Oh, is, is he raising? Come on. He still doesn't know what to do. Yeah. Uh, yes, oh. there we go. You think he's... Wasn't it an easy one? I don't know. Has he made, he's made the call. He's just called. So now it's up to Roselle, yeah. Roland Roselle. We had a player yesterday, I think, called, uh, was it Fabrice Ferrari? <laughs> that's, that's a great <laughs> name, yeah. yeah. That's an awesome name. Oh. So Roselle folds. What you got, guys? Come on. It's lunchtime. I'm hungry. King three, but nothing at all for Menez. Ace five for bottom pair. What a nice call that was. Nice one. Yeah, very good. So Menez was bluffing there, and Benjamin's made the uh, the good call. And I think that is the last hand before break on the feature table. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Yeah, everyone's getting their chips ready. So we'll uh, we'll see you again. After the break. break now. Yeah. All right. See you guys. Thank you very much for being coming. That was fun. Appreciate Welcome. it. See you soon, guys. Bye bye.
It's the start of day 1B and players started behind me and I'm joined by Remco this morning. Let's have a little talk about what happened yesterday. Give me some official statistics first. Well, we started with 146 players yesterday. We lost exactly 100 players and we played down to 46 in 10 levels of play. We're going to play the same amount of levels today. So the combined field will come back tomorrow on Saturday and then we'll play down to the final table. Well, yesterday was a really good day. Um, we saw uh, former EPT Grand Final winner Peter de Corver, who made it to the next day. Um, Runner-up from Unibet Open Copenhagen, uh, Johnny Osberg was here. And um, plenty more Scandinavian players that we always see, like uh, Davor Pavic and yeah. Thomas Brolin. They're always here. Um, and then besides that, um, a lot of French local players. And it was good to see um, the chip lead at the end of the day was a French player, uh, Paul Tedeschi, a uh, young guy, good aggressive player. He finished with 243,000 chips, which is a lot. And I'm not quite sure if we're going to have that many chips at the end of the day for the chip leader today. But um, there was a lot of good play yesterday. It was one really fun hand, actually. Um, a Finnish player uh, managed to make a royal flush. And usually when you make a royal flush, it's hard to get paid off because your hand is so strong. Well, his opponent happened to have a full house. So he got all the chips. Uh, this Finnish gentleman made it to, to day two. So if the luck stays on his side, he might make a deep run. And uh, what do you think will happen over this tournament? If, if you had to guess at this stage, what do you think? Do you think we'll have a French winner? I mean, the numbers should point towards a Swedish winner because we have more Swedish players than ever before. Um, but there's also a lot of French local players and a lot of good French players showed up today as well. Um, Roger Harbijan is playing today, who's the third on the all-time money list from France. Uh, this guy has quite the reputation uh, as, a, as a very slow player. He doesn't slow play, but he plays slow. So he throws off the, his opponents and he has a very unique style. Um, he has. Uh, 13 six-figure scores behind his name, so this guy is one to watch. Gosh, yeah, absolutely. And we talked a little bit yesterday about the French playing style, and you said, you know, if you're going to go in against a French player, you better have a good hand. W what's that? Explain that a bit more. Well, like, every, every country has kind of its own style. Scandinavian countries are quite aggressive. Uh, Italians and French and Spanish, they just want to see a lot of pots, play a lot of flops. But when you play that style, that means you're going to see a lot of flops, turns and rivers. But it also means that every now and then you're going to hit a pair or you're going to hit a straight draw or a flush draw. So that means that you have to realize that if you're playing against a French player, they're going to want to see the turn and they're going to want to see the river. So by the time you put in your money on the river, you better have it because there's a good chance that they have at least some part of the what's on the table. Right, right. And finally, can Dan make it a third? Can Matez make it a second? Well. Of course, that's a numbers game and they have a mathematical disadvantage in this situation because of course there's so many players trying to win and in order to win one tournament you have to be very lucky and good but in order to win two you have to be even luckier and better. Uh, Mateus came really close in Troya so he had a shot at, at, at winning another tournament but they're very good players both of them so of course they have a chance. They have a bigger chance than some of these amateur players but because they've done it before it's going to be hard to do it again. I look forward to seeing what happens. the end of day 1A and I'm here at the Welcome Drinks. As you know, Cannes is a city famous for its film festival. So I'm going to ask the players, if a movie star was to play you in a film about your life, who would it be? Tom Cruise. Uh, Nicholson. Julia Dench. I'd say Julia Roberts for you. Uh, Julia Roberts. 
No, I think Judy Dench. Judy Dench is a great actress. I think uh, DiCaprio. <laughs> and how about you? <laughs> I think George Clooney then. Uh, yeah. Also a good one, right? I don't know, but I would play myself. Uh, Sandra Bullock, I think. Hot, sexy, funny, quirky. Yeah, that's me. All the things are Rachel is. Yes. Uh, Matt Damon. Al Pacino. I like Rachel Weisz a lot. You know that one? I like her. I don't know. I don't remember anyone else now. Rachel Weisz is a good call. It's a good call. Thank you, Eva. Oui, Gérard Depardieu. Maybe Sharon Stone. Uh, maybe uh, Robert De Niro. Uh, can I can I choose a beautiful one? <laughs> yeah, I can. Okay. Jessica Alba. <laughs> uh, Jason Stratham. Scarlett Johansson, because we have the same surname. Obviously Brad Pitt. Moi, uh, Adrian Brody, because people say I look like him. Julia Roberts was always good. Marilyn Monroe. Nicolas Cage. Nobody, I think. Because it's, it's too hard to be me, I think. Uh, Sandra Bullock. Cameron Diaz. Yes. Donald Duck. What is he going to look like? Chuck Norris, actually. He's a dead ringer for me. Um... <laughs> I li I'm living a rock star life, so why would I be uh, want to be a movie star? I mean, I'm here, I'm here in, Ke in Cannes, so nice hotel, no problem. You're a movie I'm star living, already. Living a dream, yeah. Very good answer. Thanks. Sorry, I have this scrutiny in my head. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's distracting. <laughs> um, who has to play me? I don't know. You tell me. Angelina Jolie. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I love you. Very good. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. If you were going to choose a movie star to play you in a film about your life, who would you choose? Like, which movie star? Alors, t'as compris quelque chose? Yes, I'm very happy uh, to, to play the Unibeto Pen. Uh, it's my uh, 13 Unibeto. Uh, no, no, uh, 15 Unibeto Pen. Long time. Yeah, yeah. Your favorite movie star? Ah, okay. Uh, the Unibeto Pen, uh, it's uh, uh, Varga. You know Varga? Oh, I don't think I know him. It's a beautiful Unibeto Pen. But uh, can it's uh, very beautiful. Perfect, thank you. <laughs>Start of day 1B and play has started behind me and I'm joined by Remco this morning. Let's have a little talk about what happened yesterday. Give me some official statistics first. Well, we started with 146 players yesterday. We lost exactly 100 players and we played down to 46 in 10 levels of play. We're going to play the same amount of levels today. So the combined field will come back tomorrow on Saturday and then we'll play down to the final table. 
Well, yesterday was a really good day. Um, we saw uh, former EPT Grand Final winner Peter de Corver, who made it to the next day. Um, Runner-up from Unibet Open Copenhagen, uh, Johnny Ostberg was here, and um, plenty more Scandinavian players that we always see, like uh, Davor Pavic and yeah. Thomas Brolin. They're always here. Um, and then besides that, um, a lot of French local players. And it was good to see um, the chip lead at the end of the day was a French player, uh, Paul Tedeschi, a uh, young guy, good aggressive player. He finished with 243,000 chips, which is a lot. And I'm not quite sure if we're going to have that many chips at the end of the day for the chip leader today. But um, there was a lot of good play yesterday. It was one really fun hand, actually. Um, a Finnish player uh, managed to make a royal flush. And usually when you make a royal flush, it's hard to get paid off because your hand is so strong. Mm -hmm. Well, his opponent happened to have a full house. So he got all the chips. Uh, this Finnish gentleman made it to, to day two. So if the luck stays on his side, he might make a deep run. And uh, what do you think will happen over this tournament? If, if you had to guess at this stage, what do you think? Do you think we'll have a French winner? I mean, the numbers should point towards a Swedish winner because we have more Swedish players than ever before. Um, but there's also a lot of French local players and a lot of good French players showed up today as well. Um, Roger Harbijan is playing today, who's the third on the all-time money list from France. Uh, this guy has quite the reputation uh, as, a, as a very slow player. He doesn't slow play, but he plays slow. So he throws off the, his opponents and he has a very unique style. Um, he has. Uh, 13 six-figure scores behind his name, so this guy is one to watch. Gosh, yeah, absolutely. And we talked a little bit yesterday about the French playing style, and you said, you know, if you're going to go in against a French player, you better have a good hand. W what's that? Explain that a bit more. Well, like, every, every country has kind of its own style. So it's, Scandinavian countries are quite aggressive. Uh, Italians and French and Spanish, they just want to see a lot of pots, play a lot of flops. But when you play that style, that means you're going to see a lot of flops, turns and rivers. But it also means that every now and then you're going to hit a pair or you're going to hit a straight draw or a flush draw. So that means that you have to realize that if you're playing against a French player, they're going to want to see the turn and they're going to want to see the river. So by the time you put in your money on the river, you better have it because there's a good chance that they have at least some part of the what's on the table. Right, right. And finally, can Dan make it a third? Can Matthias make it a second? Well. Of course, that's a numbers game, and they have a mathematical disadvantage in this situation because, of course, there's so many players trying to win, and in order to win one tournament, you have to be very lucky and good, but in order to win two, you have to be even luckier and better. Uh, Mateus came really close in Troja, so he had a shot at, at, at winning another tournament, but they're very good players, both of them, so of course they have a chance. They have a bigger chance than some of these amateur players, but because they've done it before, it's going to be hard to do it again. I look forward to seeing what happens. End of day 1A and I'm here at the Welcome Drinks. As you know, Cannes is a city famous for its film festival. So I'm going to ask the players, if a movie star was to play you in a film about your life, who would it be? Tom Cruise. Uh, Nicholson. Julia Dench. I'd say Julia Roberts for you. Uh, Julia Roberts. Mm. No, I think Julia Dench. Julia Dench is a great actress. I think uh, DiCaprio. <laughs> and how about you? Yeah, I think George Clooney then. Uh, yeah, also a good one, right? I don't know, but I would play myself. Uh, Sandra Bullock, I think. 
Hot, sexy, funny, quirky. Yeah, that's me. All the things are Rachel is. Yes. Uh, Matt Damon. Al Pacino. I like Rachel Weiss a lot. You know that one? I like her. I don't know. I don't remember anyone else now. Rachel Weiss is a good call. It's a good call. Thank you, Eva. Oui, Gérard Depardieu. Maybe Sharon Stone. Uh, maybe uh, Robert De Niro. Uh, can I can I choose a beautiful one? <laughs> yeah, I can. Okay. Jessica Alba. <laughs> uh, Jason Stratham. Scarlett Johansson because we have the same surname. Obviously Brad Pitt. Moi, uh, Adrian Brody because people say I look like him. Julia Roberts was always good. Marilyn Monroe. Nicolas Cage. Nobody, I think, because it's, it's too hard to be me, I think. Uh, Sandra Bullock. Cameron Diaz. Yes. Donald Duck. What is he going to look like? Chuck Norris, actually. He's a dead ringer for me. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I li I'm living a rock star life, so why would I be, uh, want to be a movie star? I mean, I'm here, I'm here in, Ke in Cannes, so... Nice hotel, no problem. You're a movie star living, already. Living dream, yeah. Very good answer. Right. Sorry, I have this Clooney in my head. Yeah. No. <laughs> it's distracting. <laughs> um, who had to play me? I don't know, you tell me. Um, Angelina Jolie. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I love you. Very good. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. If you were going to choose a movie star to play you in a film about your life, who would you choose? Like, which movie star? Alors, t'as compris quelque chose? <laughs> bon, yes, I'm very happy uh, to, to play the Unibet Open. Uh, it's my uh, 13 Unibet, uh, no, no, uh, 15 Unibet Open. Long time, yeah. your favorite movie star. Ah, okay, uh, the Unibet Open, well, uh, uh, it's uh, uh, Varga. You know Varga? Oh, I don't think I know him. It's a beautiful Unibet Open. But uh, can it's uh, very beautiful. Perfect, thank you. <laughs>Start of day 1B and play has started behind me and I'm joined by Remco this morning. Let's have a little talk about what happened yesterday. Give me some official statistics first. Well, we started with 146 players yesterday. We lost exactly 100 players and we played down to 46 in 10 levels of play. We're going to play the same amount of levels today. So the combined field will come back tomorrow on Saturday and then we'll play down to the final table. Well, yesterday was a really good day. Um, we saw uh, former EPT Grand Final winner Peter de Corver, who made it to the next day. Um, Runner-up from Unibet Open Copenhagen, uh, Johnny Ostberg was here, and um, plenty more Scandinavian players that we always see, like uh, Davor Pavic and yeah. Thomas Brolin. They're always here. Um, and then, besides that, um, a lot of French local players. And it was good to see um, the chip lead at the end of the day was a French player, uh, Paul Tedeschi, a young guy, good aggressive player. He finished with 243,000 chips, which is a lot. 
and I'm not quite sure if we're going to have that many chips at the end of the day for the chip leader today, but um, there was a lot of good play yesterday. It was one really fun hand actually, um, a Finnish player uh, managed to make a royal flush and usually when you make a royal flush it's hard to get paid off because your hand is so strong. Mm -hmm. Well his opponent happened to have a full house so he got all the chips, uh, this Finnish gentleman made it to, to day two so if the luck stays on his side he might make a deep run. Mm -hmm. And uh, what do you think will happen over this tournament? If, if you had to guess at this stage, what do you think? Do you think we'll have a French winner? I mean, the numbers should point towards a Swedish winner because we have more Swedish players than ever before. Um, but there's also a lot of French local players and a lot of good French players showed up today as well. Um, Roger Harbijan is playing today, who's the third on the all-time money list from France. Uh, this guy has quite the reputation uh, as, a, as a very slow player. He doesn't slow play, but he plays slow. So he throws off the, his opponents and he has a very unique style. Um, he has uh, 13 six-figure scores behind his name, so this guy is one to watch. Gosh, yeah, absolutely. And we talked a little bit yesterday about the French playing style and you said, you know, if you're going to go in against a French player, you better have a good hand. W what's that? Explain that a bit more. Well, like, Every, every country has kind of its own style. Scandinavian countries are quite aggressive. Uh, Italians and French and Spanish, they just want to see a lot of pots and play a lot of flops. But when you play that style, that means you're going to see a lot of flops, turns and rivers. But it also means that every round you're going to hit a pair or you're going to hit a straight draw or a flush draw. So that means that you have to realize that if you're playing against a French player, they're going to want to see the turn and they're going to want to see the river. So by the time you put in your money on the river, you better have it because there's a good chance that they have at least some part of the what's on the table. Right, right. And Finally, can Dan make it a third? Can Matthias make it a second? Well, of course, that's a numbers game. And they have a mathematical disadvantage in this situation because, of course, there's so many players trying to win. And in order to win one tournament, you have to be very lucky and good. But in order to win two, you have to be even luckier and better. Uh, Matthias came really close in Troja, so he had a shot at, at, at winning another tournament. but. They're very good players, both of them, so of course they have a chance. They have a bigger chance than some of these amateur players, but because they've done it before, it's going to be hard to do it again. I look forward to seeing what happens. End of day 1A and I'm here at the Welcome Drinks. As you know, Cannes is a city famous for its film festival. So I'm going to ask the players, if a movie star was to play you in a film about your life, who would it be? Tom Cruise. Uh, Nicholson. Judy Dench. I'd say Julia Roberts for you. Uh, Julia Roberts. <laughs> no, I think Judy Dench. Judy Dench is a great actress. I think uh, DiCaprio. <laughs> and how about you? <laughs> I think George Clooney then. Uh, yeah. Also a good one, right? I don't know, but I would play myself. Uh, Sandra Bullock, I think. Hot, sexy, funny, quirky. Yeah, that's me. All the things are Rachel is. Yes! <laughs> uh, Matt Damon. Al Pacino. Oh, I like Rachel Weisz a lot. You know that one? I like her. I don't know. I don't remember anyone else now. Rachel Weisz is a good call. It's a good call. Thank you, Eva. Yes, Gerard Depardieu. Maybe Sharon Stone? Uh, maybe uh, Robert De Niro. Uh, can, I, can I choose a beautiful one? 
Yeah, I can. Okay. Jessica Alba. <laughs> uh, Jason Stratham. Scarlett Johansson, because we have the same surname. Obviously Brad Pitt. Moi, uh, Adrian Brody, because people say I look like him. Julia Roberts was always good. Marilyn Monroe. Nicolas Cage. Nobody, I think. Because it's, it's too hard to be me, I think. Uh, Sandra Bullock. Cameron Diaz. Yes. Donald Duck. What is he going to look like? Chuck Norris, actually. He's a dead ringer for me. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I li I'm living a rock star life, so why would I be, uh, want to be a movie star? I mean, I'm here, I'm here in, Ke in Cannes, so nice hotel, no problem. You're a movie star living, already. Living dream, yeah. Very good answer. Right. Sorry, I have the screw in my head. Yeah. No. <laughs> it's distracting. <laughs> um, who has to play me? I don't know, you tell me. Um, Angelina Jolie. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I love you. Very good. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. If you were going to choose a movie star to play you in a film about your life, who would you choose? Like, which movie star? Oh, tu as compris quelque chose. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm very happy uh, to, to play the Unibeto Pen. Uh, it's my uh, 13 Unibet, uh no, no, uh, 15 Unibet Open. Long time, yeah. your favorite movie star. Ah, okay, uh, the Unibet Open, uh, uh, it's uh, uh, Varga. You know Varga? Oh, I don't think I know her. It's a beautiful Unibet Open, but uh, can it's uh, very beautiful. Perfect, thank you. <laughs> It's the start of day 1B and play has started behind me and I'm joined by Remco this morning. Let's have a little talk about what happened yesterday. Give me some official statistics first. Well, we started with 146 players yesterday. We lost exactly 100 players and we played down to 46 in 10 levels of play. We're going to play the same amount of levels today, so the combined field will come back tomorrow on Saturday and then we'll play down to the final table. Well, yesterday was a really good day. Um, we saw uh, former EPT Grand Final winner Peter de Korver, who made it to the next day. Um, Runner-up from Unibet Open Copenhagen, uh, Johnny Ostberg was here. And um, plenty more Scandinavian players that we always see, like uh, Davor Pavic and yeah. Thomas Brolin. They're always here. Um, and then, besides that, um, a lot of French local players. And it was good to see um, the chip lead at the end of the day was a French player, uh, Paul Tedeschi. Uh, young guy, good aggressive player. He finished with 243,000 chips, which is a lot. And I'm not quite sure if we're going to have that many chips at the end of the day for the chip leader today. But um, there was a lot of good play yesterday. It was one really fun hand, actually. Um, a Finnish player uh, managed to make a royal flush. And usually when you make a royal flush, it's hard to get paid off because your hand is so strong. Well, his opponent happened to have a full house. So he got all the chips. Uh, this Finnish gentleman made it to, to day two. So if the luck stays on his side, he might make a deep run. And uh, what do you think will happen over this tournament? If, if you had to guess at this stage, what do you think? Do you think we'll have a French winner? 
I mean, the numbers should point towards a Swedish winner because we have more Swedish players than ever before. Um, but there's also a lot of French local players and a lot of good French players showed up today as well. Um, Roger Harbijan is playing today, who's the third on the all-time money list from France. Uh, this guy has quite the reputation uh, as, a, as a very slow player. He doesn't slow play, but he plays slow. So he throws off the, his opponents and he has a very unique style. Um, he has uh, 13 six-figure scores behind his name, so this guy is one to watch. Gosh, yeah, absolutely. And we talked a little bit yesterday about the French playing style, and you said, you know, if you're going to go in against a French player, you better have a good hand. W what's that? Explain that a bit more. Well, like, every, every country has kind of its own style. So Scandinavian countries are quite aggressive. Uh, Italians and French and Spanish, they just want to see a lot of pots, play a lot of flops. But when you play that style, that means you're going to see a lot of flops, turns and rivers. But it also means that every now and then you're going to hit a pair or you're going to hit a straight draw or a flush draw. So that means that you have to realize that if you're playing against a French player, they're going to want to see the turn and they're going to want to see the river. So by the time you put in your money on the river, you better have it because there's a good chance that they have at least some part of the what's on the table. Right, right. And finally, can Dan make it a third? Can Matthias make it a second? Well. Of course, that's a numbers game and they have a mathematical disadvantage in this situation because of course there's so many players trying to win and in order to win one tournament you have to be very lucky and good but in order to win two you have to be even luckier and better. Uh, Mateus came really close in Troja so he had a shot at, at, at winning another tournament but they're very good players, both of them, so of course they have a chance. They have a bigger chance than some of these amateur players, but because they've done it before, it's going to be hard to do it again. Well, I look forward to seeing what happens. End of day 1A and I'm here at the Welcome Drinks. As you know, Cannes is a city famous for its film festival. So I'm going to ask the players, if a movie star was to play you in a film about your life, who would it be? Tom Cruise. Uh, Nicholson. Julia Dench. I'd say Julia Roberts for you. Uh, Julia Roberts. Mm. <laughs> no, I think Julia Dench. Judy Dench is a great actress. I think uh, DiCaprio. <laughs> and how about you? Yeah. I think George Clooney then. Uh, yeah. Also a good one, right? I don't know, but I would play myself. Uh, Sandra Bullock, I think. Hot, sexy, funny, quirky. Yeah, that's me. All the things are Rachel is. Yes. Uh, Matt Damon. Al Pacino. I like Rachel Weisz a lot. You know that one? I like her. I don't know. I don't remember anyone else now. Rachel Vice is a good call. It's a good call. Thank you, Eva. Oui, Gérard Depadieu. Maybe Sharon Stone? Uh, maybe uh, Robert De Niro. Uh, can, I, can I choose a beautiful one? <laughs> yeah, I can. Okay. Jessica Alba. <laughs> uh, Jason Stratton. Scarlett Johansson, because we have the same surname. Obviously, Brad Pitt. Moi, uh, Adrian Brody, because people say I look like him. Julia Roberts was always good. Marilyn Monroe. Nicolas Cage. Nobody, I think. Because it's, it's too hard to be me, I think. Uh, Sandra Bullock. Cameron Diaz. Yes. Donald Duck. What is he going to look like? Chuck Norris, actually. He's a dead ringer for me. 
Uh, <laughs> I li I'm living a rock star life, so why would I be uh, want to be a movie star? I mean, I'm here, I'm here in Ke in Cannes, so nice hotel, no problem. You're a movie like, star living, already. Living a dream, yeah. Very good answer. Thanks. Sorry, I have this screen in my head. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's distracting. <laughs> um, who has to play me? I don't know. You tell me. Angelina Jolie. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I love you. Very good. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. If you were going to choose a movie star to play you in a film about your life, who would you choose? Like, which movie star? Oh, you've understood something. Yes, I'm very happy uh, to, to play the Unibeto Pen. Uh, it's my uh, 13. Unibet, uh, no, no, uh, 15 Unibet Open. Long time, yeah. your favorite movie star. Ah, oh. okay, uh, the Unibet Open, well, uh, uh, it's uh, uh, Varga. You know Varga? Oh, I don't think I know him. It's a beautiful Unibet Open, but uh, can it's uh, very beautiful. Perfect, thank you. <laughs> It's the start of day 1B and play has started behind me and I'm joined by Remco this morning. Let's have a little talk about what happened yesterday. Give me some official statistics first. Well, we started with 146 players yesterday. We lost exactly 100 players and we played down to 46 in 10 levels of play. We're going to play the same amount of levels today, so the combined field will come back tomorrow on Saturday and then we'll play down to the final table. Well, yesterday was a really good day. Um, we saw uh, former EPT Grand Final winner Peter de Korver, who made it to the next day. Um, Runner-up from Unibet Open Copenhagen, uh, Johnny Ostberg was here. And um, plenty more Scandinavian players that we always see, like uh, Davor Pavic and yeah. Thomas Brolin. They're always here. Um, and then besides that, um, a lot of French local players. And it was good to see um, the chip lead at the end of the day was a French player, uh, Paul Tedeschi, a uh, young guy, good aggressive player. He finished with 243,000 chips, which is a lot. And I'm not quite sure if we're going to have that many chips at the end of the day for the chip leader today. But um, there was a lot of good play yesterday. It was one really fun hand, actually. Um, a Finnish player uh, managed to make a royal flush. And usually when you make a royal flush, it's hard to get paid off because your hand is so strong. Well, his opponent happened to have a full house. So he got all the chips. Uh, this Finnish gentleman made it to, to day two. So if the luck stays on his side, he might make a deep run. And uh, what do you think will happen over this tournament? If, if you had to guess at this stage, what do you think? Do you think we'll have a French winner? I mean, the numbers should point towards a Swedish winner because we have more Swedish players than ever before. Um, but there's also a lot of French local players and a lot of good French players showed up today as well. Um, Roger Harbijan is playing today, who's the third on the all-time money list from France. Uh, this guy has quite the reputation uh, as, a, as a very slow player. He doesn't slow play, but he plays slow. So he throws off the, his opponents and he has a very unique style. Um, he has uh, 13 six-figure scores behind his name, so this guy is one to watch. 
themselves. Yeah, absolutely. When we talked a little bit yesterday about the French playing style, and you said, you know, if you're going to go in against a French player, you better have a good hand. W what's that? Explain that a bit more. Well, like, every, every country has kind of its own style. So Scandinavian countries are quite aggressive. Uh, Italians and French and Spanish, they just want to see a lot of pots, play a lot of flops. But when you play that style, that means you're going to see a lot of flops, turns, and rivers. But it also means that every now and then you're going to hit a pair, or you're going to hit a straight draw, or a flush draw. So that means that you have to realize that if you're playing against a French player, they're going to want to see the turn, and they're going to want to see the river. So by the time you put in your money on the river, you better have it, because there's a good chance that they have at least some part of the what's on the table. Right, right. And finally, can Dan make it a third? Can Matez make it a second? Well. Of course, that's a numbers game, and they have a mathematical disadvantage in this situation because, of course, there's so many players trying to win, and in order to win one tournament, you have to be very lucky and good, but in order to win two, you have to be even luckier and better. Uh, Mateus came really close in Troja, so he had a shot at, at, at winning another tournament, but they're very good players, both of them, so of course they have a chance. They have a bigger chance than some of these amateur players, but because they've done it before, it's going to be hard to do it again. I look forward to seeing what happens. end of day 1A and I'm here at the Welcome Drinks. As you know, Cannes is a city famous for its film festival. So I'm going to ask the players, if a movie star was to play you in a film about your life, who would it be? Tom Cruise. Uh, Nicholson. Julia Dench. I'd say Julia Roberts for you. Uh, Julia Roberts. Mm. No, I think Julia Dench. Julia Dench is a great actress. I think uh, DiCaprio. <laughs> and how about you? <laughs> I think George Clooney then. Uh, yeah. Also a good one, right? I don't know, but I would play myself. Uh, Sandra Bullock, I think. Hot, sexy, funny, quirky. Yeah, that's me. All the things are Rachel is. Yes. Uh, Matt Damon. Al Pacino. I like Rachel Weisz a lot. You know that one? I like her. I don't know. I don't remember anyone else now. Rachel Weisz is a good call. It's a good call. Thank you, Eva. Oui, Gérard Depardieu. Maybe Sharon Stone? Uh, maybe uh, Robert De Niro. Uh, can, I, can I choose a beautiful one? <laughs> yeah, I can. Okay. Jessica Alba. <laughs> uh, Jason Stratton. Scarlett Johansson, because we have the same surname. Obviously, Brad Pitt. Moi, uh, Adrian Brody, because people say I look like him. Julia Roberts was always good. Marilyn Monroe. Nicolas Cage. Nobody, I think. Because it's, it's too hard to be me, I think. Uh, Sandra Bullock. Cameron Diaz. Yes. Donald Duck. What is he going to look like? Chuck Norris, actually. He's a dead ringer for me. Uh... <laughs> I li I'm living a rock star life, so why would I be uh, want to be a movie star? I mean, I'm here, I'm here in, Ke in Cannes, so nice hotel, no problem. You're a movie uh, star living, already. Living a dream, yeah. Very good answer. Right. Sorry, I have this Clooney in my head. Yeah. No. <laughs> it's distracting. <laughs> um, who has to play me? I don't know. You tell me. 
Angelina Jolie. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I love you. Very good. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. If you were going to choose a movie star to play you in a film about your life, who would you choose? Like, which movie star? Alors, tu as compris quelque chose. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, I'm very happy uh, to, to play the Unibeto Pen. Uh, it's my uh, 13 Unibeto, uh, no, no, uh, 15 Unibeto Pen. Long time, yeah, yeah. your favorite movie star. Ah, okay, uh, the Unibeto Pen, uh, it's uh, uh, Varga. You know Varga? Beautiful in Ibeto Pen, but uh, can it's uh, very beautiful. Perfect, thank you. <laughs>Start of day one B and players started behind me and I'm joined by Remco this morning. Let's have a little talk about what happened yesterday. Give me some official statistics first. Well, we started with 146 players yesterday. We lost exactly 100 players and we played down to 46 in 10 levels of play. We're going to play the same amount of levels today. So the combined field will come back tomorrow on Saturday and then we'll play down to the final table. Well, yesterday was a really good day. Um, we saw uh, former EPT Grand Final winner Peter de Korver, who made it to the next day. Um, Runner-up from Unibit Open Copenhagen, uh, Johnny Ostberg was here. And um, plenty more Scandinavian players that we always see, like uh, Davor Pavic and yeah. Thomas Brolin. They're always here. Um, and then besides that, um, a lot of French local players. And it was good to see um, the chip lead at the end of the day was a French player, uh, Paul Tedeschi, a uh, young guy, good aggressive player. He finished with 243,000 chips, which is a lot. And I'm not quite sure if we're going to have that many chips at the end of the day for the chip leader today. But um, there was a lot of good play yesterday. It was one really fun hand, actually. Um, a Finnish player uh, managed to make a royal flush. And usually when you make a royal flush, it's hard to get paid off because your hand is so strong. Mm -hmm. Well, his opponent happened to have a full house. So he got all the chips. Uh, this Finnish gentleman made it to, to day two. So if the luck stays on his side, he might make a deep run. And uh, what do you think will happen over this tournament? If, if you had to guess at this stage, what do you think? Do you think we'll have a French winner? I mean, the numbers should point towards a Swedish winner because we have more Swedish players than ever before. Um, but there's also a lot of French local players and a lot of good French players showed up today as well. Um, Roger Harbijan is playing today, who's the third on the all-time money list from France. Uh, this guy has quite the reputation uh, as, a, as a very slow player. He doesn't slow play, but he plays slow. So he throws off the, his opponents and he has a very unique style. Um, he has. Uh, 13 six-figure scores behind his name, so this guy is one to watch. Gosh, yeah, absolutely. And we talked a little bit yesterday about the French playing style, and you said, you know, if you're going to go in against a French player, you better have a good hand. W what's that? Explain that a bit more. Well, like, 
every, every country has kind of its own style. So Scandinavian countries are quite aggressive. Uh, Italians and French and Spanish, they just want to see a lot of pots, play a lot of flops. But when you play that style, that means you're going to see a lot of flops, turns and rivers. But it also means that every now and then you're going to hit a pair, or you're going to hit a straight draw or a flush draw. So that means that you have to realize that if you're playing against a French player, they're going to want to see the turn and they're going to want to see the river. So by the time you put in your money on the river, you better have it because there's a good chance that they have at least some part of the what's on the table. Right, right. And finally, can Dan make it a third? Can Matthias make it a second? Well, of course, that's a numbers game. And they have a mathematical disadvantage in this situation because, of course, there's so many players trying to win. And in order to win one tournament, you have to be very lucky and good. But in order to win two, you have to be even luckier and better. Uh, Matthias came really close in Troja, so he had a shot at, at, at winning another tournament. But they're very good players, both of them, so of course they have a chance. They have a bigger chance than some of these amateur players, but because they've done it before, it's going to be hard to do it again. I look forward to seeing what happens. End of day 1A and I'm here at the Welcome Drinks. As you know, Cannes is a city famous for its film festival. So I'm going to ask the players, if a movie star was to play you in a film about your life, who would it be? Tom Cruise. Uh, Nicholson. Julia Dench. I'd say Julia Roberts for you. Uh, Julia Roberts. Mm. No, I think Julia Dench. Julia Dench is a great actress. I think uh, DiCaprio. <laughs> and how about you? Yeah, I think George Clooney then. Uh, yeah, also a good one, right? I don't know, but I would play myself. Uh, Sandra Bullock, I think. Hot, sexy, funny, quirky. Yeah, that's me. All the things are Rachel is. Yes. Uh, Matt Damon. Al Pacino. I like Rachel Weisz a lot. You know that one? I like her. I don't know. I don't remember anyone else now. Rachel Weisz is a good call. It's a good call. Thank you, Eva. Uh, Gérard Depardieu. <laughs> uh, maybe Sharon Stone? Uh, maybe uh, Robert De Niro. Uh, can, I, can I choose a beautiful one? <laughs> yeah, I can. Okay. Jessica Alba. <laughs> uh, Jason Stratton. Scarlett Johansson, because we have the same surname. Obviously, Brad Pitt. Moi, uh, Adrian Brody, because people say I look like him. Julia Roberts was always good. Marilyn Monroe. Nicolas Cage. Nobody, I think. Because it's, it's too hard to be me, I think. Uh, Sandra Bullock. Cameron Diaz. Yes. Donald Duck. What is he going to look like? Chuck Norris, actually. He's a dead ringer for me. Uh... <laughs> I li I'm living a rock star life, so why would I be uh, want to be a movie star? I mean, I'm here, I'm here in Ke in Cannes, so nice hotel, no problem. You're a movie I'm star living, already. Living dream, yeah. Very good answer. I'm sorry, I have this in my head. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's distracting. <laughs> um, who had to play me? I don't know. You tell me. Angelina Jolie. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I love you. Very good. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. If you were going to choose a movie star to play you in a film about your life, 
Who would you choose? Like which movie star? Alors tu as compris quelque chose? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm very happy uh, to to play the Unibet Open. Uh, it's my uh, 13 Unibet. Uh, no, no, uh, 15 Unibet Open. Long time. Yeah. Your favorite movie star? Ah, okay. Uh, the Unibet Open. Uh, it's uh, uh, Varga. You know Varga? Oh, I don't think I know him. It's a beautiful Unibet Open. But uh, can it's uh, very beautiful. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> It's the start of day 1B and play has started behind me and I'm joined by Remco this morning. Let's have a little talk about what happened yesterday. Give me some official statistics first. Well, we started with 146 players yesterday. We lost exactly 100 players and we played down to 46 in 10 levels of play. We're going to play the same amount of levels today, so the combined field will come back tomorrow on Saturday and then we'll play down to the final table. Well, yesterday was a really good day. Um, we saw uh, former EPT Grand Final winner Peter de Corver, who made it to the next day. Um, Runner-up from Unibet Open Copenhagen, uh, Johnny Osberg was here, and um, plenty more Scandinavian players that we always see, like uh, Davor Pavic and yeah. Thomas Brolin. They're always here. Um, and then, besides that, um, a lot of French local players. And it was good to see um, the chip lead at the end of the day was a French player, uh, Paul Tedeschi, a uh, young guy, good aggressive player. He finished with 243,000 chips, which is a lot. And I'm not quite sure if we're going to have that many chips at the end of the day for the chip leader today. But um, there was a lot of good play yesterday. It was one really fun hand, actually. Um, a Finnish player uh, managed to make a royal flush. And usually when you make a royal flush, it's hard to get paid off because your hand is so strong. Mm -hmm. Well, his opponent happened to have a full house. So he got all the chips. Uh, this Finnish gentleman made it to, to day two. So if the luck stays on his side, he might make a deep run. And uh, what do you think will happen over this tournament? If, if you had to guess at this stage, what do you think? Do you think we'll have a French winner? I mean, the numbers should point towards a Swedish winner because we have more Swedish players than ever before. Um, but there's also a lot of French local players and a lot of good French players showed up today as well. Um, Roger Harbijan is playing today, who's the third on the all-time money list from France. Uh, this guy has quite the reputation uh, as, a, as a very slow player. He doesn't slow play, but he plays slow. So he throws off the, his opponents and he has a very unique style. Um, he has uh, 13 six-figure scores behind his name, so this guy is one to watch. Gosh, yeah, absolutely. And we talked a little bit yesterday about the French playing style and you said, you know, if you're going to go in against a French player, you better have a good hand. W what's that? Explain that a bit more. Well, like, Every, every country has kind of its own style. Scandinavian countries are quite aggressive. Uh, Italians and French and Spanish, they just want to see a lot of pots, play a lot of flops. But when you play that style, that means you're going to see a lot of flops, turns and rivers. But it also means that every round and you're going to hit a pair or you're going to hit a straight draw or a flush draw. So that means that you have to realize that if you're playing against a French player, they're going to want to see the turn and they're going to want to see the river. So by the time you put in your money on the river, you better have it because there's a good chance that they have at least some part of the what's on the table. Right, right. And Finally, can Dan make it a third? Can Matthias make it a second? Well, 
of course, that's a numbers game, and they have a mathematical disadvantage in this situation because, of course, there's so many players trying to win, and in order to win one tournament, you have to be very lucky and good, but in order to win two, you have to be even luckier and better. Uh, Mateus came really close in Troja, so he had a shot at, at, at winning another tournament, but they're very good players, both of them, so of course they have a chance. They have a bigger chance than some of these amateur players, but because they've done it before, it's going to be hard to do it again. I look forward to seeing what happens. End of day 1A and I'm here at the Welcome Drinks. As you know, Cannes is a city famous for its film festival. So I'm going to ask the players, if a movie star was to play you in a film about your life, who would it be? Tom Cruise. Uh, Nicholson. Judy Dench. I'd say Julia Roberts for you. Uh, Julia Roberts. Mm. No, I think Judy Dench. Judy Dench is a great actress. I think uh, DiCaprio. <laughs> and how about you? <laughs> I think George Clooney then. Uh, yeah. Also a good one, right? I don't know, but I would play myself. Uh, Sandra Bullock, I think. Hot, sexy, funny, quirky. Yeah, that's me. All the things are Rachel is. Yes. <laughs> uh, Matt Damon. Al Pacino. I like Rachel Weisz a lot. You know that one? I like her. I don't know. I don't remember anyone else now. Rachel Weisz is a good call. It's a good call. Thank you, Eva. Oui, Gérard Depardieu. Maybe Sharon Stone? Uh, maybe uh, Robert De Niro. Uh, can, I, can I choose a beautiful one? <laughs> yeah, I can. Okay. Jessica Alba. <laughs> uh, Jason Stratton. Scarlett Johansson, because we have the same surname. Obviously, Brad Pitt. Moi, uh, Adrian Brody, because people say I look like him. Julia Roberts was always good. Marilyn Monroe. Nicolas Cage. Nobody, I think. Because it's, it's too hard to be me, I think. Uh, Sandra Bullock. Cameron Diaz. Yes. Donald Duck. What is he going to look like? Chuck Norris, actually. He's a dead ringer for me. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I li I'm living a rock star life, so why would I be uh, want to be a movie star? I mean, I'm here, I'm here in Ke in Cannes, so nice hotel, no problem. You're a movie star living, already. Living a dream, yeah. Very good answer. Right. Sorry, I have this screen in my head. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's distracting. <laughs> um, who has to play me? I don't know. You tell me. Um, Angelina Jolie. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. If you were going to choose a movie star to play you in a film about your life, who would you choose? Like, which movie star? Oh, t'as compris quelque chose? Yes, I'm very happy uh, to to play the Universal Pen. Uh, it's my uh, 13 Universal. Uh, no, no, uh, 15 Universal Pen. Long time, yeah. your favorite movie star. Ah, okay. Uh, the Universal Pen, uh, uh, it's uh, uh, Varga. You know Varga? Oh, I don't think I know her. It's a beautiful Universal Pen, but uh, can it's uh, very beautiful. Her 
Perfect, thank you. It's the start of day 1B and play has started behind me and I'm joined by Remco this morning. Let's have a little talk about what happened yesterday. Give me some official statistics first. Well, we started with 146 players yesterday. We lost exactly 100 players and we played down to 46 in 10 levels of play. We're going to play the same amount of levels today, so the combined field will come back tomorrow on Saturday and then we'll play down to the final table. Well, yesterday was a really good day. Um, we saw uh, former EPT Grand Final winner Peter de Korver, who made it to the next day. Um, Runner-up from Unibet Open Copenhagen, uh, Johnny Ostberg was here. Uh -huh. And um, plenty more Scandinavian players that we always see, like uh, Davor Pavic and yeah. Thomas Brolin. They're always here. Um, and then, besides that, um, a lot of French local players. And it was good to see um, the chip lead at the end of the day was a French player, uh, Paul Tedeschi. Uh, young guy, good aggressive player. He finished with 243,000 chips, which is a lot, and I'm not quite sure if we're going to have that many chips at the end of the day for the chip leader today, but um, there was a lot of good play yesterday. It was one really fun hand actually, um, a Finnish player uh, managed to make a royal flush, and usually when you make a royal flush it's hard to get paid off because your hand is so strong. Well, his opponent happened to have a full house, so he got all the chips, uh, this Finnish gentleman made it to, to day two, so if the luck stays on his side he might make a deep run. And uh, what do you think will happen over this tournament? If, if you had to guess at this stage, what do you think? Do you think we'll have a French winner? I mean, the numbers should point towards a Swedish winner because we have more Swedish players than ever before. Um, but there's also a lot of French local players and a lot of good French players showed up today as well. Um, Roger Harbijan is playing today, who's the third on the all-time money list from France. Uh, this guy has quite the reputation uh, as, a, as a very slow player. He doesn't slow play, but he plays slow. So he throws off the, his opponents and he has a very unique style. Um, he has uh, 13 six-figure scores behind his name, so this guy is one to watch. Gosh, yeah, absolutely. And we talked a little bit yesterday about the French playing style and you said, you know, if you're going to go in against a French player, you better have a good hand. W what's that? Explain that a bit more. Well, like, every, every country has kind of its own style. So it's, Scandinavian countries are quite aggressive. Uh, Italians and French and Spanish, they just want to see a lot of pots, play a lot of flops. But when you play that style, that means you're going to see a lot of flops, turns and rivers. But it also means that every now and then you're going to hit a pair or you're going to hit a straight draw or a flush draw. So that means that you have to realize that if you're playing against a French player, they're going to want to see the turn and they're going to want to see the river. So by the time you put in your money on the river, you better have it because there's a good chance that they have at least some part of the what's on the table. Right, right. And finally, can Dan make it a third? Can Matthias make it a second? Well. Of course, that's a numbers game and they have a mathematical disadvantage in this situation because of course there's so many players trying to win and in order to win one tournament you have to be very lucky and good but in order to win two you have to be even luckier and better. Uh, Mateus came really close in Troja so he had a shot at, at, at winning another tournament but they're very good players, both of them, so of course they have a chance. They have a bigger chance than some of these amateur players, but because they've done it before, it's going to be hard to do it again. Well, I look forward to seeing what happens.
end of day 1A and I'm here at the Welcome Drinks. As you know, Cannes is a city famous for its film festival. So I'm going to ask the players, if a movie star was to play you in a film about your life, who would it be? Tom Cruise. Uh, Nicholson. Julia Dench. I'd say Julia Roberts for you. Uh, Julia Roberts. No, I think Judy Dench. Judy Dench is a great actress. I think uh, DiCaprio. <laughs> and how about you? Yeah. I think George Clooney then. Uh, yeah. Also a good one, right? Yeah. I don't know, but I would play myself. Uh, Sandra Bullock, I think. Hot, sexy, funny, quirky. Yeah, that's me. All the things are Rachel is. Yes. Uh, Matt Damon. Al Pacino. I like Rachel Weisz a lot. You know that one? I like her. I don't know. I don't remember anyone else now. Rachel Weisz is a good call. It's a good call. Thank you, Eva. Oui, Gérard Depardieu. Maybe Sharon Stone? Uh, maybe uh, Robert De Niro. Uh, can, I, can I choose a beautiful one? <laughs> yeah, I can. Okay. Jessica Alba. <laughs> uh, Jason Stratham. Scarlett Johansson because we have the same surname. Obviously Brad Pitt. Moi, uh, Adrian Brody because people say I look like him. Julia Roberts was always good. Marilyn Monroe. Nicolas Cage. Nobody, I think. Because it's, it's too hard to be me, I think. Uh, Sandra Bullock. Cameron Diaz. Yes. Donald Duck. What is going to look like? Chuck Norris, actually. He's a dead ringer for me. Uh, <laughs> I li I'm living a rock star life, so why would I be uh, want to be a movie star? I mean, I'm here, I'm here in Ke in Cannes, so nice hotel, no problem. You're a movie I'm star living, already. Living a dream, yeah. Very good answer. Thanks. Sorry, I have this Clooney in my head. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's distracting. <laughs> um, who had to play me? I don't know. You tell me. Angelina Jolie. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I love you. Very good. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. If you were going to choose a movie star to play you in a film about your life, who would you choose? Like, which movie star? Oh, you've understood something. Yes, I'm very happy uh, to, to play the Unibeto Pen. Uh, it's my uh, 13 Unibet, uh no, no, uh, 15 Unibet Open. Long time, yeah. your favorite movie star. Ah, oh. okay, uh, the Unibet Open, well, uh, uh, it's uh, uh, Varga. You know Varga? Oh, I don't think I know him. It's a beautiful Unibet Open, but uh, can it's uh, very beautiful. Perfect, thank you. <laughs> Eight, 
Hello guys, can you hear me now? We are now live again at the Unibet Open here in Cannes. I'm on my own. Even the Frenchies haven't turned up. Nobody wants to do commentary on their own. Never mind. Dan Glimner is upstairs having a meal. It must be nice. He's spending a while. We do have some um, interesting players at the table at the moment for you. We've got Paul Valkenberg. Paul's recently become a father again. The little baby Oscar. So he needs a lot of money to uh, to bring the boy up. It'll cost you a fortune, sir. We've got um, Arseny Meskeryaikov. I have no idea if I pronounced that correctly. Uh, Paul Valkenberg, uh, Laurent Bourgeois, uh, Maxime Roulet, uh, Bernard Boulle, Boulle, player six, player seven, and uh, Ian Bougena and Soren Blana. Uh, Mesha has made the bet at 1600. Bull Bull has the decision here. <coughs> he says no. And Mesha wins the hat. I'm going to call him Mesha now because that's ah, okay. It's easy to say. Mesha Yakov. <laughs> so, guys, don't forget we do have the competition running on Facebook. Who will have the lowest chips at the end of day 1A? You can uh, leave a guess on Facebook, or you can message us on Twitter, um, at Unibet Open. And if you do do that, if you can put in the, um, the hashtag, use it as Unibet Can. Having a look at our Twitter feed, uh, Kevin Frame from the UK is busted out. He had uh, a full house with Ace Queen on a 999 Queen board. Um, the other guy had the 9, unfortunately for Kev. Um, Quentin Lecomte, yeah, 26,000 at the dinner break. Lines are currently 600, 300 with a running ante of 75. So by the looks of things today, we had a, uh, a buy-in amount of 168. We now have 111 entrants still remaining. So we've lost 57 from today's play. Average stack at the moment is around about 30,000. 30,200 and something or another. It's close enough, I suppose. But good news is for all of our players here, 36 people will be getting paid a minimum of 3,500 euros. The winner will receive a fantastic 100,000 euros. So, 
could be looking forward to winning quite a bit of money uh, in the next three days. We do obviously have um, the 550 deep stack starting in a few moments. Um, we do have the high roller event starting tomorrow. And then some side events as well. If you want to play in any of those, come on down. We're at the uh, casino here on the seafront uh, in Cannes. We'd love to see you. Sorry about that guys, just trying to grab myself a nice little refreshment there. The room is uh, looking fairly empty at the moment. We've got um, around about 10, 12 tables roughly um, on their lunch breaks at the moment. So I count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, about eight tables on the lunch breaks at the moment. Our French guys have had an extended lunch. They're just arriving back now. So those of you who prefer to listen to the Frenchman speak, Antoine is back from his lunch. He's deserved it though. He's worked about 17 hours this week so far. Same as myself, we don't, we don't ever stop. Paul Valkenberg coming back late to the feature table. You're going to notice him with his uh, distinguished green, green jacket on, looking rather fetching. Um, so yeah. Currently 10 minutes into round seven. Lines 300, 675 running anti. We will be playing 10 levels today. So we have a full four levels left. Four more hours of play. A couple of breaks in between. If you've got any questions, any comments, anybody you want to follow, any um, interesting people who you'd like us to, to, to find out about, we can try and do our best for you. Um, I can see Matthias Mulhausen still in with his lovely hat on, which got attacked by a parrot. So when he, if he comes back on, on our live stream, we can tell him about the parrot uh, situation. Uh, quite an interesting story. How a gentleman in a hat gets attacked by a parrot. It's uh, quite fun. We've got our bloggers on the floor. You can see Dana walking around. Paul's now joined the feature table, Paul Valkenberg. There he is. It's a fabulous Unibet uh, colored tracksuit top, I suppose it is. Calls, with blue folds, home just checks in the big blind. So we're going to see a flop. <coughs> flop is ace, ten, seven with two diamonds on the board.
See you later. Okay, guys, just been speaking to one of our uh, TV presenters, Felicia Fielder. Um, pretty excited about Cannes by the sounds of things. Going to be going out later, hopefully. Seeing some of the sights, some of the clubs. Which is what you can experience when you come down to one of the Unibet poker events. Once again, we would love to see you in Riga in December. You can qualify online every Sunday. It's a 275 euro satellite. Around about uh, eight packages guaranteed. Who knows? You could be joining us in Riga. Parties, poker, alcohol, lots and lots and lots of fun. The guys here at Unibet, they know how to show a great party. They put on a great service and uh, yeah, we would love to see you coming down here. Don't forget, we do have side events. If you want to play in any of our side events, please again, come on down. Yeah, so we had 168 start. We've now got 107 remaining. So if you have departed since the, uh, the end of the last level, So we've got, yeah, um, 61 players have exited today so far. Average stack, 31,401. We're midway through level 7 now. Uh, we've got three, three and three quarter levels to go before the end of today's play. Don't forget, we do have the, um, the smallest chip competition on Facebook. The smallest chip situation is, if you put a Facebook comment on our question, how many chips will the smallest chip stack have by the end of day 1A? 
I'm now joined by Dan Glimner again. Yes, back again. Is the sound level right? Sound Perfect. Sounds good to me. Okay, as long as you are happy, I'm happy. <laughs> so I'm slight, running slightly late. So I was having dinner actually together with my wife and Paul Valkenburg's wife and their 10 week old son who was sleeping quietly. Sleeping in his nicely, yeah. Stroller. <laughs> So, back again, sorry about that. Excellent no, restaurant, right. food was good, service was slow, that's why I'm running late. Yeah, I had and the same. And there he is, speaking of Paul Valkenberg, there he is in the green jacket. That's right. One of the nicest guys I know, I would say that. And he's a very charming son who's taken the poker world by storm, <laughs> 10 weeks old. <laughs> yeah, just wait till he's 18. Yeah, the world will right. be at his feet. Absolutely. So, what am I missing at the feature table? What's not happening? much, to be honest with you. Um, we've not really had much... We're down to 107 play players, I see. But we are down, there. yeah. We've lost 61, Dan. So, uh -huh. uh, yeah, 168 bought in. We've got 100,000 uh, euros uh -huh, for the so winner. So that was the eventual number, 168. Yeah. 167, yeah. all right. So, not a bad field. That's 313, I think it is, isn't it? Is that right now? Well, it's a long slog to go. Yeah. Round 7, 41 minutes left of it. Blinds 300, 600, anti 75. He's really cutting deep into the chip stacks now. Yeah, it is, yeah. And speaking of Paul, how's he doing over there, my friend? Uh, well, he was laid back, obviously, as you know, um, <laughs> after, after lunch. Um, I've not seen him involved in many hands at all. Um, he's only been here for maybe four or five hands in total. All right. Um, well, he picks his spots carefully. No yeah, doubt. absolutely, yeah. Uh, a very good player, very calculated. Doesn't really rush into things, which is No, which no, is no. Great. He's, he's got his head screwed on. Yeah, twice, absolutely. That's yeah. for sure. And he's a previous Unibet Open winner in London, as you know. That's right. A couple of years back. Yeah. So, all in all, good performance. Yeah, and we've always, we've always got high expectations for Paul whenever we, we see him play. Absolutely. Any other interesting players at the feature table? Since I just joined the action, so um, better bring me up to speed. Yeah, we've got a guy who I recognize from France, um, Maxime Rouleau. Rio, hello. You'll recognise him when you see him. All oh, um, right. An older gentleman with uh, a grey, grey side hair. Okay. Um, I remember him from from France uh, last last time, definitely. Um, Paul Valkenberg, obviously. Um, aside from that, I don't really know some of the players. Um, some Mesh of the yeah. Which country is he from? Mesher Yakov, Arasani Mesher Yakov. <laughs> Yakov Anatoly. Could be Russian. Yeah. Could be Belarusian. So yeah, we're not 100% sure on some of the players. All right. We're going to do a bit of a, a hand and mob again. Would be nice to have a flag of the various nationalities up there in the graphics as well. That would be fantastic. Yeah. Well, that yeah. would be wonderful if they could fix it. Okay, tech guys, that's your task for the next Univet opening rig in December. <laughs> Make sure to put a nationality flag somewhere. And the guy on the left, he says, don't worry on his t-shirt. Presumably he says the rest of it, be happy. <laughs> well, Arseny uh, Meshryakov <coughs> is Russian. Uh-huh, okay. Um, only has one entry on the Hendon Mob database. Back in 2007. 2007, yeah. Russian winter poker tournament in Moscow. Yeah. So not much information on that gentleman there. No, leads a quiet life, obviously. Well, he could be a kingpin of the Russian Mafia. <laughs> I'm just making a joke. Hey, don't take it seriously. We've got Soren Blanner on our table. Uh, Soren Blanner, that sounds either, da probably Danish, possibly Norwegian. Soren Blanner, Danish, yes, there he yeah, is. Yeah, Danish flag. Well, um, he has a little list to his credits. Not too bad. He was um, in Malta in the Unibet Open. He was 23rd in our Malta event in March 2011. He's got quite a few little active flags there. Aussie Millions, he won a side event, he won the shootout. At the Aussie Millions, 1,000 shootout back in 2011. And he has a 2012 uh, ticket over there, November, back in the Deep Stack Extravaganza in Las Vegas, yeah. 28th, for $6,500. Ah, he's also got the Unibet Open Riga in the 6 Max, he was 8th. Aha, uh -huh, yeah, yeah. Well, that was uh, two years ago now as well. Well, he's due for another cash. What do you say, Mette? We have Mette of the Danish contingent sitting over there, just behind us, Graham and I. That's right. Lovely Mette. 
And you're rooting for the Danish players, no doubt. Ah, we have two Danish players. Okay, so Søren Blanner is one of them, and the others? Holm? Martin. Okay, like I said, I haven't picked up on the names yet, having just sat down. Okay, the two Danish players at this feature table. And there he is, Mr. Nice Guy, Paul Valkenberg. Yeah, I've got no information on Martin Holm at the moment, if it is Martin Holm. Um, well, we'll see. I do know as well, uh, I'm on the outer tables. Um, Matthias Mulhusen is still in at the moment. You can see him wearing, the, wearing a hat in the far corner there. Um, and some of the guys are at the dinner break, I see. Yeah, that's right. We've got yeah, um, only half eight, of the eight or nine tables. Yeah, on only half the, the field is active at the yeah. moment. That's right. Yeah, they're having a staggered dinner break here in uh, Canada, as you probably know. So half of the field goes, the other stays on in place, and then that one half goes away and the other one comes back. So as not to overload the restaurant. That's right. Don't forget, you can ask us any questions you want on the live stream. We'll do our very best to answer them for you. We also have um, Antoine on the French stream at the moment. Uh, the hardest worker in Unibet at the moment. He's working on his own. Um, again, if you want to ask a question in French, Antoine can answer that for you. We do have our Facebook and Twitter pages. Uh, Facebook is uh, Unibet Open. And Twitter is at Unibet Open. And hashtag Unibet Can. So come on, give, give us some questions, ask us a, a Absolutely. couple of things. It's nice to be in yeah. touch with you viewers and listeners out there. It'd be nice to hear from you, yeah. Absolutely. Give us some feedback. What do you think? And are you going to be in Riga? And how many of you are playing the free roll right now? Yeah, if anyone's playing the free roll, let us know how you're getting on. Um, and if you do actually win a satellite ticket, let us know. Yeah, we'd we may be able to, to try and follow you. you to find out how far you actually get. And there will be another free roll tomorrow, of course. We'll That's get right. back with the secret passwords <laughs> by them. Yeah. And there's a different one every day, of course. That is correct. So Paul's involved in the hand now. He has a 300 bet out there so far. Yeah, he's on the small bet. Sorry, the small blind at the moment. Another thousand to call and... That's a raise. He raises it is up. Is that a raise to 33? Yeah, three bets it up to 33. 33, and nobody wanted to play with them? No, the original better, thought better of it. Well, nice move, you have to say that. Then do, do you have a nice green tracksuit top like that for No, the not like that. That's no. one specifically for the, uh, mm, what do you say, Dutch players. Yeah. No, I have a couple of hoodies, of course. I have four shirts, which had a Swedish flag on them, and my name yeah, is I've well. seen that one, yeah. And I have a number of hoodies, which they've been handing out like confetti in these <laughs> <Unibet> Open <laughs> tournaments. i got enough hoodies with Unibet on them to last me for the rest of my life. <laughs> I'll be using them in the old age folks home, you know. <laughs> 30 years from now. At least you won't be cold in the winter. <laughs> no, I won't be, that's <laughs> for sure. Your, your heating bill won't be too bad. Exactly, I can always cut down on that. <laughs> if things become critical. You can see the chips in the middle already. That is the antis from everybody. And it's getting to be a sizable bunch of those chips so far. That's right, yeah. The ante is um, 75 at the moment. Um, so obviously... Uh, nine players on the table it's yeah from the next level on they'll be switching them out six those seventy-five green chips. In the middle straight away yeah when we're going to 100 and anti the next level in 33 and a half minutes will be 400 800 blinds with 100 anti and of course those green 25s will be gone soon yeah that's right if you're wondering about the colors of the chips the green ones are 25s the black ones are hundreds Red ones, 500s, blue ones, 1,000, and the yellow ones are 1,000. Sorry, 5,000. And you'll see the odds purple. The odd line purple chip here now, yeah. 10,000. That's right, 10,000 chips. And tomorrow they'll be switching in the 25,000 chips, rectangular ones, plaques. Yeah, that's right. And there you see on top, right there, there are two purple ones over there with the one yellow one underneath. 
Well, I can see that the average chip stack is now 31.4k, so getting up there. And Quentin Leconte just come up to uh, Antoine to let him know what's happening. I don't know whether he's just bust the tournament or not. If you want some benchmarking yesterday, when we had 145 players in day 1A, out of which 47 survived, that left the average chip stack at 61.7k. So that's presumably a similar number we're looking for. Yeah, ah, yes, you already announced the first prize, of course, which is a cool 100,000 euros. That's right, yeah. Massive. Six figures. Six figures, as we as we, uh, we had anticipated that anyway. Yeah. Um, 66,000 for the second for the second place and about 44,000 for third. So well, you could easily buy a pretty decent good. car with that. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So you problems, might just get it? a burger and fries here in Cannes. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> Well, if you do it along the La Croisette, which is the most expensive stroller on town. I mean, otherwise, I, we had dinner at the Bax place in one of the back streets. Le Petit Paris. Oh, like yes, I, said, I, pa I passed that on the way yeah. today. Yeah. Excellent food, a bit slow with the service, but otherwise nice. And they served an excellent Sancerre, white wine, with the sea bass. Well, I was on the, the main street, and I got myself... Uh, a bottle of water, a 500 mils bottle of water, half a liter, and that's four euros you fifty. Four euros fifty. Well, welcome <laughs> to Cannes. What can I yeah. say? What can I say? <laughs> what can you say? Yeah. <laughs> well, the pun comes unbidden to mind. That's for sure. You might have seen the official T-shirt of this event, which has been spotted in a few places in the background. And it says Univet Open, and underneath it says Can You Win It? And of course, Can, spelled C A N N E S. Can you win it? Yes, you can. Or to quote Barack Obama, yes, we can. <laughs> they could have used him in the advertising for the Univet Open this time. That's one of the nicer stacks over there. <coughs> I had to see that the previous feature table I covered earlier this afternoon, it was much more quiet. Seems to be a bit of a nice chat going on over there. This Paul is the, the dealer I was on about yesterday, how she continued to talk all the way through. Yeah. Try and help the players up a bit, you know, kind of give them the, the motivation and the confidence to talk, perhaps, where if it's a quiet table, nobody really wants to become that person who is constantly chatting away. You give too much away, but if a dealer's nice and friendly, yeah, this one seems to be working nicely. Yeah, I would yeah. say that. Well, still 107 players left according to the monitors out of 168 starters. And we passed the half hour mark for the round seven. We will be playing 10 levels today, just like yesterday. I was talking to John Scannon, our tournament director, earlier on. Um, he uh, he's anticipating we play ten today, uh, as per yesterday. Yeah. Um, and then tomorrow we play nine. So nine. maybe so. But he wants to cut it down to the uh, final final line, table. Yeah. Yeah. So. But he's estimating nine levels tomorrow. Estimating nine levels tomorrow, just based on how many players we've had enter and how many players were remaining from last night as well. Well, he has a lot of experience of yeah, he does, yeah, absolutely. The future in that. Yeah. Runs probably the best card room in the UK. That is the Aspers Westfield Casino in the London Olympic Park. And that's where we Stratford. had the Univet Open in August last year. It was quite well run, I would say. That's, I liked it. Yeah, absolutely. He was telling us earlier on, um, he's been getting kind of full card rooms every week now, where it's completely full. The cash tables are running 24-7, which is uh, it's great news for poker. I have to say that poker is here to stay as a mainstream of society. It has Will we see it in the Olympics? Level. Eventually. Yeah. Well, you have Bridge Olympics and Chess Olympics, or Olympiads, anyway. So. We'll see. Wouldn't surprise me at all. <coughs> if wrestling and tennis can be in the Olympics, surely <laughs> poker can as Surely well. poker can as well. I speculate on that the differences between mind sports and pure physical sports in my blog in Sweden. And there are obvious differences, but also obvious similarities. 
Well, there's a stamina similarity as well, isn't there? Because to be a good poker player, you need good stamina. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the good poker players, they really take care of their bodies. Yeah, yeah. They make sure they go to the gym regularly, whatever. And take it easy with the food and the alcohol, especially when they're playing. Yeah. And the next day. Which sort of gives me a bad conscience, the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> we should be straightening it up and fly right, you know. That's why I'm sitting here and not playing poker. <laughs> 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 yeah, and I was busted out yesterday. So. <laughs> what can I say? What can uh, I say? You can only try your best. Yep. That's a nice chip stack of that guy over there. Yeah, uh, Bujana, 48,300. Uh huh. It seems quite confident. Meshiyakov, quite above the average 000, of 31 and a half. The gentleman in front of us, though, next to Paul, Meshiyakov, has 63,000. So oh, wow! Yeah, now you're talking. Uh, and Paul Valkenberg seems to be doing well at 40.7, if I spotted it correctly. Do you recognise the older gentleman there from, from in the Paris? middle? Yeah. Yes, I do. Is that Butbol? No, that's Butbol in the um, oh. in the white shirt. Um, okay. He was. Maxime Rulio, is that how you pronounce it? Maxime Rulio. 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 Oh, these French names. Rulio. And there's Holm, another Danish player in the black shirt. Yeah, that's right. We believe his first name is Martin. If anybody does know him on the, uh, <coughs> with the black shirt with the glasses there. If you could just confirm it for us, if that's... Uh, if yes, do we Martin. have anything new here in the chat box? No, nothing really. It's all French at the moment. Um, poor, poor Andre is... Uh, sorry, Antoine is, is working his ass off. <laughs> he's having to talk and he's having to type at the same time. He's doing a fantastic job. Simultaneous capacity. <laughs> uh, Bolo is saying good luck. Seat four. Arcadius Olzoe, runner-up in Riga. 2011 it must be. All right. Hi, Bolo. Are you actually playing the free roll at the moment? <laughs> if you are, how are you doing? Please let us know. So we've got our two short stacks at the table going uh, heads up with each other at the moment. Boot Bull and Cars. 7.9k, that's rather short, and 14k. Well, miracles will happen. A couple of years back, Phil Helmuth was down to 700 in chips after day one in the World Championship. Two days later, he had over a million. Never give up. That's the lesson. The old chip and the chair rule. And the prayer, don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> So, Bolo, how are you doing? Um, are you making easy, easy pro? Excuse me, easy progress with the uh, with the free roll? Are you? Uh, are you have, have you had to use the rebuy option yet? You're eleventh of sixteen. Wow, excellent. I'll see if I can log into my Unibet uh, account. I don't know if I can or not. You can follow the free roll. Yeah, would be interesting. I think I might have locked myself out of the account yesterday, though. What happened? You punched the wrong button. Wrong password about seven or eight times. Oh! <laughs> you gotta yeah. be careful, Grim. I know. It seems like it's loading. Oh, you're on to the password page now. Yeah. I don't think I can access it, though, because I don't know actually what my username or my password is. Uh, I'm keeping my. Oh! No. Nope. Nope. Are you in? Yes, you are. Are we in? Are we in? Are we in? It looks like it. No! We are unable to log you in. Please contact our customer service desk. All right, you'll have to contact them. I wonder if I can get one of my. Well, we surrounded by Unibet people. Yeah. Nobody could There's nobody the in office. the office at all. <laughs> <laughs> the office is pretty much here at the moment. I'll send them an email. Slight adjustment, we're now down to 105 remaining plays, day 1B, and the it's 32,000 is the average at the moment, 32k. <coughs> 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 
we'll send you in a bit of an email, see what happens. And if we can get in Bolo, we'll, uh, we'll follow you and give you some good rail and hopefully you qualify for Riga. Absolutely. Let's hope to see you there. On the other hand, a lot of people who want to be in Riga, you'll have to step across corpses to get there, as we say in Swedish. <laughs> And I can see another plane being busted out and leaving the tournament area out there. Okay, I've just emailed Unibet now, so we'll see what happens. See what happens. Yep. I did some calculations during day one, starting day one C of the main event in the World Series of Poker. And about every 30 seconds, the player get busted out. Wow. Talk about it. It just shows the size of the tournament that was. Yeah, really. exactly. It's, the uh, sheer it's massive, size yeah. of it. When you had over 4,000 entries, that was massive. Every 30 seconds, somebody gets up from his chair. I remember myself when I was playing the, the 1,000 event. There's always a, a very small event just before the main event at the end of June. Uh, I've played it quite well, three or four times now. And you're getting kind of 3,000 players for for a $1,000 event oh, yeah. the World Series because of, of the lure of the bracelet. Yeah, oh yeah, everybody wants to have that one. On in list. reality, the the value of the tournament is very, very poor because you only get 3,000 chips. I know, I know, it's a bit of a crapshoot. <laughs> yeah, so you have to do well straight away. Well, if Lady Luck does not smile favorably upon you, you're out. That's you're right. Out. You will be out the door in a body bag in no <laughs> time flat, baby. What can I say? The cruelty of it. I'm still waiting for somebody to write the great American poker novel. It would be interesting, wouldn't it? I mean, there's been a number of movies out. Uh. Oh, yeah. I mean, The Cincinnati Kid, which is built on a book. It's an excellent one. It's probably the, still my favorite poker movie. But still, and I, Poker Nation by Andy Bell was quite good as well. I think the one that got everyone really interested in poker as well was, uh, was Rounders, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, the that uh, one, which is Matt, Matt Damon. Damon. yeah. And Britain's own mini driver as well. She's a... Uh, oh, she yeah, she was in there as female, well. Female, yeah. That's right. <coughs> oh, yeah, that probably did a lot for poker. This was the right movie at the right time. Yeah, that's right. But quite a nice pot developing here, though, Dan. We've got uh, 15,000 in the middle already. A flop of Queen Six Deuce with oh, two clubs. up nicely. Yeah. With three quite nicely stacked players as well. 30, 45, 44, 44. Okay. So Bourgeois bet 6,000. Pot is up to 21.6. And takes the pot, I think. Okay, yeah. that's good. That guy looks tough. Dark sunglasses. The rather ascetic look. There's a slight smile on his face there. Yeah, he did. After taking in that 15,000 pot. Did he or did he not bluff? All is the same question. Well, have you received an email yet? Oh, you're in. I'm not in. No, I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> I thought you were in to so your Unibit account. Have they replied yet? No, not yet. <coughs> Most of my emails I have at the moment are from Unibet. Obviously with regards to this week, but nothing of regarding... Of uh, Stands to reason. Yeah, nothing regarding uh, my, my account, unfortunately. Oh well. Paul Valkenberg seems to be running well. He has that quiet smile on his face. 
There was 307 entries into our live streaming for you all this evening. Excellent. Well, I wish you luck if you are listening to this and still playing the free roll. Hang in there, baby. There's a ticket to Riga. It's interesting how you adjust uh, as the tournament goes on, the races and the size of the bets. You start at 2550, you know the standard race is under 2550, under yeah, the gun yeah. if you've got a good enough hand. And eventually you adjust upwards, they sit suddenly you will bet 14,000 or something like that. <laughs> because that's the standard bet right there. I mean if you remember rightly, I mean um, over the last number of years, um, the, the, the average well, bet was around three times the, the big blind, wasn't it? That's kind of came down over the last probably six to nine months to around about two and a half times the big bet. Yeah, big that's blind. right. I wonder why that is. Is that to try and um, just oh, mix it, it up a little bit? Or? Actually, there's a bit of a mathematics behind it. I've seen that in some books where they really go to war with the mathematics of poker and there, there is mathematical reasoning behind it actually where you want to put the pot odds for the next player yeah yeah whether it's feasible to call with the kind of hand you have and so on so, so instead of your three three times a big black big blind raise it's now two and a half yeah that's right yeah. it's gone down slightly interesting card there borders double paired Straight draws, full houses. Oh, it could be undermining somebody else's two pair. Yeah. I mean, you really want to have ace. We had a, we had a great hand before. Ah, uh -huh, I missed We it. had um, ace, ace, six, six, three. Uh, it was, there was betting throughout the hands. Then once the second six hit the board, uh, the original better f just checked. The guy who'd been calling all the way makes a small bet. The original raiser folds. Yeah. And he shows pocket fives. Hmm. So he actually wins the hand with aces and six with a five kicker. With a five kicker. So he was actually counterfeited, but because he's obviously the opponent who'd been leading out and checked. That's ridiculous, yeah. anyway. So yeah, um, I can only presume that the other gentleman must have had a... Four or a three or something. Four or a three or something, yeah. yeah or <laughs> something even worse. <laughs> yeah. When it happens. And if you're wondering about one thing, which I've heard some poker players do, why do they start with 25 and 50 as the blinds? Why not 1 and 2 and adjust the starting stack accordingly? I mean, if you have 20,000, if you start at 25, 50, you could downscale it simply by 50 times. Yeah, yeah. And they would have something different. So 1 and 2 and 400 starting stack. But there's a reason behind it, because once upon a time, back in 1971, when he had the first tournament ever, they did not. They had not invented the concept of tournament chips yet, so they were right. simply using cash game chips because those were the only ones available. <laughs> and since it was, after all, a world championship, what was the highest game at the moment they had in Las Vegas back in those days? Well, the answer is twenty-five fifty. That was the highest game they had with dollars, of course. Yeah. So they simply copied the numbers as a starting point for the poker world championship. Because they haven't really reasoned it through the whole thing. I mean, if they had invented the whole concept of poker tournament today, presumably you would have one and two blinds, you would have 400. But the numbers, of course, are more impressive. If you're starting with 20,000 or 30,000, yeah, exactly, you have yeah. this one. But that's the reason they had 25-50, the industry standard. Well, I made a comment a few blinds. days ago, Dan. Um, I played a tournament in Newcastle about two weeks ago. Yeah. Um, which is my, my hometown, my local casino. Yeah. Um, they give us 30,000 starting stack. Okay. But they started it at 100, 200. Oh, wow. 60 well, times the big blind. Don't understand why you would do that. Why would you not just have it as. Because you want it to sound impressive. Sound massive, yeah. 30,000 yeah. sounds like it's a deep yeah. stack, but you always have to measure it against the size of the big blind. Hmm. And of course, the length of the various levels. It was a bit silly. I just thought it was, you know. Why not maybe give us 20,000 and then give you 50 or 51 or 25,000? Exactly, you know, they 25, could do the same thing otherwise. Yeah. But it's it sounds strange. more impressive. I think there's a bit of psychology. 
If you remember, if you played pinball machines, have you seen any of the old pinball machines? Yes, yes. The, the really, really old, old ones. ones. Yeah. They had three digits. That was the maximum. Yeah. And then, back in the 60s, they went to four digits. Yeah. So the maximum points you can get was 9,999. And now some of the new but ones, you, you can actually get 10,000 by hitting one exactly. point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's the same thing with bridge, actually. If you play a game of bridge, what basically you could do is simply divide everything by 10, and it would work exactly the same. <laughs> but if you score all these more points, since it's multiplied by 10, more than necessary, it works and it sounds more psychologically impressive. And it's the same thing with pinball, same thing with poker and so on. You are impressed by numbers. That's right. I mean, I, I get the idea of it kind of having to, it sounds a lot better when you've got 30,000 chips. Wow. Wow, everybody says. But if but you have 100, 200 blinds, yeah, 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 it's not you really got to think great. about it. Yeah, absolutely. Also, one in one of my old blogs a couple of years ago, I did the mathematics for the final table of the World Championship, the main event of the World Series of Poker. And they have massive stacks of chips on the table, but what you could get by with is a lot fewer chips. You could actually play the final table of the World Championship of Poker with only, let's say, 150 chips. Yeah. And that's all. If you pick the right numbers and values of them, it would still work, but... It looks a hell of a lot more impressive when you have thousands of chips there. So there's more psychology involved than you think when you're looking at a poker table. So Bolo, who is the uh, French, sorry, the Polish player who normally comes along uh, to our event, he won an 11 euro satellite ticket. All right. Uh, Excellent work. So yeah, well Bolo. done, man. Excellent um, work. Good luck in the in the satellite that you decide to play. And uh, you never know, hopefully you might do well. Also by inflation of money, it says, by one of our guests in there. Hi, Tarim, how are you doing? Well, you could dub a poker tournament instant inflation if you wanted to, considering how the blinds go up. That's quite an observation. Yeah. And here we have the foam rubber <laughs> unibet hand, which has been circulating yesterday and today, and now I have it on my right hand. One of those giant hands, foam rubber, white printing with the index finger pointing straight up and saying unibet. I'm going to attempt to steal that and take that home for my children. <laughs> <laughs> we can have some fights in the living room with that one. I'm sure. Well, we have it leaning just in front of us, on top of all the electronics. Still no e emails from Unibet. <laughs> Customer service is disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I am only joking, obviously. Yeah. Ninety percent of the staff still are actually here with get us. Get on the, the ball, guys. Get on the ball. Yeah. <coughs> That's a short stack. Cars. Ten point nine left. Yeah, we've got 40, 46 people in the online box at the moment. Um, there's only Taryn talking. No one else is really bothering. Come on, guys. What, what are you all doing now? It's, uh, it's getting on to 9 o'clock back in the UK. It's 8 o'clock in Central Europe nearly. And again, if you have any questions concerning poker, poker history, whatever, I mean, anything relevant, please put them, type them into the chat box. We'll see what we can do. Karim has asked, where is the turtle? The turtle? Yeah. Is there a bag down there, Dan? The camouflage one? Why oh, there's a camouflage bag. Ah. Oh. It's just get lost in the woods. Ah, and it's <laughs> called a turtle, that one, or? No, no, no. no. We have the ah, turtle. Ah, you have a small uh, turtle. It's a, it's a Mafia Island green turtle. Uh -huh. We sponsored it for our children. I see, I see. Any news from the turtle? Well, I'm going to actually post a photograph. The foam rubber turtle. Oh, Should done? I be holding it like that, or? Should be fine, I think. We get a nice okay, photograph of the turtle. Absolutely. This is Don. This is Don. Ma Don, Don Corleone. He's a Mafia Island turtle. <laughs> so don't don't upset him. He, he'll beat you with this with his finger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's well connected. And if you don't know what I mean about beating him with a finger, I'll show you in a moment. Yeah. Hang on. I'm going to put it up there. There you go. Click. 
and you're flashing it up instantly on Instagram or Twitter or both or Facebook. Facebook for now. Um, All right, Facebook for now. Because I'm not connected into the the Unibet Twitter in- Instagram at the moment. Ah, okay. At the moment, seven and a half minutes left of level seven. Still 105 players left, according to the board. Out of the 168 that started today. Expecting the reading of about 55 players making it all together. Yeah, I was thinking maybe if we had um, somewhere around about 100 players maybe going into tomorrow. Yeah, that's a pretty accurate number, yeah. I guess. What with the 47 yesterday and let's say about 55 today or something like that. Slightly over 100, just a shade. You got the lovely uh, Eva standing beside us. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Eva Calado. Will he be doing some commentary? Sorry? Are you going to sit down with us for a while? No? Sorry, no? I have to take care of the party tonight, to for tomorrow. <laughs> That's right. Have fun. Okay, we'll see you there. Yep, there's the Unibet play party tomorrow. Of course, in one of the clubs here in Cannes. And it's not just a main event going on here. I mean, we have plenty of other tournaments as well. There will be all together during the week. There's a high roller tournament. There's a bounty tournament. There's a two-day deep stack thing. There's the freeze out on Sunday. There are satellites for the moon. And a few other things, of course. But no ladies tournaments. I wish there was. And you posted the turtle on Facebook now? I have. I'm just trying to find out which Univet group is the best one to put it on, if possible. Uh-huh. Save that picture. Put them on all of it. Well, we have a smiling Paul Valkenberg reaching for his chips. And he raised it up. 31.25. The re-race from Paul Valkenberg, proud father of Oscar, 10 weeks old. 2025, was it the three? No, it was 3025, come on. Shopping up, guys. It's 3125 in there. Just look a tad worried. I haven't seen Paul Valkenberg show a hand since I arrived at the table. Is he going to show one now? Is he going to show a card? He's having a look. Perhaps at the end of the hand he may show one. Or he's faking it. (laughs) If he has ace-king, he should be fairly happy by now. I played four and a half hours yesterday. I didn't see ace-king once. Not even once. And I had only two pairs, which were outflopped by sets both times. Yeah, you were saying earlier on, it's I know. Well, horrible, enough, horrible situation. Enough of the complaining anyways. So. And Paul goes for the throats. And he takes down the pot. Well, slow and steady does it. That's what wins the race. Well, did you post it, Graham? I the have. picture of the turtle? It is now on... Well, it's loading, hopefully. And you're putting it on Twitter as well? Yeah, it's going to go on the um, Unibet Open face, uh, Twitter page, if I can get it sorted out. Well, hopefully it will be coming up fairly soon.
Push me in the 15.5 with Newcastle against the Wood. Oh, horse of the year. That's on my home track. Can to refresh the, the Twitter feed and then just see what happens with it. <laughs> I'm reminded of the old horse racing joke in America. I bet on a good horse at 10 to 1. It came in at the quarter past 2. <laughs> 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 it's not translatable into Swedish, unfortunately. It doesn't work. It's quite good. There we go. We have the picture of Don the Turtle on top of our unit yep. finger. Absolutely. Take a look. If you abuse him, especially Antoine. If Antoine abuses him, he gets beaten off the Unibet stick. <laughs> Antoine knows his role. Don is the king at the moment. Yeah, there's a bit of fun for us. Yep. Keeps us amused. Speaking of horse racing jokes, the same comedian that said the previous one, about 10 to 1, he also said, I bet on a very good horse last night. It took seven other horses to beat him. <laughs> I like the old, um, you can use this for any sport really, uh, which has a, has a league table. You say, we are the strongest team in the country because we're holding everybody else up. <laughs> Which reminds me of another classic joke. It's on the underground in London. And there's a man and his son. And the son tugs his father's sleeve and says, Daddy, Daddy, why is that man across the aisle reading the newspaper upside down? And the father replies, Well, my son, these days is the only way to see Arsenal at the top of the league. <laughs> <laughs> or whichever football yeah, team you prefer. Yeah, you can yes. use anybody. Yeah. Exactly. Whoever you want to get at. Oh, it's an elegant fold, airy one. And another horse racing joke, if you can stand it. Same comedian as previously, <laughs> who said that the horse I bet on yesterday was so slow that the jockey kept a diary of the trip. <laughs> Still no email from Unibet. Ah, what do they mean by customer service? And that's the end of level seven. We are now going up into level eight after the 15 minute break. 105 plays left according to the monitor, so out of 168 starters. And we're on a 15 minute break. So ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back after that one. 15 minutes, see you later.
It's the start of day 1B and players started behind me and I'm joined by Remco this morning. Let's have a little talk about what happened yesterday. Give me some official statistics first. Well, we started with 146 players yesterday. We lost exactly 100 players and we played down to 46 in 10 levels of play. We're going to play the same amount of levels today, so the combined field will come back tomorrow on Saturday and then we'll play down to the final table. Well, yesterday was a really good day. Um, we saw uh, former EPT Grand Final winner Peter de Korver, who made it to the next day. Um, Runner-up from Unibet Open Copenhagen, uh, Johnny Osberg was here. Uh -huh. And um, plenty more Scandinavian players that we always see, like uh, Davor Pavic and yeah. Thomas Brolin. They're always here. Um, and then, besides that, um, a lot of French local players. And it was good to see um, the chip lead at the end of the day was a French player, uh, Paul Tedeschi. A uh, young guy, good aggressive player. He finished with 243,000 chips which is a lot and I'm not quite sure if we're gonna have that many chips at the end of the day for the chip leader today but um, there was a lot of good play yesterday it was one really fun hand actually um, a Finnish player uh, managed to make a royal flush and usually when you make a royal flush it's hard to get paid off because your hand is so strong well his opponent happened to have a full house so he got all the chips uh, this Finnish gentleman made it to today too so if the luck stays on his side he might make a deep run and uh, what do you think will happen over this tournament? If, if you had to guess at this stage, what do you think? Do you think we'll have a French winner? I mean, the numbers should point towards a Swedish winner because we have more Swedish players than ever before. Um, but there's also a lot of French local players and a lot of good French players showed up today as well. Um, Roger Harbijan is playing today, who's the third on the all-time money list from France. Uh, this guy has quite the reputation uh, as, a, as a very slow player. He doesn't slow play, but he plays slow. So he throws off the, his opponents and he has a very unique style. Um, he has uh, 13 six-figure scores behind his name, so this guy is one to watch. Gosh, yeah, absolutely. And we talked a little bit yesterday about the French playing style, and you said, you know, if you're going to go in against a French player, you better have a good hand. W what's that? Explain that a bit more. Well, like, every, every country has kind of its own style. So Scandinavian countries are quite aggressive. Uh, Italians and French and Spanish, they just want to see a lot of pots, play a lot of flops. But when you play that style, that means you're going to see a lot of flops, turns and rivers. But it also means that every now and then you're going to hit a pair or you're going to hit a straight draw or a flush draw. So that means that you have to realize that if you're playing against a French player, they're going to want to see the turn and they're going to want to see the river. So by the time you put in your money on the river, you better have it because there's a good chance that they have at least some part of the what's on the table. Right, right. And finally, can Dan make it a third? Can Matez make it a second? Well. Of course, that's a numbers game and they have a mathematical disadvantage in this situation because of course there's so many players trying to win and in order to win one tournament you have to be very lucky and good but in order to win two you have to be even luckier and better. Uh, Mateus came really close in Troja so he had a shot at, at, at winning another tournament but they're very good players both of them so of course they have a chance. They have a bigger chance than some of these amateur players but because they've done it before it's going to be hard to do it again. I look forward to seeing what happens. end of day 1A and I'm here at the Welcome Drinks. As you know, Cannes is a city famous for its film festival. So I'm going to ask your players, if a movie star was to play you in a film about your life, who would it be? Tom Cruise. Uh, Nicholson. Julia Dench. I'd say Julia Roberts for you. Uh, Julia Roberts. Mm. No, I think Julia Dench. Julia Dench is a great actress. I think uh, DiCaprio. <laughs> and how about you? Yeah, I think George Clooney then. Uh, yeah, also a good one, right? 
I don't know, but I would play myself. Uh, Sandra Bullock, I think. Hot, sexy, funny, quirky. Yeah, that's me. All the things are Rachel is. Yes. Uh, Matt Damon. Al Pacino. I like Rachel Vice a lot. You know that one? I like her. I don't know. I don't remember anyone else now. Rachel Vice is a good call. It's a good call. Thank you, Eva. Oui, Gérard Depardieu. Maybe Sharon Stone. Uh, maybe uh, Robert De Niro. Uh, can I can I choose a beautiful one? <laughs> yeah, I can. Okay. Jessica Alba. <laughs> uh, Jason Stratton. Scarlett Johansson, because we have the same surname. Obviously Brad Pitt. Moi, uh, Adrian Brody, because people say I look like him. Julia Roberts was always good. Marilyn Monroe. Nicolas Cage. Nobody, I think. Because it's, it's too hard to be me, I think. Uh, Sandra Bullock. Cameron Diaz. Yes. Donald Duck. What is he going to look like? Chuck Norris, actually. He's a dead ringer for me. Um... <laughs> I li I'm living a rock star life, so why would I be uh, want to be a movie star? I mean, I'm here, I'm here in, Ke in Cannes, so nice hotel, no problem. You're a movie I'm star living, already. Living a dream, yeah. Very good answer. Thanks. Sorry, I have this cloning in my head. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's distracting. <laughs> um, who has to play me? I don't know. You tell me. Angelina Jolie. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I love you. Very good. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. If you were going to choose a movie star to play you in a film about your life, who would you choose? Like, which movie star? Alors, tu as compris quelque chose. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, I'm very happy uh, to, to play the Unibeto Pen. Uh, it's my uh, 13. Unibet, uh, no, no, uh, 15 Unibet Open. Long time, yeah, yeah. your favorite movie star. Ah, okay, uh, the Unibet Open, uh, it's uh, uh, Varga. You know Varga? Oh, I don't think I know him. It's a beautiful Unibet Open, but uh, Cannes, it's uh, very beautiful. Perfect, thank you. <laughs> It's the start of day 1B and play has started behind me and I'm joined by Remco this morning. Let's have a little talk about what happened yesterday. Give me some official statistics first. Well, we started with 146 players yesterday. We lost exactly 100 players and we played down to 46 in 10 levels of play. We're going to play the same amount of levels today, so the combined field will come back tomorrow and Saturday and then we'll play down to the final table. Well, yesterday was a really good day. Um, we saw uh, former EPT Grand Final winner Peter de Corver, who made it to the next day. Um, Runner-up from Unibet Open Copenhagen, uh, Johnny Ostberg was here, and um, plenty more Scandinavian players that we always see, like uh, Davor Pavic and yeah. Thomas Brolin. They're always here. Um, and then, besides that, um, a lot of French local players. And it was good to see um, the chip lead at the end of the day was a French player, uh, Paul Tedeschi, a uh, young guy, good aggressive player. He finished with 243,000 chips, which is a lot. And I'm not quite sure if we're going to have that many chips at the end of the day for the chip leader today. But um, there was a lot of good play yesterday. 
It was one really fun hand, actually. Um, a Finnish player uh, managed to make a royal flush. And usually when you make a royal flush, it's hard to get paid off because your hand is so strong. Mm -hmm. Well, his opponent happened to have a full house. So he got all the chips. Uh, this Finnish gentleman made it to, to day two. So if the luck stays on his side, he might make a deep run. And uh, what do you think will happen over this tournament? If, if you had to guess at this stage, what do you think? Do you think we'll have a French winner? I mean, the numbers should point towards a Swedish winner because we have more Swedish players than ever before. Um, but there's also a lot of French local players and a lot of good French players showed up today as well. Um, Roger Harbijan is playing today, who's the third on the all-time money list from France. Uh, this guy has quite the reputation uh, as, a, as a very slow player. He doesn't slow play, but he plays slow. So he throws off the, his opponents and he has a very unique style. Um, he has. Uh, 13 six-figure scores behind his name, so this guy is one to watch. Gosh, yeah, absolutely. And we talked a little bit yesterday about the French playing style, and you said, you know, if you're going to go in against a French player, you better have a good hand. W what's that? Explain that a bit more. Well, like, every, every country has kind of its own style. Scandinavian countries are quite aggressive. Uh, Italians and French and Spanish, they just want to see a lot of pots, play a lot of flops. But when you play that style, that means you're going to see a lot of flops, turns and rivers. But it also means that every round you're going to hit a pair or you're going to hit a straight draw or a flush draw. So that means that you have to realize that if you're playing against a French player, they're going to want to see the turn and they're going to want to see the river. So by the time you put in your money on the river, you better have it because there's a good chance that they have at least some part of the what's on the table. Right, right. And finally, can Dan make it a third? Can Matthias make it a second? Well. Of course, that's a numbers game, and they have a mathematical disadvantage in this situation because, of course, there's so many players trying to win, and in order to win one tournament, you have to be very lucky and good, but in order to win two, you have to be even luckier and better. Uh, Mateus came really close in Troja, so he had a shot at, at, at winning another tournament, but they're very good players, both of them, so of course they have a chance. They have a bigger chance than some of these amateur players, but because they've done it before, it's going to be hard to do it again. I look forward to seeing what happens. And we're back on the air, ladies and gentlemen. Round eight just started after the 15-minute break. So we'll have the uh, feature table soon on the air. And we'll be getting back to you with the details. I think it's still the same feature table we had earlier. With Paul uh, Valkenberg? Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, yeah. No, no, yeah, it seems no? to be like it. We changed it, we kept on the same, on the same place. We'll see about it, but in the meantime, all the rest of the guys came back from the break, so now it's a full complement of players. And it is a new feature table. And it says 102 remaining players, and a new feature table, you heard that, Graham, say? Well, like I said, 168 starters, down to 102 players left. So it means the average has crept up past 32k. But we're looking at to get down to half of that, so about 50, 55 players, presumably, today. So, it's still another three hours to go here in the office, so to speak. Well, they're getting everything geared up for the feature table soon. And, and here they are. Yeah, they're back. They are back indeed. Don't worry, be happy. One of the tech guys just came up and said that if you notice any differences in the names, it was because a couple of minor mistakes were made previously. 
So, uh, if you notice any name changes, <laughs> don't yeah, be surprised. We, we apologize. Yeah, we apologize for that, so don't be too surprised. Most of the names were right, but a couple of them were switched around in the computer system. Well, we can always blame it on the computers. And since we don't know everybody by name and face, we'll, well have to do this. Same, same rules as every other day. We're only human. Sometimes mistakes are made. Yes. It's one of those things in life. To err is human, to forgive is divine, to quote Alexander Pope. Absolutely. But like I said, most names are correct. In any case, we got the answer to the why he could not check out the tables, Graham, here on the Univet account. He can log into his Univet account, no problems, but he can't look at any of the games or he can't play of any of the games because France is a regulated market. And Unibet has a special license for that special network over there, so he can't play from his UK account, Graham. So that's, that's right. the explanation for it. Yeah, the, well, that is the exact reason. Unibet Which shows that FR. Unibet is a law-abiding company. Absolutely. Simply. Now, you've got to think as well that Unibet FR does have a poker site. Now, they are actually on a different network. Yeah, I know. So their other network yeah. is available to you be used, but... Obviously, with me having a UK account, we, we just can't do that. Exactly. So. Even though he's logging in from France, technically from a French IP address, they can still spot the account and see that it's registered in the UK. Yeah, that's right. So there we have it. All and everything according to the law. And we don't break the law, that is for sure. Not, no. not over here, anyway. No, no. In a nice little French, French prison cell for a while. That would <laughs> just top the weekend off, wouldn't it? <laughs> Well, I could think of better places to spend yeah, exactly. my week, you know. Yeah. He shows aces. And a large, nice, happy smile. Yeah. Well, he didn't want to let anybody in. Of course, there was a flush draw on the board, so... Of course, yeah. you want to block that road. Play your aces, yeah, definitely. Too many people don't do that. Too many people slow play aces when they shouldn't. Exactly. And, and get, at the end, they, they, they wonder why they lose with them. That's the, that's the worst thing. People complain, oh, I lost with aces. And, well, how a did you play A couple of years them? ago, I decided, badly? because everybody's complaining that they get their aces cracked. A yeah. couple of years ago, I decided that this year, I think it was 2009, I was going to keep an accurate account of every time I had an ace-ace. Yeah. And it was about 170 times in one year, yeah. both online and live tournaments. And it turned out that the statistics were fairly correct. Slightly over 80%, I won with the yeah. aces. Yeah. And that was the statistics for a whole year, online and live. And only once did they draw with somebody else who had aces at the time. <laughs> that happened only once in the whole year. But about 170 times had aces, and they stood up over 80% of the time. Excellent. So pretty much the statistics you would expect. Well, yeah, of course. I mean, what, what is the, the preflop normally? It's about, what, about 70% chance you're going to hold up? No, is about 82 to 18 82. against the average random hand. I thought that was just that with a normal pair. The best hand to stand up, actually, if I remember the statistics Jack correctly, 10, is Jack-10 yeah. with suited Jack-10, yeah. but with a different suit than any of the aces. That's right, yeah. I think that's the statistically best hand to stand up. I mean, some of the worst hands you could have, that's ace-7, for example, against aces. Yeah. You're pretty dead. You can't hit, especially if you have it off suits, you won't be able to hit them flush realistically. You can't hit the straights with it realistically. Yeah, we had one Latvian player playing yesterday, and he made it through to day two. Uh, so Ilzi in the chat box is saying that uh, Dinas Talkans or Takans uh, from Latvia. Yeah. So she's following him, or they're following him. Sorry. And he's playing tomorrow. So well Excellent. done. He made yeah. it in day two. Yeah. Well nice done. to hear. Well, we wish him luck, along with the rest of about a hundred players that will be playing tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. How many players qualified last night? Was it forty-five? Was there or forty-seven? Forty-seven. 145 starters and 47 yep. made it through day two, into day two. And now the poker room behind us is pretty full at the moment. Like we said, not only the main events, but also some of the high roller tournament I think is starting this evening. Or was, was it a deep stack? It's the two day deep stack. Two day deep stack. Yeah. yeah. We just saw our very own uh, Unibet um, colleague, uh, Ward, Ward de Buck. Yes, that's uh, right. He qualified Ward. through the Unibet staff tournament. Um, that they have, um, which gives a, a nice couple of seats away to, to the hard-working team here. 
uh, Ward actually qualified and is now playing in the deep stack as we speak. So well, he deserves some respect for that. So yeah, for absolutely, sure. yeah. Although now level 8 and the blinds are 400, 800 with 100 anti. And as you can see, the 25s have been switched out. The green 25s are gone. Quick recap. Black chips, 100. Red chips, 500. Light blue chips, 1,000. Yellow chips, 5,000. And purple chips, 10,000. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. And as yeah, Dan was saying earlier on, we're going to have the, the plaques probably arriving late on in the play tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. Um, Rectangular if not, white plaques, yeah. 25k. If not tomorrow evening, they will definitely be there for the final table on Sunday. What is the most you ever had in chips, tournament chips, in front of you? Ooh, um, I won a tournament in Vegas one year. Um, and I specifically remember raising a million. That was a great one. You can say uh -huh. I, I raise a million. <laughs> it's just one of those little psychological things. Um, I think I had... Oh, I can't actually remember. Um, it must have been about four or five million chips in front of me at one point. Oh, that's nice. It must and be and I won the tournament. Yeah, uh, there's about 400 players, and um, it wasn't one of the deep stacks. It was actually a, well, it was a deep stack, but it was one of the um, on, on the on the strip rather than the official yeah. Venetian deep stacks. Uh, yeah, uh, 200 dollar entry, and yeah, that's nice. Racing a million. I've never done that. The most I've had in front of me was about three quarters of a million. Right. When I placed third in the Swedish Championship, 2011. That's the biggest stack I've had in front of yeah, me. Yeah, I've always said I'd, I'd love to just have that, that many chips to say I raise you a million. Exactly. Even you know, when, when you watch the World Series and they're nothing. raising you 10 million, it's like, yeah. wow. Exactly. It's the numbers yeah. that impress. Yeah, yeah. I mean, technically, the tournament chips are worth nothing. Yeah, of it's course. It's like Monopoly money. Yeah. But they're just a way of keeping score. But it is impressive. I never raised a million in my life. Wow. <laughs> something, something I've surpassed you with so far. Okay, then. you have. The only thing I have, mind you. You've... Uh, You've got the uh, the number one rotor on on experience. That's for sure. You uh, you played everywhere. You've done virtually everything oh, poker wise. I've, I've been involved in serious poker for twenty years. Now. Yeah, exactly, exactly. One of the stranger experiences I had was playing in Colombia. My wife and I went down to Colombia a couple of years ago, and eventually we wound up in uh, Cartagena, this Indias, which is a city on the north coast in the north. And I was playing at the Casino Rio, and they. They were playing Texas Hold'em. It's the highest game I ever played. It was uh, 10,000, 20,000 limits. Wow. Which is, well, on the other hand, with their money, is ah. about three pounds, six pounds. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds more impressive. <laughs> it does, it sounds fantastic, money. yeah. But funny thing, they did not have a dealer button. There was no dealer button. Instead, it had two brass plaques, very rectangular ones, very oblong ones. And they were stamped with small blind and big blind in Spanish. But, the big blind spoke last in all four betting rounds. Not just before the flop, but also after the flop, after the turn and after the river. So when you're big blind, you actually have position as well? Exactly. Wow. And that took some readjustment. Yeah, think. it would do, yeah. That was very strange. No deal about it. Instead, you had these two oblong brass plaques, small blind, big blind, and the big blind spoke last in all four betting rounds. <laughs> That's a bit of an audit. I know that if you go to the casinos in Madrid, usually you will play Texas Hold'em anti-clockwise instead of clockwise. And that's right. a specialty for Madrid. Don't ask me why. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm doesn't make much difference. I'm used to that because I played a lot of Mahjong. I played two world championships and two European championships yep. in Mahjong. And there the turn order is anti-clockwise. But still in poker it's a bit strange to play anti-clockwise. Well, all it is very strange, strange yeah. yeah. So how do you find yourself just um, randomly playing poker in Colombia? Well, what happened <laughs> is my wife's daughter, she was down as an exchange uh, assistant professor at one of the universities. So we went down there, eventually after a couple of days, we picked up her, we picked up her boyfriend, Colombian boyfriend at the time, and we drove around. And we wound up in Cartagena de Indies. Colombia is not, not your tourist country because you have... The drug cartels, yeah. the riddle in the country, and in the east you have this FAR, I think it's called. That's a revolutionary movement, right? Which you should stay away from if you don't want to be kidnapped. Yeah, of course. So there's yeah. virtually no tourism in Colombia. On the other hand, it's people are very friendly. 
especially when they found out you were a tourist. <laughs> so no complaints about the whole experience, actually. No, it's good. It's one of the continents that I've not actually been to yet. Not been to South America. Now that's the only time I've been to South America. I haven't right. seen Argentina or Brazil or any of those countries. I'd love to go, but just Colombia in the north. It I was think as an Englishman, country. then I should really stay away from Argentina for the time being. Yeah, exactly. Uh, especially with what's Speaking going on, obviously, with Falkland the Falkland Islands. Islands yeah. So we best stay away from there for a while. Uh, pretend you're an American if you come over or something like that. Until uh, Ms. Kirchner is, is ousted from Parliament. Because at the minute she's causing a bit of a oh, yeah, uproar, yeah, isn't yeah, she? Yeah, isn't okay. she? Yeah. In that case, you should lie low, probably. Yeah, I'm not going to Argentina just yet. <laughs> no, you're not just yet. Okay, I have to say that's one of the advantages carrying a Swedish passport. We're you're friendly, friendly with everyone. Neutral. Yeah, yeah, we're friendly with neutral. Yeah, we're friendly with everyone. Yeah. Yeah, Bolo's in the chat box saying that uh, Matthias Mulhausen was on the feature table there. He was. He was just coming to say hello to a couple of his friends. He isn't on the feature table just yet. No, just passing by and wishing people good luck. I have no doubt we will see him sometime this weekend on the feature table, though. Yep, previous winner of Univet Open and two other final table plays. Yep, he's, uh, I think he was sixth in Copenhagen. And runner-up in, runner in Troy, yeah. Was. Respectable showing in any case, that's for sure. We are down to 101 surviving players, according to the monitors. Which means that the uh, average chip stack is now 33k, approximately. So, soon we'll break the 100 mark. Remember, 168 started today, day 1B. We have a left-handed dealer at the table. All this feels odd. I mean, technically, there is no difference, but all this feels odd. Having a left hand, you know. <laughs> You're used to having them doing it with the right hand all the time. I'm a bit strange where that comes to, to mind. Um, I, I write with my, with my right hand. Yeah. But when I play tennis or play cricket, I use my left hand. Interesting. So I change my whole position. And when I play football, I can play with both feet. When you have a computer Strange. and you have to use a mouse, yep. right hand or left hand? Um, left. Interesting. When I open a bottle top, um, I hold it with my right and not with my left. Uh -huh, so you seem to but be a bit ambitious. When I drink, I drink on my left. All right. But when I write, I write with my right. <laughs> because I previously always used a mouse with my right hand, but a couple of years ago I broke my wrists, my right okay. wrist. So I couldn't use it. It was in a cast yep. for a couple of weeks. So I had to switch over and use the mouse with my left hand. Yeah. And strangely enough, it felt so natural that afterwards I kept it. So I'm using the mouse with my left hand these days. But I found out just by accident that it felt more comfortable and more natural. Otherwise, I'm a right-handed person. I do pretty much everything else. I've right seen hand. these uh, new keyboards you can get as well, where the keyboards are opposite. So uh -huh. you've got your mirror yeah, reversed. So it's the very, very keyboard. strange, yeah. Wow, I haven't seen one of those, but that's kind of interesting. <coughs> ah, so I got um, Matthias's uh, finishing position in Copenhagen wrong. Uh, it was the bear, if you remember. Marek uh, needs weights. Yeah. Bolo's friend. He was actually sixth, so I've asked um, all of where Mario's finished. Uh, sorry, Matthias finished. Okay. I think it was it was either sixth or eighth or something like that. Yeah, something like it that. It was lower down on the table. It wasn't. Yeah, but wasn't still, high up. Yeah. feature table. Still was. a feature table. Sorry, final, final table. Final table, table yeah. 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 And you deserve credit for that. So Paul Walkenberg picks up a few more chips. Is Dan Murario playing today here in Day 1B? I heard he was, but I haven't actually seen him or any photographs of him. No, I haven't seen him as well. He is, yeah. He, our he French colleagues are saying he was. He was, but... Yep. Is he still in? He's still in. Uh, not sure. <laughs> Dana, is Dan Murario still in? 
Okay, we think that Denmark area. All right, we think that Denmark area is still in. He's won the Universe Open twice, as you remember. The previous time was in St. Martin in the West Indies in December. But presumably it's out there in the crowd somewhere. We can't see all the tables, unfortunately. He's still in. Okay, we got it confirmed. That's He's sitting good news. out there. Good news, yeah. Yeah, that's from our rover reported Dana. Going by the name Dana Fish in the reports in the blog. So, Dan Murray is still in with a fighting shot, with a fighting chance. That sounds good. I'll go out and take a photo of him, Graham. I'll be right back. Yeah, no problem. Just for the record. No worries. Okay, so we have a pretty interesting hand developing at the moment. 638 at Diamonds, King of Hearts. Haha, I've got Natalie joining me again. Woohoo! <laughs> so, what is happening there? Yeah, we've got uh, Paul Valkenberg's involved in the hand at the moment. Yes. Uh, almost 12,000 in the pot. Paul's going to make the, the opening bet here mm -hmm. after the King of Hearts is on the, on the turn. Yes. He's up against uh, Bourgeois, one of our French players. Is the first time, or have they been? Um, Paul hasn't played very many hands, to be honest. Um, so I don't think they've they've fought that much. But Paul's getting a lot of respect off the table, which is good. Okay. And he's now up to over forty thousand in chips. So. Mm. Pretty and good. Are there any, uh, any other players who have like a decent stack there? Yeah, there's a couple. Um, a couple over sixty thousand at the moment. Um, I'll get the exact figures for you. Yeah, we've got uh, Paul Valkenberg's on 52,000 at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, Arsani uh, Meshkarov, I think it is. Mm -hmm. He's uh, he's up over 60,000 now as well. Um, the rest of them are fairly small, or just average stacks. Yeah, Soren Blanner's only got 7,000 left at the moment. And Ol Zoe um, Arcadius has actually got uh, 16,000. He was on one of our final table lists uh, a, few, a few events back, so... Just saying that's one of the best Unibet tops we've ever seen. Is it? Paul, Paul Valkenberg's uh, yeah. Unibet uh, tracks your top. Fantastic. So how's everything going, Natalie? Everything is going well. Um, we're preparing already tomorrow for the party, which yep. is upstairs at the casino. Yep. So it's going to be very nice. Doing now some preparations and... Um, in the meanwhile, I love to see the live action, so I'm hanging here around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Blender is in the big line. That's right, yeah. But he falls. You're going to raise from uh, Meshi Yako. Mm -hmm. So, we've got a flop here of uh, Jack 8 for Rainbow. There's Paul Valkenberg there stacking his chips up. Meshiakov with the uh, sunglasses on that makes the bet of 1600. And Bourgeois makes the call. King of Diamonds on the turn. 
do we know where Mesher is coming from, Germany? Um, I think he's Lithuanian. Okay. Or, or Russian, one of the two. I can find out for you. Yeah, he's actually Russian. Arsenev Mesher Yakov. I don't know if he qualified online or not, or... I don't know by heart, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't mind. Oh, no, that's fine. Dan is coming back, so I'm giving the word to Dan. And i see you guys later. Nice speaking to Natalie, see you soon. That was uh, Natalie, our head of events here at Unibet. Well, back again. Thanks for covering for me, Natalie. Just want to go out into the crowd and take a few photos for the blog, tomorrow's blog. We were commenting on that in Copenhagen. You never ever see yourself without a camera well I always carry one of my Every, yeah, exactly. that's Every, right everywhere you go Dan exactly even when I fly to Hong Kong wherever I mean yeah, uh, I want to record you. what's happening <laughs> plus if you carry a camera you will spot those wonderful signs or advertising things or s things happening in the streets and yeah. if you don't have a camera you can't catch them I saw a wonderful thing in Hong Kong last year, when I was there in October. I walked by a backstreet restaurant and they were advertising what they had. You know, a very yeah. simple way of doing it up on the wall. And they had sort of attempted an English translation of some of the uh, dishes on offer. Yeah. And one of them was combination of balls. That's <laughs> literally what it said in English, nothing else. And it struck me, that's the perfect breakfast you want if you're going to play poker. <laughs> combination of balls, yes. Yeah, I need a big combination of balls, please. <laughs> In any case, here we are again. And we're now down to 97 players. Almost half of round eight is over. Blinds 400, 800, and to 100 still. And like I said, 97 plays left. And we're looking to go down to 50 or 55, approximately. Yeah, try and maybe have a, a 100 players coming back tomorrow, play down to the final nine. Yeah, the long slog. Yeah. And there will be 36 prizes awarded altogether. Oh, has it been recharged? It's a different one. It's been recharged and it's made smaller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They keep us a combination of iPads coming over here so we can yeah. follow the action a bit more closely. Here we have the chip count at the feature table at the moment. Well, Disappearing just as quickly. <laughs> yeah, I can tell you at the moment um, our chip leader at the table is uh, Arseny uh, Meshiakov from Russia. He has 55,000 chips. Paul Vattenberg is not too far behind. He's got 51,650. 51? Yeah, so he's been gradually building up. He's uh, gained 10,000 in the last hour. Yeah, I've seen him win a hand before there with... Uh, he didn't actually show his cards again, but he won another 5,000 chips just by... I haven't seen him show a hand yet. So no, I've seen him for one and a half hours. I've never seen a showdown yet. I don't think we've seen a showdown with Paul yet, so... That's the way to win a poker tournament. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, never showing your hand. Yeah. And Soren uh, Blanner is actually shoving all in at the moment, all the time. Uh, well, to quote poker star Gus Hansen, who said that when you play poker, cards are just a backup. <laughs> <laughs> they are indeed. I'm a great collector of quotes, especially gambling and poker quotes. Yeah. I think that's why I enjoy uh, commentating with you a lot, Dan, because uh, you've obviously got a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience anyway, but the, some of the things that you actually mentioned as well, it's actually really interesting to hear about. And when you're commentating on poker, we can always just sit here and we can read about the cards and we can read the table and we can tell you what's going on. But you want to hear stories, you want to hear about yeah, people's experiences. Yeah, background things, poker. Yeah, which course, I'm very yeah. fond of as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. I, I enjoy that myself. Absolutely. He seems a bit frustrated, that guy in the blue shirts. 
Yeah, Mr. 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 Cars. What's his name? Um, Cars. We don't have a Again. name on here. Sounds Danish. Sure. Yeah. I'm trying to find that for us. Let's see if we can log on to the Hendemob database once again. Cars. There were about 49 of them. Let's see if you can find it. Could be uh, the only one with Cars as a surname is Bartel Cars. And there's no picture available, unfortunately. No. All right. Might be him. Listen, and do we have it here? No, it says player seven. Aha, uh -huh, just player seven. Yeah. That's pretty anonymous. Who won the world championships? Player seven. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a very robotic way of doing it. <laughs> well, it could almost be just as good as uh, Latvia. Who won the charity event? I carried. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Mr. Kerry. So we got an all in here, Nicole. <coughs> and we lose Soren Blanner. Ace Jack against Jack King. Soren was pushing very light most of the times. He did actually have a nice hand there. Uh, not good enough, unfortunately. So another one bites the dust, Soren Blanner, which means should we're down be. to, well, 96. It should yeah. then be. Or 95, possibly. We'll see when the next update comes on the big screen. And the game goes on. Somehow, at times, it almost feels like an insult. Yeah. You leave the table, you're not <laughs> no longer part of the company in the festivities, and the game goes on. It must be horrible to leave the, the feature <laughs> table as well, though, because you're in the spotlights and then exactly. standing up. Exactly, everybody's on the stage watching in front you. Of everybody else as well. Yeah. You carry the shame in front of all your friends and family. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's not over dramatize it. <coughs> So guys, is anybody watching at the moment? What are you doing um, in your in your house? Are you, are you playing poker yourself? Are you, uh, are you trying to qualify for Riga? Yes, uh, how's it going in the free roll this evening, by the way? You might as well tell us, because we can't be log finished. into it yeah. here from here. I think the free roll must be finished, because uh, Bolo went out in ninth. Ah, oh, in nearly that case. an hour ago now. So Should be finished, okay. I think it might be finished now, yeah. Don't forget, at 8 o'clock, 8 p.m. Central European time tomorrow, there will be another free roll. And if you follow this live stream, you will be getting the secret password as well. So. That's right. I'll be giving the password out um, around about 2 o'clock, 2.30 in the afternoon. All right. Um, when we go live And we again. keep repeating it, of course. That's right. So follow that one. And as we said, all the way through the rest of this week, and we'll probably keep saying it as well, if you do qualify via a satellite for, uh, for Unibet Open Riga, let us know. Let us know how you qualified. If it was through the free roll, then even better. We'd love to hear from you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We'd love to hear that. It could be a rags to riches story. Or vice versa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could be that bad. We have this player, Isildur One, Victor Bloom, Swedish player. I mean, he has these wild and huge swings every week. If you follow him in the poker media, one weekend, let's say, he's the biggest winner of the week. And, and the, the next, next the week, you'll say, he lost 4.7 million on crazy, Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he takes these enormous swings, but on the whole, he's ahead. Yeah, it would have given me ulcers if, player, if yeah. I tried to play the dose levels, which I could not handle. It would have given me ulcers. Yeah, the, the, the swings are too just crazy, aren't they? Anyway, down to 95 players, according to the monitors. 168 starters, down to 95. Which means that there's now approximately 35k, the average stack. Yeah. Blind still, 400, 800, 190, and 28 and a half minutes left. I was reading... Um online yesterday about uh, one of our English players, um, Chris Moorman. Moorman won on yeah. Stars. Yeah. Uh, he's just a few thousand dollars away now from breaking the $10 million in prize money oh, online. Wow. wow. Which is massive. $10, Ten million, million dollars. dollars online. Not live, online. Online, yeah. Online yeah, prize that, That's accumulated winnings, of Yeah, course. accumulated winnings, yeah. And not, not, not net, but... Uh, no, it's not the net worth, but still, it's, uh, it's that a record number, is there people I don't think there's him? anybody anywhere near him. I think no. uh, this is, this is multi-table, this is not cash, this is multi-table winning. Yeah. So, yeah, he's obviously been one of the best uh, online professionals for, for yeah, a Yeah, but we are talking now. about somebody who takes a plus in the long run, right? 
Oh yes, absolutely. In that uh, case. Yeah. I mean, if you have 10 million in winnings and 15 million dollars in losses. <laughs> yeah, you're not doing very well. No, exactly. <laughs> I'm glad Paul Valkenberg is building up. It's 51k, that's nice. I spoke to him after the first two levels and he was down to something like 16k. And here is solid yeah. 51k compared to the average stack of slightly over 35k. Well, Carlos has raised the tier to 1700. Paul's again 3 bet to 43. So he's not actually being asked any questions at the moment, Paul. He's, he is the one actually asking the questions of players. Yeah. Do you want to play? You want to tangle with me, baby? Yeah. And that's always the best situation to be in. Be the man asking the question, not the man being asked the question. That's a good way of putting it. I never heard that before. Right. Being the man asking the questions. That's good. Yeah. I'll keep that one in mind. <laughs> I'll put that in my blog. Referring to you, of course, Graham. Ah, thank you very much. You have to put a, a post up though saying something, about, something in English, because I'll just not be able to read it as usual. Oh <laughs> <laughs> well, it won't won't be on the super blog. It won't will be in my Unibet blog. No but worries, the longer ones. <laughs> but that's a good way of putting it. We have you a format all in and a call. All right. He was asked a question in turn. Paul Valkenberg. Paul has ace, ace king, king, cars, ace queen. So this could lead Paul to a very big stack if he uh, avoids a queen here. Oh! Oh no! He hits the queen immediately. Oh. Ten. Yeah. Ten or a king. Doesn't get it. We lose. Paul loses 20,000 chips there. Ooh, that must have hurt. hurt. That must have hurt. He gives a thumbs up. He did up. the right thing. Of course he did the right thing. Yeah, absolutely. He yeah. was a nine to one favorite in that hand. But what can you do? No, nothing at all. It's just one of those things. Ah, oh, that hurts. I don't know which is worse. Seeing the queen on the flop or on the river. Probably on the river. But that must have hurt. Yeah. A great deal. But Paul, ever, ever the professional, puts his thumb oh, up yeah, says, absolutely. well done. He takes it in stride. Take it on the chin and walk along, yeah. And as we do that, we get a change of dealer as well. Paul is now thinking, why couldn't you change the dealer five minutes ago? <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't have happened. Takes it on the chin. Takes it on the chain. Back in Las Vegas a couple of years ago, I was sharing the elevator with two American gentlemen, middle-aged. And I was listening to their conversation as we were going down in the elevator. And one of them said to the other, well, sometimes you've got to be a man and take it in the ass. <laughs> I still remember <laughs> that phrase. <laughs> and I was wondering exactly what were they referring to. Could be poker. Hey, <laughs> who knows? Who knows, exactly. <laughs> but that's a phrase that's stuck in mind, I would say that. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, poor Paul, he did the right thing, he took the call, and he got outflopped. We have these little iPads here, and I keep getting a little notification coming up about something about Dragon City. I wonder what the guys in the back are doing during their off time. They're Dragon they're City? playing Dragon City by the sounds of it. I know Dragon Dice, which is a Hong Kong East gambling game, which I own, actually, in my collection, but Dragon City sounds like... Either slots, glorified slots, yeah, or some kind of, well, online game of some kind. I don't know. You've been given some new dragons in Dragon City, guys. There you go. Another hundred food for you. Oh well, we'll see. That's a mystery of the moment. Let's see who's been playing Dragon City. Probably computer game or some kind. Yeah, it will be. Yeah. All in for 12.2. Ruyo. Folds over the chorus. I'm sure has the money to call it. Yeah, he's up to 42.8k now. Uh, after winning that 21k from Paul. Yeah, oh, that hurt. must have hurt. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, he folds. Meshi Yakov, our Russian friend. Takes another 10.5 to call, but no, no, that's a go. 
That's a go. So Ruyo made the brave all in move and takes it down. Well, it was a short stack, you gotta make moves like that. Yeah, absolutely. Especially with the blinds up to 400, 800. 23 minutes left, down to 92 players at the moment. Down to 92 out of 168 starters. Let's have a look. Uh, we've been asked the question, are there any Danish guys playing today? Oh yes, there are a number of them. Quite a few, yeah. I have to say that the Danes, the Swedes and the Dutch are all well represented at Univid Open. Yeah. I think we just lost a, a, a Dane as well, haven't we, in Soren? Um, yeah, Soren Blanner. Yeah, Soren Blanner. He got busted just out from out. the feature table about 10 minutes ago. Yeah. But there are a few more in the fields, definitely. I know that, so I looked through the accounts of day 1A and there were plenty of Danes. Don't worry. You're still in the running. Any other new and interesting things people are writing in? Domingos wants to know how you're getting 9-1 to one, uh, being ahead with AK versus Ace-Queen. I don't think you remember the math exactly, but if you have the same high cards, but different low cards, it's approximately 9-1. to one. There you go. If you go to cardplayer.com, cardplayer.com, and look for poker tools, you will find a simulator where you can type in the cards, the whole cards, and if you wish to flop and turn, and you can see exactly who will win the hand, who has the biggest chance of winning it. So you can type in exactly the situation, choosing the right cards, and you can compare hands. Cardplayer.com and look for poker tools. And you can do the math yourself. Yeah, just typing in that. You just had the explanation up down there. So if you're ever in a hand where you wonder what, what were your chances of winning or losing or whatever, just remember the cards, go to cardplayer.com, look for poker tools, find Texas Hold'em, type it in. And you can go with Omaha as well if you want. Just watching the, the French commentators going mad at the moment, they're, they're jumping them around and I think the French basketball team has just beaten the, the Spanish basketball team. Aha! Uh -huh. 75-72. That was a close game then? Yeah. I believe, anyway, from what I can see. We've had a few cheers and a few hands in the air. So, we got the blinds 800, 400, 100 running anti. We are 20 minutes left in level 8. And still 92 players left. But that is going down inexorably. Yeah, we will see obviously a, a lot of bust outs within the next three levels. Uh, players trying to uh, gather more chips uh, for day two. Those short stacks getting blinded out. Yeah, if you want to make day two, you might as well gamble for it and make it with a big stack. Or yeah. a reasonable stack at least. I mean, making it to day two with... 8 or 10k or something like that. That yeah. feels meaningless. Well, let's see who comes closest. There was, is the betting still open? The size of the smaller stack uh, left for day two. Let's have a look. <laughs> Would be interesting. You bet the slightly lower the number than I did. I bet 3,100 or 3,200. And you had 2,000 something. Let's have a look. Um, Yeah, end of level 8, which is another 20 minutes to go. Okay, if you want to put in the bets, there you go. So yeah, I made a bet of... Oh, it was on there. Let's have a look. Yeah, you said 3,100. I think I did. Yeah. 3,200. No, 3,100. 3,100, yeah. And you bet slightly lower, 2,000 something. And there are a number of them. And it's up on Facebook if you're wondering where exactly the betting is going on. Somebody's betting 22.60, which is impossible, and 44.25. Remember, the bet has I to... I love these ones where you get a 8.219. Yeah, ridiculous. Where, where are you, where you've are you getting playing, the line chips from? You've been playing too much <laughs> online, babe. <laughs> it has to end in an even 100, remember that. Anything else is impossible, considering the lowest denomination at the moment, which is 100. Sharpen up, guys. You can't have anything otherwise. It has to end in two zeros. 
the number you get. Sharpen up and get real. Yeah, so those of you guessing 3-3-3-3 three, 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 and things like that. It's That's ridiculous. That's never comes from playing too much online. <laughs> we can bet all those odd numbers. I wish they would fix software, actually, so you can bet realistic numbers. Not 9 to 1, they say. He says it's 69 it's 61 to 26. 26. The rest is the tie. Oh, the yeah, of course, in this particular situation, since they're so close, we land in a tie, that's right. There will be straight opportunities. It depends on the suits, of course, as well. Okay, thanks for correcting us. We appreciate I think that. Paul has gone all in here. Has he got the call? Yeah, he has. So Paul is all in for 30,000. King 10 against Queens. Oh, okay, Paul. that's a Royon. King 10 suited. Oh, oh, two diamonds. Hey, he oh, hits. for Paul. Yeah. So we lose uh, Royon. Zero, Rio. Zero. And Valkenberg picks up 14,700. That could have been nasty, though. Oh, yeah, it could have been. Another diamond on the board. It would have been a deep yeah. hit for him. Yeah. That would have been terrible. Okay, some justice being meted out, at least. It's always good to see good cards holding up. Doesn't yeah, it who means the to is. up to sli something like 45 at the moment. Yeah, 44, 8, 3, 8. I don't know how okay. that happens, but... Okay. So Where does the 8, 3, 8 come from? I have no idea. <laughs> So we have to bid a fond adieu to Mr. Rouillot. See who his replacement will be. Yeah. Now Vorm is here. 16 minutes left of level 8. Still 92 plays. And remember, after level 8, we'll be playing round 9 and round 10. So, all together. 10 levels this evening. Yeah, 10 levels to yesterday, 10 levels today. Probably nine levels tomorrow, depending on how fast the situation goes. We are going to be playing down to a final table of nine tomorrow night. So we're, we're thinking of nine levels at the moment. But that could be seven, it could be eight, it could be could be 12 or 13. I presume depending on the situation. Cause well, if they insist on playing down to the nine, it could be a long evening. Or, on rare occasions, they actually have been continuing the play on the final day, playing down to the final nine, and then yeah. commencing with the final table. It depends, of course. Yeah, I suppose it all depends on how many players are left, really, doesn't it? If there's, if there's only 15 players left at the end of level nine tomorrow, they'll probably play on <coughs> until they get down to the final nine. Yeah. If, there's, if there's 25, 30 players left, then I don't think they will. They'll probably play down to 18, I'd imagine, and have two tables of nine. Probably. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Depends on how fast it goes tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. But you have this standard structure these days of the Univer Open Tournament. Everybody knows what to expect. Yeah. And one hour levels are fairly civilized, I'd say that. Yeah, I, I like one hour levels. It's, uh, it gives you a lot of play, really. And you know where you are. You're not having to worry about going up at level no. 25, 30 minutes. It's exceptional when you play two-hour levels, like you do in the main event of the World Series of Poker. Yeah, yeah. That is really exceptional. What does the main event start on? Is it 100, 200, or is it 51, or...? <coughs> uh, the main event of yeah. the World Series of Poker. Yes, it's 30,000 starting stack, and it's... Oh, hang on, it's 1,500, I think. It yeah, it's 300 yeah. times the size of the big blind. So it starts right. 51. So you get yeah, 5100 50, for two exactly. hours. Exactly. Yeah. Which is off to a very slow, nice start. Yeah. That's right. 30k starting stack, 5100. 300 times the size of the big blind. So we have a 4, 6, 8, 10. Bourgeois. That sounds almost political in Karl Marx. Laurent Bourgeois. Respectable stack, but average 36.7.
with an eight on the river, so the board is now paired. Whenever you have a straight or a flush, you hate paired boards. Yeah, absolutely. That possible full house chance. Bourgeois bets the 3,000 cars makes the fold. And Laurent Bourgeois adds an extra 5,000 chips to his stack, so... Antoine has said that uh, Alec Barovas is a pure genius. Yeah? He doesn't have very many um, listings on the Hendon mob or anything like that. He's Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, so you just heard Antoine, our French commentator there, uh, mentioning uh, Alec Barovas. Uh, he says he's a great player. Uh, and keep an eye on him, basically. Uh, so All yeah, right, we, we, we should do that. Will. Yeah, absolutely. We should do that. Yeah. I'm glad Paul Walkenberg is working his way back into the game. After that hits, ace king versus ace queen, and he got outflopped. Yeah, that was rather unlucky, wasn't it? I mean, he did have a nice hand straight after with the queens versus tens. Uh, a bit of a sweat on though with the with the diamond draw. Sorry, oh yeah, that sorry. one was with the uh, king ten. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he had to sweat another diamond and the king as well, and there was a possible straight draw as well. Oh, Carmen, hello, how are you? Ten and a half minutes left, and we're down to eighty-six plays. It looks like at the moment. Is that right, Graham? I kind of see from where I'm sat down. It's. Uh, I have to stand up and take a look. Yeah, it looks like 86 players left. Too many players' heads in the way. The media room is starting to fill up a bit round round by us now, isn't it? Absolutely. Plus, we have the bar in the background <laughs> for the <laughs> that media that people help, and yeah, some of the a bar, Yeah, that's why it's filling up. <laughs> they don't want to work; they want beer. <laughs> <laughs> Who would play in a movie about your life? It says on Twitter. Our players at the Welcome Drinks gave us the thoughts. Well, so that's on, on the YouTube videos. Yeah, uh, I got yeah. the question as well, and I answered Chuck Norris. Chuck Be Norris? Because actually, look at him. We have a reasonable <laughs> resemblance, physically, he and I. We both have a beard, and we both have lined faces by now, and so on. So. Chuck Norris is actually fairly close to me. Yeah. Or vice versa. Depending on your viewpoints. <laughs> Bujina. So we've got a flop of seven eight queen with two hearts. Bujina and Bourgeois. Wonder which of them will be the happiest at the end. Bourgeois bets out 5k. Bujina, I see. Little thinking to do. Having a big thing here, he is. Yeah, he lets it go. And, uh, so, Bourgeois picks it up. Yeah, Laurent Bourgeois, another 6,000 out of his stack. So he's now over 50,000. He shows the Ace of Diamonds. 
the other car did not elect to show. Could it well have been the Ace of Hearts? Could have been? Yeah, we'll never know. Oh, another mystery. <laughs> so who would play you in, a, in the movie yeah. of your life? I'd love to think someone likes of uh, De Niro or Pacino, <laughs> but I'm more along the lines of Danny DeVito, I think. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why not? No, you're much taller than Danny DeVito. <laughs> Oh, sorry, he's a really short guy. A little bit more hair at the moment <laughs> as well. <laughs> but actually, he's a very good actor. I like watching him. He is, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 86 players. So we're close to cutting it down to half the field. Yeah. From 168 down to 86. Well, that's right. The average stack at the moment is 39,000. So, yeah, once it hits the 40,000, yep. then that's half of the... the woods to 40. Yeah, yeah. Seven minutes left to round eight. Blinds, 400, 800. Anti, 100. 39K average. Seems like Paul Valkenberg is playing it very smoothly and, uh, well, no, not too many risks being taken. I've seen him show two hands so far, ace-king and queen-queen. 6-4 king rainbow. Smedman, which country is he from? What was his name, sorry, Dan? Smedman. Per Smedman. Smedman? He sounds Swedish. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Smed means smith, like a blacksmith. So smith. If, if it is that guy. And man is a coarse man. Zero results. No results And at all. Per is a very common first name in Sweden as well. Yeah. Sounds like a Swedish guy, Per Smedman. Definitely Scandic. Guys in the chat box, who would you like to play yourself in the movie of your life? Who would you uh, who would you choose to play in a movie of your life? Still 86 players left, four and a half minutes. Down to level eight. On average, every hour, when you play nine-handed, you're looking at between 25 and 30 hands per hour. Which means, basically, you have to take something like, well, let's say 35 to 40 decisions per hour. Most of them will be fold, but yeah. still, I'd say anywhere between 30 and 40 decisions per hour when you're playing nine-handed. Yeah, I thought so, yeah. I mean, um, you normally get about 40 hands an hour, isn't it, roughly, on a professionally dealt poker table, live? No, it's slower than that. Do you think it's slower, yeah? yeah, yeah. 
I wouldn't have thought that was lower. I would have thought maybe 40 might have been the average. No, I mean, I've been sitting in so many tournaments and timing there. Notice that it's coming by for the third time, the dealer button or something like that. I'd say if, if I had to pick an average in a big tournament, it's 30 hands per hour. Oh, okay. When you play 900 or 10 hundred. 30 hands per hour. I mean, some of them will go down quickly. Some of the races, everybody else folds. But every now and then you will get those hands. We'll play out for several minutes. We have three people involved. Some of them will think for a very long time with difficult decisions. We'll go on to the flop and the turn and the river. So it's yeah, yeah. a fair average is actually about 30 hands per hour, nine or ten hundred. So we've got a hand developing here with four players, all with nice chip stacks, 50,000 or so. Unusual to see four players involved at the same time. Yeah, with very similar chip stacks. But Bourgeois takes that down as well. Once more. Yeah. And now he's up to 57,000, so... And again, Paul Valkenberg seems to be working his way back in after taking that hit with the ace-king versus ace-queen. Giza says he would have Mark Wahlberg playing him. All right, that's what you look like. I suppose you're picking him on looks alone. Or? Or just a terrible actor. <laughs> <laughs> one of the two. Well, pick one. Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. Okay, any other options, ladies and gentlemen out there? Who do you want to play you in the movie about your life? Don't forget, we've got just over a minute remaining. Um, you can still put in a guess for the lowest chip stack, the size of the lowest chip stack at yep. the end of the day. We've got yeah. a minute, minute and 30 seconds remaining. And there's a small goodie bag if you come closest. Yeah, you get a Unibet um, pair of sunglasses, the new Nets, uh, with the Can logo on the front of them, uh, a mobile phone holder, a T-shirt, and a pack of plastic playing cards, which are very nice indeed. Absolutely, so, they're very good. Yeah. If you want to make a guess, what will the lowest chip stack have at the end of day one? And remember, it has to end in two zeros. Don't yep. give us anything ending in one nine or something. Like that. Be realistic. Yep. The smallest denomination in chips is 100 at the moment. So it has to end in two zeros. All right, there you have it. 45 seconds left. Hurry up, ladies and gentlemen. It's on Facebook. That's right. Facebook, Unibet Open, and on Twitter as well. You can uh, mention us on uh, at Unibet Open or... Hashtag Unibet can. You've only got about 30 seconds to go. Do you know what the correct name is for an Octothorpe? Sorry, for a hashtag. It's Octothorpe. Octothorpe. Yeah, act Octothorpe, ending with RP. That's the correct name for that particular symbol. It's an Octothorpe. Okay. Yeah, it has eight pointing out like that. Yeah, yeah. Hence the name Octo. Mm -hmm. And round eight is over, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, that Two ends the betting at the moment. We're into round nine. 500, 1,000 blinds with 100 anti still. And right now it says, yeah, still 86 plays left out of the 168. Average is slightly over 39k. First prize, 100,000 euros. Somebody will be writing that check on Sunday evening. Yeah, we got a hundred thousand for the winner, sixty-nine thousand eight hundred for second, and it yes corrected the number for remaining players down to eighty-three, so we passed the halfway mark. Excellent. So the average chip stack is just over 40,000? Yeah, they just corrected it as I was looking at the table. And for anybody back home complaining about the cold weather and the rain and everything else... Why aren't you in Cannes? Just to let you know, tomorrow it's going to be 25 degrees here in Cannes. <laughs> ah, yeah, no, you can walk in t-shirts. Yeah, absolutely. And short pants from the hotel to the casino back. <laughs> No complaints at all. The weather will be quite different in Riga in December for the next Univet Open. But remember, you can qualify for that one. There will be another free roll coming up tomorrow evening. We'll give you the secret password tomorrow. And on Sunday evening, you have the final, the 275 euro final. 
with a number of seats to Riga. So we have a three-way, queen-queen, ace-king, king-king. Wow. And he hits the ace immediately. And that's the end of that. Well, Zoe travels up. Wow. Arcadius Al Zawi up to 48,500. So, the right cards and the right flop at the yeah, right time. Absolutely, yeah. You needed that one. That's for sure. I don't like the way he he slammed the table though when the ace come. It's a bit disrespectful maybe. It is a bit disrespectful. You can the understand people having passion, but uh, yeah, but the next time it could be you on the receiving end of the stick, that one. So always be polite, always be a lady or gentleman when you're at the table. Don't load it all over the competition. Well, there was a side pot as well over there, as we could see. Yeah, they're just working that one out. Uh, Bujana looks like he's won an extra 25,000 chips here. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh. Did he have them covered? That's the key. But, uh, it's going to be interesting. They're yeah. really measuring up the chip stacks here and counting everything off exactly. But in any case, Bourgeois is... He's got a hundred chips left according to our system here. A hundred left? In one chip. He has the ante, and that's it. Does he have 100 left? If he makes the miracle come back after this, that'll go down in history books. That is for sure. Uh, just looking at the, the chips now at the moment. Well, Zoe is obviously tweeting his, uh, his hand result there. So he owns a travel agency, wow. I wonder if he can get us some cheap flights to Vegas, Bolo. What do you think? You can ask him for us. Send him a message. Can you get us some, uh, some cheap seats to Vegas? I'll buy you a beer if you can get us a cheap seat. So I think Bourgeois is still in, just. How much does he have in the way of chips? I'm really interested in this moment. But that was a nice triple up. Yeah, absolutely. For all three. Yeah, he's actually got quite a bit. He's got 8,400 left, so... Okay, in that case, if it was yeah. 8,400, it was more than we thought. Obviously, the, uh, the chip counts that we do have, um, they're, they're, they're automated, basically. <coughs> so sometimes, uh, when, the, when they go over the line, sometimes the system might not pick them up. So we do apologize if the chip counts are slightly wrong, but we are trying to bring you the best accurate service we can. Yes, we're always trying to do that. Just been told uh, of Bolo in the chat box. Uh, Mr. Uh, Alzoi was a former activist of solidarity and is now the owner of a travel agency. Aha! Solidarity, that has a very positive connotation for me. That was the movement that eventually brought down the Communist Party in Poland. Well, honors to him. I yeah, absolutely, yeah. So he brought down the communists and then he opened the travel agency so people can come and <laughs> exactly. see him. Now he's playing poker. <laughs> 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 All in the day's work. Yeah, why not? <laughs> but I'm sure there are many people here with interesting background stories. Yeah, no doubt. If you walked around and did deep interviews. 
Well, my current day job, Dan, I'm actually dispatching um, and helping with the emergency calls in the UK. Aha! Uh-huh. Uh, the, the medical calls. We work for NHS yeah. Direct. All right. And we do uh, basically getting calls through from the public if they're ill or if they're having yeah. any problems. Please send an ambulance. Yeah, we get an ambulance out for them and uh, arrange doctor's appointments, things like that. So. Talk about a highly responsible job. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty interesting as well. It's, it's a responsible job. It's interesting. There's and a lot of yeah. drama involved, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So yet again, it involves <coughs> more talking, <laughs> non-stop talking. You have to be good at handling people who are very nervous at that moment and very yeah, fraught that's right. Absolutely, with yeah. tension and everything. And there we have another all-in. That is Bourgeois. Uh, Bourgeois, yeah. Well, he was a short stack and he was moving in for his remaining 8,300. We did have a raise from uh, Bougina as well, so yeah, there was and a very high calls. chance. Yeah, there's a high chance he's going to get called here. Yeah, it's probably with ten. Two of them, one of them at least, will be calling. Yeah. Since they committed quite a lot of chips already. Remember, the blinds are 500, 1000 with 100 anti. And we're into level 9, about almost 10 minutes into level 9. Yeah. And we will be playing a full 10 levels this evening. No ultra with folds, back to Bujina. Yeah, I think uh, as Bujana folded already, and no, yeah, he is now. And oh, back to Smear, right? And he folds as well. Wow. He won that one by moving all in. It was only 6,000 to call, though. That was a bit strange, really. Well, well two, maybe two the others, the they could be gambling with light holdings. Yeah, but if you've only got 8,000 chips behind you, you could be gambling with anything. I know that, but... Yeah. It's probably How much has Smedman got? How much does he have? Um, I missed that one. Just a minute. You have yeah, it? he's got forty-six thousand chips. Another six thousand? Yeah, but he could be gambling lightly. He could be holding ten eight suited or something like yeah, that. He didn't want to six, commit. Six to win twenty though. Yeah, but still, still. That was probably some explanation behind that one. Yeah, no, no doubt, no doubt. But he called the initial raise as well though, so. Yeah, I know, but he was calling. Calling still. light, yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, it was a min race and a call. You yeah. don't need much to call a min race, actually. No, no. It's pure speculation. <laughs> to put it in stockbroker terms, you're simply investing in a highly volatile market. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to put it that way. Yeah. Anything else in the chat box? Uh, no, not no. since Bolo mentioned that. Um, About the solidarity activists. Yeah. Come on, you guys and gals listening out there, give us some interesting things to talk about. <laughs> Bolo, what did you have for your tea? What were you eating for dinner tonight? Behind me? Bolo. <laughs> no, I'm uh-huh, asking you're Bolo, on, what did you have for him? Uh-huh, What so did you have for your dinner tonight, Bolo? I didn't beat my dinner, I'm sure. It was an excellent one. Three course dinner at the Le Petit Paris. Queen Deuce 9, Rainbow, that's an uninspiring flop if I ever saw one. Yeah. I had my lunch in the, uh, well, my, my, t- my dinner in the, uh, I think it's called the Up and Down restaurant just across the road there. That sounds very fitting Up. for a poker player. Up and Down, yeah. <laughs> At the crossing of Shaftesbury Avenue in Tottenham Court Road in London, a couple of years back, there used to be a bar called First Out Bar. <laughs> I even took a you photo of their sign. Ten Queen. Sorry, guys, I missed the end there with the, uh, the graphic not showing us the last card. Um, yeah, Ten Queen wins the hand, though, uh, by home. Well, we didn't catch that one, but yeah, unfortunately, we do. Wasn't apologize. wasn't a big piece of drama anyway. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, guys, I, I agree with you in the chat box. I think uh, another 6,000 to win a pot of 20, I think I'd be calling with any two as well. Um, but, yeah, it's one of those situations. You may have been calling extremely light. 6,000 to a, a good player, you don't really want to give Max a chips. I can understand both sides of it, but personally, I think I would have been calling as well, yeah. yeah. You're a follower of the any two will do school. Well, just, just for the odds, really. I mean, um, you've, you've called the raise anyway for another 6,000. <coughs> I don't know. I think I may well have... We might as called. well go through with it. Well, you're not going to be calling 2,000 with... Nothing, with no. Real, not with complete junk. air. Yeah. You're going to have something, uh, you know. Yeah, if it's a suit connector or a, a picture card or... There's no, one thing in wagering 2,000 on your hand and wagering another 8,000 on your hand. Or yeah, another 6,000. Another 6, please. yeah. Yeah, Bolo says he would never fold a 6k to a pot 13k in that situation. Would you put you fold an all in the call, by the way? Yeah, we've got uh, nines against queens. Queens versus nines, and the queens stand queens up. Stand up. So we lose. Well, bravely fought, but not enough. So we lose another one. It's already down to 82 on the board. 82 remaining plays. And that brings us down to 81 after this one. And 47 minutes left of round nine. Yeah, so we lose uh, Bourgeois there. We had 16,000. If you're wondering about the graphics and the feature table, the cards are actually very special ones. They're slightly thicker than ordinary cards when you feel them. And they have a slightly oily feeling to them, actually. They have built-in microsensors, which are printed during the printing process. They're quite expensive cards. And uh, the table is electronically sensitive to these cards, so they can read it. So, of course, if we had everything connected, we could also tell you exactly what the whole cards would be, but since we're not privy to that information, besides, we could not do it in real time. If you look just next to where the cards are at the moment, as well, next to his fingernails, there are a couple of marks on the table where you're Yeah, very to discreet your marks. Yeah. Check them out. You'll see them close to the chips. Yeah. And they're actually supposed to put the cards beside each other, not on top of each other, but beside each other, so the cards can be read by the table. <clears throat> so that's the secret of the graphics. Of course the table knows, quotation marks, exactly which the whole cards are. Well, it still says 82, but we're down to 81 players. 45 minutes left. 500, 1000. Paul Valkenberg is considering whether to call 3,900. Another 3,9. Yes, he does. No, he raises it up. Well, Valkenberg four bets to 12k, putting the pressure back on Bujina, or as Grain would like to put it, now is the man asking the question, instead of being forced to ask, be answer the question. Well, Grain, Valkenberg just four bets to 12,000, putting the pressure back on Bujina. Now Valkenberg is the man asking the question, as you put it. Yeah. And Bujina is the the chip chip captain on the table. He does have the most uh, most chips here. Uh, Paul does have 30k behind him, I believe. He seems a bit tense, Paul Valkenberg, at the moment, looking at his body language. Enormously concentrated and tense. Yeah. I don't know if he looks nervous with the way his fingers are going at the moment. Paul is usually very freewheeling, nice, you know, relaxed yeah, kind of yeah. guy, but I never, rarely seems so tense. 
and focused and concentrated as he is right now. Well, Budina is taking his time to think about it, to evaluate the situation. There is 19,000 in the pot, it's 6,000 more to call. He does push them all in. Paul calls, I believe. Come on, let's see the cards. Ace King for Paul. Is that the Louse's 7 8 I'm looking at? Oh my word. I can't believe it. He hit the straights. And it hits a flush. Paul hits a flush. Is it? Oh wow. Talk about tension. Wow. <laughs> this is what we want. This is, the, this is what we like. He must have hated the flop and loved the turn. Wow. He breaks out into a smile. <laughs> That was brave for betting with Ace King actually suited still. Wow, what a flop though for the seven eight. Oh yeah, the Bujina. I must have what loved flop. that flop and then all the wind got taken out of him by the turn. Well what we have four guys in the commentary box here and all of us kind of jumped on the six seven eight. Yeah, yeah. And eight, nine came down and then when this when the final club came down, I think, whoa. Oh Bujina looks like he's been punched in the stomach. <laughs> he does, yeah, right. yeah. And you saw this already tweeting about it. Yeah, we got Bolo saying, uh, oh my god, we got the Bujina sitting there tweeting away well, now. To be fair, he was trailing the hand, actually. Yeah, he should never have uh, five bet shoved, really. No. Seven, eight. Uh, even three betting with seven, eight suited is a bit risky, I think. But to do that and then to flop the straight, that's. So yeah, that was uh yeah, Bolo, you should never really have five bet with a seven eight there. Um, that was just crackers. Uh, it's, it's an English term. He's <laughs> just crackers. Uh, why why would you do that? You you're getting four bet off a of a highly experienced professional, a Unibet ambassador. He's not going to be you know, four betting you light, to be honest with you. Um, I don't understand that myself, but yeah, very bad. But it gave us some excitement, yeah? Give us some excitement. How much does he have, Paul Walkenberg, Graham, at the moment? Um, does, do we have a number? 85,000. 85,000? Yeah. Wow. He doubled up there, took another 40,000 off him, so... Yeah. 85,000. Hell, that puts him among the chip leaders right now. That's more than twice the average It's not very chip often stick. that you flop the nuts and then by the turn you're drawn dead. <laughs> <laughs> I could not believe that. There's not very many situations where that happens. No, uh, I think he overplayed the 7 8 of hearts, in my opinion. But oh, of course he did, yeah. Yes. It was bad play, to be fair. You should never have 5 bet shoved with 7 8 against Paul. No, it's. Against a newcomer to the table, maybe. He must have felt enormously happy when he saw that <laughs> enormous flop. <laughs> it was a fantastic flop. I mean, there's him. about a one chance in a hundred, roughly, of hitting his straights when you have two cards yeah. like that. <coughs> well, the better hand won in the end. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Graham and I are signing off right now. We're being replaced by two Danish yeah, persons. We're going to have two Danish guys doing some commentary exactly. for us. Exactly, they will the be next, uh, doing the commentary. For the next 40 minutes, um, I will be back for the last hour. I'm going to bid Dan a, a fond farewell. He's going to go out with his wife now and... Yeah, have a few drinks. Yeah, have yes, a couple of on the rest of the evening. On the promenade, yeah. So. Graham, thank you very much. Thank you very much again, Dan. It's always a pleasure. And see Absolutely you tomorrow, lovely. of course. Brilliant. All right, ladies and gentlemen, coming in, they'll have to introduce themselves. We'll see you soon, guys. Thank you.
Okay. Okay. That means you're on air. On air, and we need some help for the technical guys. Hold this button down. Okay. Push that button. Okay, thank you. We're back with the commentary. I'm Thomas. And I'm Brian. Yeah. We'll be your guides for the next 45 minutes to this magnificent Unibit Open event. So, Brian, what level are we on now? Um, blinds are 400, 800 with the anti running at 100. We've got a heads up with a board leading 7-7, seven, seven, a queen, another queen on the turn. And the bottom leads out with 4,200. And the short stack leads tight now. Seems to be a Danish player at the table, but he's not involved in this hand. I'm Yeah. 
Okay, interesting hand, Brian. Small buy and Riri raises 25,000. And we have a three bed of 6,800 chips, and it's to Jelen, 4,200 to call. This is not Jelen, it's the second largest chip stack in the table. And he's so we can afford to call. And he made the call. And let's see the flop. All Interesting hearts. flop. Three hearts. Sorry, two hearts. Uh, two hearts. And two eights and an ace. I think it's three hearts. Yeah. I'm 
And lines are now at um, 500, 1000 with a running AND of 100. No, 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 no. How many players left, Thomas? I think we are down to 80. 80 players out of the original. With 168 entries, we are 80 players left. I think yesterday we had uh, 145 players starting and, and 47 moved to day 2. And 47 players on to day 2. I think the average stack yesterday was uh, 61,700. So we probably have just uh, over 100 players moving on to day two. Yeah, yeah, in total. We'll be playing for approximately one and a half hour more. And Swedish player Kars has made the race, it's 2200 to call. <laughs> The cars called the free bet. Some interesting hands on this table with a uh, tree betting. Yeah, a lot more action goes on nowadays than a few years ago. Here comes the flop. The four and two of diamonds with the nine of clubs. Pass is first to move. He bets out how much? Seven thousand. Seven thousand. And the continuation bet. I think the pot was about 14,000 before he said Lee out. Yes. And he's made the call. The turn comes, 10 of spades. No, I was. out again. Car. 
A very small stack left. And his opponent one goes all in. So unless he I has think he, absolutely I think, nothing, he, I think he's priced into call. Unless yeah. he has absolutely nothing, as you said, I totally agree. agree. Must be like sixty or seventy thousand in the pot at least. With sixteen thousand behind him, I don't see how he cannot make the call unless he's have a complete crap hand. <laughs> and the board with the four and two of diamonds and the nine of clubs and ten of spades, what could they possibly have? A set perhaps? Perhaps cars have the top pair, but is he scared of the set? If you have a top or maybe pair, the ace king, maybe the, maybe the ace, now. maybe the ace king, and he didn't hit. Tough spot for cars, it seems. Sixteen thousand behind him in a seventy thousand pot. I think he's gonna fall. Otherwise, he would call by now. Yes. I think Pashina has been taking advantage of his uh, insecurity, trying to steal the part, perhaps. Or maybe he has the better hand. It's all on cars now. Will he make the right decision? If he folds the hand, he has a very short stack. Oh, yes. But is it still a verb? And he's giving up a 60, 70,000 pot. Yeah. Must be a very weak hand. There's 16 big blinds. Perhaps he makes the fold. So it's still ace a green, ace stack. king. I think he should make the call with any better pair. A very tough spot apparently for Cass. Trying to talk out information of his opponent. <laughs> Will it make him, him any clever? Well, if he had a hand, he would he, he would be calling. Yes, most definitely. But if he doesn't have a hand, why hasn't he folded yet then? <laughs> Maybe it's ace king of diamonds. Or trying to save face. Yes. That will be the most likely. But it's a huge pot. <laughs> and he made the fold. I'm not sure which player showed his hand, which was a king and a queen. And we lost another four players, so we're down to 76 players out of the 168 players we started with on day one. But a very, but a very tough putt for Cass. He lost 
more than half his stack. Yeah. Now down to 16 big blinds. Yeah. And he's in again. This time holding. Yeah. From first That's position. A still a heavy push for 16 big blinds. Yeah, but well, he's in a position now. So if he raises, he's vertically all in anyway. Yes. If you play a hand at these levels, you're practically committed. Yeah. And some of the other players might be thinking he's tilting now. So if he has a workable hand, he might as well go all in and, and get someone to. That's the psych psychological game behind the scene. Yeah. Is he tilting and or is he not? And trying to present as he that he is. But Holm, the Danish player, has made the call. No, he folded. No. No concert. <laughs> so, uh, 2,500 chip up for Kaas. And he's in the big blind now. But Thomas, you must know the feeling. You played four hours yourself last night at the TV table. Yeah, that's right. I played the four last levels. If they won a. Yeah. So if you're not used to being in a tournament or a live tournament anyway, it can be a little bit stressful. And it's also very hot to be on the TV table. I could imagine. <laughs> because you got all the spotlights. But it must be, um, be the hardest part now with the blinds rising. Yeah, it depends on your uh, chip stack. But actually, if you've got a small chip stack, your decision is now down to either folding or going all in. Yeah. So I guess, I guess most the, game, the play actually gets a lot easier. Yeah, that's because true. You only got these two decisions to make. Your options are limited. Yeah, that can be stressful, or that can be. Uh, <laughs> I think it's easier. Or it can be easier. But I guess most players would prefer to, at this point, to opt for the push and advance to day two with a decent stack than with a small stack. Yeah. Well, it was a good feeling going to day two, but in yeah, you were well above average. <laughs> <laughs> But if you don't really bring anything to day two, you are actually... Yeah, you're left with the only same option. Yeah. So Brian, you also played a few Unibet Opens. Have you played against any of the players at the TV table? Um, not at this TV table though, but I made it to a day two uh, at a Unibit Open event, I think it was last year, but uh, I had a run of bad luck and flopped two pairs against the, against the inside straight draw and he made the call. He didn't get the inside straight, but uh, he got the runner runner flush instead to yeah. bust me out. <laughs> so that was my day two. <laughs> but that's poker, it's yeah. a game. I played a little bit against Paul Volkendorf. Only for a shoot, short time. But he has won a Unibet Open, so he's a high level player. Yeah. I think in general, um, of course, poker skills needed to play a Unibet Open. There's no doubt about it. To get rising. this far or to get to day two, you, you need to have your, your skills intact. Yeah. Okay. To have very good skills. But in order to win or to get very far to the final table, you need that last bit of luck. Yeah. 
and this hand goes down. But above all, I guess you need to have big balls to make the right <laughs> decisions at the key decisive moments. Yeah. And we got 13 minutes left of level 9. Level 10 is the last level for tonight. That means we've got just over one hour left of day 1B at this Unibet Open Econ. And we are uh, 76 players left out of the 168 players at the start. So more than half the players have left the tournament so far. Or left day 1B. That means we've got an average type just over 44,000. Let's see the next time. <laughs> All folded so far. Yeah, it's a battle between the blinds, small blind just called, and big blind checked. We've got the flop quite interesting. Five, six, seven with two spades. A dangerous flop. Very dangerous. <laughs> big blind bets, 2,000. Small blind calls. Turn comes, ace of clubs. It goes check check and the river comes ten of hearts. And again check check. And the seven three wins the pot. <laughs> I have a button raise, small blind folds. And the big blind has made the call. And it's two of the biggest stacks on the table. Could be an interesting pot. Flop comes five of diamonds and the king and eight of spades. The big blind leads out. It's 2100. Mm. Initial, initial razor is folding. And the big but he hit the king. Yeah. 
ce qui est très intéressant. I think I would have just checked. Must have been a weak kicker since he didn't opt for the check race. But a race from uh, either Odin or the Gun or the Bottom could be anything. So let's see. That's true. You should give him a chance to to race into you. But then again, you don't want to give away a free card and let him catch the ace in the turn. But most likely he would give you use a continuation in bed. Yeah, that's true. And you can win racing. Danish player Holm has made the race to 2,200, not 3,200. We've got a two-way action. He can't the flop, the three of hearts, king of spades and six of diamonds. Hold again leads half. And the sweet holds. Yeah. A quick fold. we have a long on the big line one of the small stacks down to 24 or about and 24, again 000. Danish player home is leading out with a 2200 bet It's folded all around. And he wins blinds and antis. Because how much is one round? 1500 in blinds and 100 in antis. Yeah, they're nine. It's about 2400 yeah. in one round. So you need to steal. Some of the pots on this level. And especially for the two short stacks. Small blind, Alonso now. Yes. And under the gun, position three. It's also a small stack. I think the cars one. need to make a move. Unless he wants to continue to day two with a stack smaller than his starting stack. Took a huge hit in that first part recovered. Yeah, and we got four minutes left. Oliver now. Yes. 
and level 10 the blind raises to 600 and 1200 still with an anti of 100 also alonso in the small blind now is only about starting stack size we're down to 71 players now and that means the average stack has gone up to just over 47,000 and Valkenburg and Burgina for the flop Jack and two of clubs and the queen of hearts Gina leads out with the continuation bet And Valkenburg for the call. This could be an interesting part. A two clubs. And another three clubs. And another queen. Very interesting. Instant check. And an instant fold. Gina folds. Valkenburg wins the pot. So I'm guessing he had no queen and no club in his hand. <laughs> and this will be the last hand on level 9. So, about one hour left to play. But Thomas, what do you think of these, uh, this event here in the Cannes? The whole setup in Cannes? Up? Well, I always like the sunny destination. <laughs> I come from Copenhagen, so we're not used to uh, having uh, uh, this warm climate. Yeah, it's a very nice destination, but also I think the casino is handling things quite well. Very efficient dealers, everything is running smoothly. Yeah, actually, and the hotel we're living at is... Um, All in. Uh, yeah, the majestic barrier, it's exceptional. Yeah. That's why it's the great island. I think Unibet really makes the players here feel special. You qualify and you get this great hotel deal and you play this game with good levels and you really get a lot of value and experience as a player even though you, you'll meet your run of bad beats but all in all I think it's a great experience. And one of the things that characterizes the Unibet Open is a lot of players know each other and then come back year after year. Exactly. So you, I've been here, I think this, I played yesterday, sorry, the day before yesterday, and this is my first team's event. Um, I think we're on a break now. Yeah. We'll have a players will have a ten minute break before commencing to the, the last final level. Final level, but we'll just play the last hand of level nine with Andy's at one hundred and blinds at five hundred one thousand. And everyone forward? Yeah, everyone forward to the big line. Which we'll be having a 10 minute break. Please stay with us and we'll be back.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Univet Open here in Cannes. We're in the last level of the day. We're in level 10. The blinds are 600, 1200 with a running ante of 100. We currently have 70 runners left out of 168 that started today. That is an average stack of 48,000. So, what are we going to do for the last hour? Are we going to get a number of bust outs? Paul Valkenberg, a Unibet hero, up to nearly 100,000 now. So hopefully we get a bit of action for you. Um, if not, we'll obviously run through some other things, um, such as um, what's happening in the, over the next couple of days, um, amongst other things. Uh, let's have a look. We have a lady in the room. <laughs> Anytime you want. Yeah, say so, well, it's no, it's a different one now, I think. Um, yeah, we've got Paul Valkenberg on there now, so yeah, you ready? Hello, how are you? Hey, I'm <laughs> fine. <laughs> how are you I, doing? I'm good, yeah. How's the beer going down? Oh, it's nice, yeah, yeah, always. I'm remaining professional. It's Friday. I know. Friday evening. <laughs> there'll be beer. There'll be beer in 55 minutes. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Ah, you're okay. So Are what's going on? Um, Is there a nice? Give us a heads up. Well, we got Paul Valkenberg um, on the table at the moment. All right, nice. And he's up to just under 100,000, which is a very good stack at the moment. Now we've had this table for about three hours now, I think. Let's see what we have. Twenty-seven. Uh, nice variety. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Chip stacks. How's everyone doing at home? Um, people in the chat? No, not very much in the chat at the moment. Um, yeah, what are you doing at home? Um, I know it's number Friday. one, it's Friday night. Why are you in the house <laughs> for a start? Um, <laughs> but what else? What are, what are you? What are you watching for? Um, do you have friends in the tournament? Are you interested in poker? Uh, do you like my voice? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> why? Why are you online? Why are you watching us? Let us know. Um, yeah, let us know. I'm any questions? Interested. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's good. It's getting the end tomorrow. We have day two. End of day one B. Yeah, so we're gonna have some. What's uh, the biggest surprise of the day? You reckon? That Matthias Mulhusen's out. <laughs> yeah, I just I just chatted with him. He was a bit disappointed, but. And I think he lost some sort of a bet, so he has to wear a Kiwi, kiwi outfit next ah, time. Ah, so he lost. Excellent. <laughs> I think so, yeah. Wow. <laughs> so next time, I think he has to come in a Kiwi outfit, so I was not really happy about that. I was telling him earlier he should have put £100,000 on, uh, on the sports betting side of it. And then obviously when he lost, he would have had €600,000. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the odds on him were six. The odds were six so to it's yeah. quite a nice... That's where the... Where the gamble? Yeah, I would have put a tenner. Well, yeah, if if if, <laughs> if he was a bit uh, a bit nasty, let's say, he could have easily put a hundred thousand on, went out for his hand, and <laughs> walked home with six hundred thousand. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't know who is gonna back him for a <laughs> hundred thousand. He could yeah. have bought like six new Audis. <laughs> I can only presume that uh, there must have been a, a limit on how much you can actually... Uh, I was just thinking, because like, oh, if I have 100k, which colour would I buy? 
I'd buy a black and a white one. But you need 200k for it. Yeah, but you're you're betting 100k and you're getting 600k back anyway. You can uh, buy yeah, six, you can get one in every colour. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one for every, nearly every day of the week yeah. except Sunday. Ah, well, you get your steak back as well, so you can actually buy the seven. <laughs> that would be cool, the yeah. same colour. I would go for white, I think. Yeah, I think the white looks classy, yeah. 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 That's the uh, the Aston Martin that I took the photograph of outside. Beautiful yeah, car. there's some awesome cars yeah, down here. Yeah, lovely cars outside, yeah. How much is that going to cost you? Ooh, I don't know. Um, 130, 140k English? Yeah, oh gee. Pounds. Yeah, about 170,000 euros, something like that. Yeah. Just a, a small uh, car. <laughs> for the girl, for the woman. Yeah. What's the weather going to be for tomorrow? The weather for tomorrow is nice and sunny, uh, sunny all week. We've got 25 degrees tomorrow. Yeah, that's been so good. Yeah, so I love if it. you're in England at the moment. I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> unlucky. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. There's no reason why you can't be in Cannes. Come on, it's only, it's only an hour and a half away from England. Yeah, it's like 200, Get 200 flight. euro flight. Yeah, come on. Think Let's of the see sun. What's Paul made a nice building, what a pair of seven. A nice stack. Yeah, he had. He Doing got well. really lucky earlier on. Uh, there was a hand. Yeah, it was like a whole all in. Uh, kind of saw it. Yeah, there was two all ins. He had a. He had Ace King against um, Seven Eight, and the flop comes six. He had six. I think he had a flush. No. Five six eight. Uh, sorry, five six nine. So he flopped the straight. Oh, uh, straight. Paul yeah. had the flush draw. Hit the flush draw on the turn. So the guy yeah, flopped the straight. Important. He flopped. Turned the flush draw, and he's up to what, nearly a hundred thousand now. So. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, so JD says it's uh, it's not really legal if you bet on yourself in a, in That's any true. event. So yeah. Yeah, we understand. We're <laughs> Fair only, we're only making a, we're just know, joking. a comment, yeah. He would never do that anyway. He's a, he's a good guy. Oh yeah, of course. It's the same with like football players. You can't bet yeah, like you can't bet on your own team, yeah. Oh, you know, I'm going to yeah. score today. Yeah, it's more like what if what if you're able to do it <laughs> yeah if you really were yeah you could always get his mum or dad to bet <laughs> <laughs> true <laughs> first of all you need 100k from yeah. somewhere yeah which i don't have Nah, i'm just short i got about 99 but uh <laughs> <laughs> nearly there <laughs> i wish so jd won 90 dollars 90 euros because of it well done jd a brave bet i would never have thought Mateus would be the first one out Oh, true. Normally gets up to at least day two. So. How many people have left? Um, um, 70. Know? We had... Okay, so nearly half, kind of. We started with 170? 168, oh, I 168, think. Oh, 168, yeah. Yeah, we got 70 left um, at the break, so... Um, kind of skint now. Yeah, I put up on, on the, on the um, shout box that we got a... Uh, 70 left, 48k is the average stack. So if you're looking at the stacks at the moment, you've got uh, kind of three big ones above average. Sorry, four big ones above average. And the rest, yeah, there 20, or thereabouts. Yeah, yeah. But that's the nice thing. Anything can happen. Like, yeah, yeah. You just change so quickly. Well, this is the best level as well, the last level before, before the break for the day because yeah. you get a lot of players um, wanting to either double up or go home. Yeah. Why? Why come back tomorrow with a short stack and not be happy? Come play maybe either play till the end of the night. Rounds, yeah, yeah, yeah get, go get crazy tonight anyway. and see what happens. Yeah. There's always other tournaments tomorrow anyway, so. Yeah, a few side events. Yeah. And our first ever high roller, I think it is. Yeah. First ever high roller tomorrow. event. So. If you have a spare two thousand five hundred euros and you want to play some poker tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Come Welcome on down. to join. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And it was a deep stack, I think. Yeah, it, it will be, yeah. Uh, let's see what's going. So we have 50 minutes left.
I'm always curious, people wearing headphones, I'm always curious what they're listening at. Yeah, um, I don't really like dance music that much, but when I'm playing poker, I listen to dance music. Yeah, that's like my workout. Yeah, it's my workout. Pumps you up. I like yeah. hardcore music. Like yeah, <laughs> it's a good crazy. <laughs> when I have to run, <laughs> oh, I don't want to run. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I, I don't know. I don't what they're li listening song. at. Like. Yeah. Well, you can't listen to music at the feature table. You can't have the electronic equipment on because of the the radio waves and mm, the, yeah. the chips uh, having the micro sensors in. So you can't use your phone. That's why he has his headphones around his neck. I mean, yeah. You can't do anything. So, guys at home, what do you listen to when you're playing poker? What's your What's your soundtrack? We were mentioning earlier on as well a player, um, Alec Barovas from Lithuania. He now has a chip stack of 196,000 chips. Which is massive for this level of the, of the day. Yeah, how, how much? 196. One? Oh wow, he's double. Oof. Yeah, so it's almost double what uh, Paul Valkenberg is. Nearly 100. Quentin Lecomte's just come over to the company booth to speak to Antoine. We'll find out what he's what he's saying in a moment. Yeah, we think uh, Quentin Lincoln has around about fifty k. He seems pretty happy with himself at the moment. He just came over with a big smile on his face. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> so he either just got a free beer or he's won a hand. One of the two. <laughs> Sprite. Mm. Mm, lovely for a Friday evening. I'm enjoying my uh, nice uh, cold beer here. Yeah, you've got a nice little Heineken there, yeah? Yeah, nice little Heineken export. Not bad. Not Always bad. good. Not my favourite beer normally. It's a bit strange having the... Uh, the lady drinking the beer and the guy drinking the, the <laughs> yeah. soft drink. So what's wrong yeah, here? What's I don't know on? what's this going on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm wearing the trousers. You are, yeah. Don't be afraid, don't be afraid though, guys at home. I, I am wearing trousers as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's wearing an ice ski. I gave him my, my skirt. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> Next time, shave your legs, please. I know, I know. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> or wax them. <laughs> The only downside, if you drink beer, you need to go to the toilet. Yeah, that's right. But I do need a break in a <laughs> minute. <laughs> so guys on Twitter as well, anybody playing at the moment, what are you doing? If you want to mention us, give us a shout at, uh, at Unibet Open. Or if you're going to do um, a hashtag, it's uh, Unibet Can. Let us know what you're doing, what you're up to, who you're following. Ah, there we go. Quentin Lecomte to open shove 16,000. Uh, je, je, je call ace nine, you like king queen. A flip. He then turned the nine and rivered an ace. So he looked, boxed himself back up to 50k. <laughs> nice. A nice one, and just before the end of the day. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I have a few people in the chat. Yeah, I hope JD everyone is saying, okay. Uh, it's a Dutch beer, Heineken. Yeah. I'm from Holland. Exactly. She's, she's keeping the, the the Dutch economy go, yeah. you know, afloat. The thing is, I I don't know what the difference is. Maybe someone knows at home, but I always like. The export beer, it's different. Is it, well, it, it would be brewed in a different place, wouldn't it, I presume? Or I don't know, maybe the percentage is different or the ingredients, I don't know, mm. but it tastes nice. But yeah. at home, I never ever drink Heineken. Well, if anybody knows the difference between the Heineken at home and Heineken export. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're welcome. Please let, let us, us know. know. Yeah, yeah. Is it, it tastes better. <laughs> oh, what's there? The King. Yeah, we just had check check on the flop and the turn here. Pair of kings. Queen ten for a, and pair of tens. So kings and tens with an ace kicker. Old Zoe takes the pot again. 
I believe he made a final table. Um, I like his pink shirt. A while ago, yeah. yeah. And a metal poker listens to extremely heavy metal because <laughs> oh, wow. it gets him pumped to crush the tables. Uh, like what, Rammstein or? Yeah, what type of heavy metal do you listen to? What's your favorite track? And Bolo says Polish beer and vodka is the best. <laughs> well, yeah, I agree with you there. <laughs> Yeah, vodka is good. I like a bit of... Uh, what is a Polish beer? Which brand is Polish? Yeah, Bolo, what, what brand is Polish? Or what, what, what is the Polish beer called? Do they have a beer in France? Is there a French beer? Um, yeah, uh, Stella. Stella Artois. I thought it was Belgium. No, it was Belgium, isn't it? Yeah. And it's disgusting. Anyway. I don't know. I don't like Stella. I think... Pi- but I think that's... Cheer. French like beer. Pivo. Cronenberg. Is that French? It's got to be, surely. It sounds really uh, scan- from Scandinavia. Yeah, Google French beer. French beer. I did just drink wine here, most probably. Yeah, Cronenberg 1664. Is it? Yeah. But that really doesn't sound French at all. Let's have a look. Once oh, really? yeah, Cronenberg, right. beer de gare. Oh, no one knows that one. No, I think it's just Cronenberg will do. Yeah, just drink wine. And obviously nice wine, yeah. yeah. Bolo, um, one of my favorite vodkas is uh, Stolichnaya. What? Stolichnaya or Stolichnaya? I don't know what it is. Bolo, is that a Polish vodka? I'm sure it is. I love Google, Wikipedia. What did we ever do without, without <laughs> yeah. Google? Why I don't know what I did 10 years ago. I don't actually remember Polish anything vodka. before Google, <laughs> which is scary, isn't yeah. it? You know what I mean? What, what do we used to do? Polish vodka company. Let's have a look. Polish beers, that's what we were looking for as well. Let's have a look. Dibau Desperados. Desperados? Really? Really? I love Desperados. Lech. Zuber. Zuzji. Is not Desperados can't be Polish. No, it's Mexican. I have thought so, yeah. I don't even know how to pronounce all those things. No, no. Nice vodka. Vodka is good. On Thursday, I uh, won a bet. What was the bet for? With a ah, it was a really funny app. It's just an app. You put your phone, um, you know, the screen on the table. Yeah. So you put it upside down. And uh, we were with four. You just pick it up, you lift it up, and then the app uh, gives you a card. So it shows a card. Okay. And then when you flip it again, and you pick it up again, it gives another card. Ah. So it was really, it's not even a game. It was just <laughs> a bet. Like, okay, who, who gets the lowest cards loses, and had to buy a round. But the round was a tequila, <laughs> uh, a whiskey, coke, and a beer. But I won, I was lucky, because yeah. it was a very expensive round. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, it will be, yeah. <laughs> but I think we... I don't, it was called a triple crown, but I still don't know what a triple crown is. I think it's a beer, a spirit, and a liqueur or a shot, I think, yeah. Ah, so that was a triple yeah. crown. Yeah. Okay, now I get it. There's also a game as well. I don't know if you've ever played it with any of the guys here. Um, when you go for a meal with, obviously, friends, uh-huh. and you're not with your partner at home. Okay. You, you know, your partners are not with you. Everybody puts their mobile phone on loud. And you put it upside down okay. on the table like that, and you put all the mobile phones on top of each other. All right. And the first person to check their mobile phone, or answer a call, or take a text, has to pay the bill. <laughs> Ooh, so yeah, that you have conversation. You don't have texting. You don't have Facebook. You don't have nothing like that. But so it's, it's a so bit of a, fun, like if your wife's ringing you, you think shit. What am I going to do? 
yeah, am I gonna, I'm not going to answer it because I'm going to go. But she's going to be angry. Yeah, so exactly. I, what do you want? Yeah. Pay money or listen to her <laughs> when you come home? Yeah, it's a good game. But it's so funny. Like these days, I just can't. Sometimes I'm like, oh, my, my battery is dead. And I'm like, oh. Yeah, what exactly. Do? It's a panic. You think, oh, no, what am I going to do? Quite terrible. What do we do before the internet and mobile phones? I remember I had a pager when I was young. Yeah, my mom used to page me. Get home now. Like a late. beeper. Yeah, yeah like, yeah. and I had to go to a a phone booth or something yeah. like call her like yeah what's up yeah dinner's <laughs> ready it's like oh okay I know it's 5.30 I'm like wow that's like 10 years ago no 15 years ago maybe that's scary isn't it when you think yeah. about it like that yeah no, you but know in, I'm a fan of uh, Snapchat yeah yeah <laughs> it's so funny it is I don't funny. know if you know Snapchat yeah I, I'm, but a, it's I'm, funny. I'm on you Snapchat as well yeah, yeah. it's brilliant I just wish you could sometimes replay them yeah, yeah, you can't. Once it's gone, it's gone, and you think, "Oh no, I'd love no, to I see think that that's again." The part, that's the best thing. Yeah, because yeah, you have to savor it. You have to watch it, you know. Yeah. But uh, I've had quite a few good Snapchats, and. But before yeah. we had a conversation, like, okay, which is the best outfit to play poker in? I don't know, guys at home, if you have a nice idea, we need to get Graham in an outfit next time. <laughs> so what? What would you prefer? What him do you to want wear? me to wear? Yeah. <laughs> get, I'll get it. Just let me know what, cool. and I'll I'll get the outfit and we take a picture. Yeah, what do you want me to wear in the next uh, live live streaming? For yeah, Riga. In Riga, yeah, yeah. Okay, let us know and I'll. I'll Something nice though, not you know. No, don't. I don't mind to anything. Him. I don't mind anything crazy. No, don't but, uh, listen to him. It has to be crazy. <laughs> no, yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> I, I don't mind crazy things. That's that's good. Okay, that's good. But, uh, so come up with some ideas and make it good though. Make it happen. Make it a good crazy thing, not a not a crap predictable crazy thing. Yeah, make okay, not like just an outfit. Like yeah. We need to be able. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to make it myself. I just need <laughs> to be able to buy it and I'll get it. Are you going to wear it? Is that a promise? <laughs> yeah, it's an awesome one. <laughs> Halloweener costume. <laughs> Halloweeny. <laughs> Halloweeny. <laughs> so if anyone has a nice idea, send us a link, we'll look it yeah. up. Yeah. Why not do both of us? Huh? Why not pick one for me and one for you? Uh, no, it was you oh, first. Oh, it's all changing now. <laughs> no, I don't mind because in Holland we have carnival. Yeah. And I love to dress up. up. Yeah, so yeah. for me it's not even a punishment, that's a celebration. <laughs> it's all good. No, I don't mind. I'm yeah. so used to dressing up. I will dress up on in fancy dress for the final table. So what do you want me to wear for the final table? Dress oh, as yeah. fancy dress. And then you can see me sometimes because they do have the cameras pointing to us on the final table as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll be able to see uh, us yeah, that time, yeah. Come up with some funny. I, will, I don't yeah. mind, I'll dress up. We'll all I dress like up. it. You were saying earlier we should have a theme kind of charity poker event where everybody plays and gets like dressed up in fancy dress. dress. Poker yeah. yeah. A special one off side event in Riga. Donate <laughs> half of the funny. money to charity. And then, you know, press will go mad, the media coverage will be fantastic. Yeah, it's better than uh, all naked. I prefer a dress. Yeah, poker, Pokerista said that the Triple Crown of Poker is made up of the European Poker Tour, the World <laughs> Poker Tour and the World Series. Yeah, we weren't talking about poker. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about the alcohol Triple Crown. The alcohol Triple Crown. <laughs> a a beer, a spirit and a shot. I don't know where, where it came from. I never heard of it. Um, in oh, in poker, you've got the triple crown there, um, which is the three major events in the world. Mm -hmm. You win a bracelet or a trophy from all three, you've won the triple crown. Um, same goes for for rugby as well. There's kind of um, you might beat your your three other nations and then you win the triple crown, and it's one of these the honoring like yeah, you you do three good things and that's the triple crown. So cool. it's uh, it's all in all forms of life, but uh, yeah, the alcohol one is quite clearly yeah, the best. Yeah, it was really yeah. nice, tasty tequila, a beer, and. Uh, the thing is, I don't know what the second one was. Some spirits. Yeah, yeah. But I. So the vodka, yeah. So like a beer with a vodka with a spirit. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's tasty. If you do it all in one glass as well, that's quite entertaining. So you <laughs> no. get a pint glass. Like Jager bombs. No. Yeah, oh. a pint glass with a shot of vodka in it. In a, in a little tumbler inside the pint glass. And then a shot glass inside the tumbler. Wow. And you have to chug it down. I think I go, one is fine, but then I have to go back to bed. <laughs> it's like Jager bombs. Yeah, yeah. You ever had a champagne bomb? No. Instead of using the Red Bull, you use champagne. Really? And it's a posh one. Unbelievable. 
two of those and you'll not be speaking again the rest of the night. Yeah. That's good. I, I didn't know about the Baby Guinness, but I actually quite like that shot. Which one's Baby Guinness? I don't actually know which liquor they use, but it looks like a really small, tiny Guinness. Okay. So it's some, I think it's Bailey's with... I, don't, I forgot what they use, but it looks like it's a dark one. Right, so right. it looks like a Guinness. But it's actually really nice. <laughs> Dress up as a uh, pregnant nun. That's so funny. <laughs> it's a Dutch side, is it? Who's giving yeah, the. Yeah, it's in Dutch. Uh, JD. Um, said you should wear the pregnant nun suit. <laughs> <laughs> that's so awesome. Yeah. I think that's a good one. Can we order it online? Cool. Yeah, 40, 44 euros. That's fine. I'm sure we can make one cheaper than that. Yeah. It's only a black black robe and, and a, a white uh, hood, yeah. So. We already have a little bit of the belly. I've got the but pregnant nun already. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm all right. Months. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I would say five months. Thank you. Thanks. With twins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 well, I've got twins at home, so. Oh, you do? Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. Twin, twin boys. boys. Yeah, four. Oh, well, my God. How old are they? I've got four boys. Um, 12 year old, four boys? 12 year old stepson. Okay. Um, twin six year olds. Six, oh, my God. And a three year old. Oh, cute. That's the new One Direction. <laughs> 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 oh, they look so naughty. They are extremely naughty. Nah, they're good boys. They're good boys, really. Yeah, and it's fun. It's fun. It's, they have to be naughty. Yeah, that's what kids do. That's what kids are all about, <laughs> isn't it? So, so which ones are... Those are the, are the, the twins? The twins in the... Si in the oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they look nothing so like each other. No. But, uh, that's twins, my littlest, and my stepson. He, how old is he? Twelve. Okay. Twelve, six, and three. Yep. Oh, funny. Wow. Good fun, though. Yeah. Yeah, so... Did I miss their daddy? Uh, yeah, I've been speaking to them do? tonight. Yeah. Okay. Just before they go to bed, I give them a call and yeah, it's just a settle few days. them down a little bit. Yeah. It's just a few days doesn't really yeah. matter. Well, um, the money that I'm getting is for the Christmas presents. <laughs> yeah. Obviously delivered off Santa Claus, of course. Uh, yeah, they don't. <laughs> for the Christmas. Yeah, it's funny because in Holland we don't have uh, Santa Claus. We have Sinterklaas. Uh, no the one same knows. Thing. No, it's not. Google it. It's different. <laughs> and I always try to explain because now I live in England. And no one knows. Really? And like, it's so different. Yeah, and I, it's the 5th of December, and we have a. They, they go into the chimney. I know it's really. It's the, fifth, the 5th of December? Yeah, we don't really celebrate. It's kind of getting a bit more popular, but. Yeah. It's not as popular as uh, Santa Claus. Yeah. We don't really have Santa Claus. We have Santa Claus. 5th of December, they climb through the chimney, drop the presents. Yeah, I'm, I don't know why we believe it's true. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, uh, it is. You can't say that. <laughs> it is <laughs> true. I don't think anyone is uh, is ever no. over 80. It should be fine. <laughs> and if not, just I'm sorry. Yeah, exactly. Your mum should have told you ages ago. Yeah. <laughs> but it is good. It's. I still love it. Just gonna jump oh, on the wow. on the board here. Yeah, we've got a two three king of spades. Um, we've got Paul two good players. Paul is getting a bit tired. <laughs> yeah, he's. Uh, he's like, oh, oh, 30 minutes. It looks like you've got a good man boob there going on as well. Oh yeah, he's breastfeeding. He's got some moves, son. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the boy is so cute. Yeah, I've seen the pictures it's on Facebook. Yeah, uh, I know he's here now. I'd like to say hello and kind of meet his, yeah. meet his little boy. But uh, yeah. He even took him to the play, like the party. Really? <laughs> yeah, That's he nice. was just sleeping, like, even with the music. But it was outside. That's a I good mean, baby. it was fine. A yeah, good it was baby who will sleep. Run a terrace yeah. and. You know, it was not the insider in a club, but yeah. it was just sleeping. I was like, oh, it's so good to be a child. Eat, sleep. Eat, sleep, and that's, that's life, it. Yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Drink. <laughs> <laughs> so what's happening. Come on. No idea. How long we got left? 30 minutes, uh, 47 hour. seconds. Yeah. yeah. We've got... I can't even see the board. You can't even read that over there. 30? What do you want to know? How many players are remaining, Natalie? 67. We've got 67 players so remaining. So good we have Natalie. 
What's Natalie's life just, without Natalie? She's just the best, isn't she? <laughs> she is the best. <laughs> I definitely think we should have a fancy dress costume tournament though. Yeah. Definitely have a fancy dress costume tournament in Riga, side event. And I'll have a, had a thought as well. We should get in touch with the Book of World Records for the <laughs> biggest fancy dress poker tournament. Imagine the media coming from that. The, the yeah, well if we, if we get 30 or 40 players doing it, it'd be fun. The look, photographs, look. the advertising, the press. Yeah, we've got a banana and a kiwi fruit already. And a donkey. Got a donkey from with, with Eggy. Someone can come dress as a carrot. Well, look it up. Let's see if there's some Guinness. I'm sure. Cause I've been advised I need to go dressed like this. Pregnant nun. If it loads up. Ah, uh, you can't buy it anymore. No. <laughs> it's not working anymore. Sold out. Yeah. So popular, high demand. Oh, there we oh, go. Oh, there it is. As a pregnant nun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go as a priest. So you got me pregnant then? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. It's like my... No, I was like to say it's also just like, no. <laughs> uh, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Zip it. Zip it. Yeah. Well, I was watching, I'm um, not sure, like, I know everyone's going to hate me if I bring up this subject, but I was watching uh, The X Factor. No, sorry, it's good. Sorry. Yeah. I love it. But it was a really weird question, but I think I can ask you. Okay. I think we're bonding here. We are, we are. But they were asking, like, would you rather... It's a bit disgusting, but I think it was funny, because I was thinking, okay, what is the best? Would you rather pee through your eyes or... Do number two through your nose. Oh, pee through your eyes. Really? Easily. Easily. Can you imagine the smell every day? You would never yeah. stop smelling. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah. Oh, easy. That's an but easy one. Still like Here's a good question for you. You have to pee a lot. Yeah, but you, even just once a day, you're going to have stuff stuck inside your nose. Yeah, it's true. And it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> yeah. And then if you get a runny nose, it's, a, it's the end of the world. Oh, oh, wait, yeah, I didn't think of you that. You didn't think of that one, yeah. Oh, well, okay, yeah, pee through my eyes. Here's a know. question for the guys at home and for yourself. Okay. What would you rather be, deaf or blind? Oh, I know. I, I'm, I'm scared of the dark, so deaf, for You'd sure. You'd rather be deaf. And I think sometimes it's nice to be deaf, to not listen to someone. So, always <laughs> so, so you'd good. have to listen to me on commentary. <laughs> yeah, I could do like uh, uh, sign language and yeah. stuff. I, but no, I, I'm scared, like... I can't imagine being blind. It would be awful. I, I would prefer to be deaf myself, but uh, not being but able to hear. I have so much hear. respect. Like if you know, you know, you as well. You live like in London. You have a tube. Yeah. I'm so have such respect for people that go in blind with, with a stick and, like and they can't see where they're with going. With a dog, yeah. I'm like, how does the dog know which is eastbound or westbound, like <laughs> or north <laughs> or south? Or where how they're actually know? going? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to Waterloo. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Roof. Okay. I'll take you there. <laughs> But I like no, no. But I've been to one of those. How's it called? Silent disco. Yeah, no, yeah. It's not, is it? Yeah. We wear the headphones. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. so fun because you all listen to different music. Like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> it's nothing really has to do with that deaf or blind. But and ha another question we had was, um, how much would it take for you to lose one of your legs? Oh shit! In money or money wise. You can replace it with a prosthetic leg, you can have a wheelchair, you can have anything you want afterwards, but you have to lose your leg at your knee. Oh, a knee's not too bad. So from your knee down, how much would it cost, how much would you need money-wise for them to do that? Uh, uh, for the rest of your life, remember, you don't get it back. Okay, at what age so I am? Because it depends on how old I am. Now. Now? Yeah. I'm 30. So at least I had fun for 30 years. Oh, I really don't know. But I'd rather lose a leg than an arm. Yeah, I, I would probably do the same as well. Well, I don't know. I'm quite lazy. I, I think <laughs> being in, in that sense, at least I can maybe sit in a wheelchair every now and then. Yeah. They push me around. Exactly. You get like The benefit is you get really nice seats at concerts. Sports events. Sport events. On the, on, on, the, on the train. 
Yeah. You're on dedicated seating everywhere. Yeah, that's quite good. Well, I don't know. It's so difficult because I do think it's not really worth. It's not really worth any money. I think. I said uh, it would take probably one, one and a half million. Because why? It's not that much. You can. What can you buy? Like a house or something. Yeah, but you know? you, can get, you you can adapt your house. You can buy a disabled disability car. You can buy. They're not um, cool at all. They're, they're no, ugly. but you can obviously adapt things with that money. Yeah, and then yeah but, you but, can but go then what's away, the point? Go on holiday, you can play poker, you can drink as much as you want. You're a millionaire. Yeah, but I do that anyway. <laughs> 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 no, but I mean, okay, you get money. So you, you, with that money, you're going to buy uh, special, like a special car you need to adapt to your yeah, house. Yeah, but even if you said half a million on, on special things, you then have you a million money, to enjoy yeah. yourself. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think it's a good idea. How much would you think? Come on. Well, I would way. say a ridiculous amount, like 20. 20 million? Because at least I can give my family a bit of money. I can buy a boat. But it's you who's got the low leg. Why would you give your family money? Unless they're going to push you around. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Someone has to take care of me. Yeah, exactly, who's going yeah. to gonna, like, clean my, my shoe? <laughs> like my one shoe. I have your, 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 your fancy dress outfit here. Uh oh. Which oh you had no. a suggestion for. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, a looks nice. Well, if I, yeah, with those legs, I would say yes. But <laughs> I'm not blonde. It's, it's a bit too expensive, I'm sorry. Yeah, we're not going to pay 50 euros. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's 50 too euros. expensive. But yeah, thanks. It's a nice one. It's sexy. Yeah. So it's going to be a nun and a snowflake. A nun and a snowflake. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Some good jokes there. A nun and a snowflake went to a party. <laughs> <laughs> Men and snow a nun and a snowflake walk into a bar. Oh, anything and can happen. And then walks out pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> How did that happen? Who knows? Okay, I need a small break, if that's okay. Yeah, no I'll worries. I'll come back. You enjoy yourself. So back to the action. Uh, we've had a bit of a, a fun time over the last 30 minutes. Uh, Notch is uh, not letting us really commentate very much. But uh, yeah, back to the action. We've got uh, Bujina, Smedman and Valkenberg. Uh, Paul has raised it up here. So you've got the bet of Smedman to 3,400. Paul has re-raised. Looks like 10. Is it 10? 9,500. Bujina now with the decision to make. I just actually managed to talk uh, one of our dealers into coming and doing a bit of French commentary. This should be fun. <laughs> so yeah, Paul's raised up to 9,500. Bougenaire uh, is still waiting to make the call here. Um, we'll see what happens. He has the chips in his hand. I'm not sure whether he'll make the call or not. Uh, Paul's made a big bet up to 9,500 here. Um, two players still in the hand, Bougina and Smedman. And I've just talked the French dealer into doing a bit of commentary as well, so. <laughs> no, I was listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no one can hear you. I was on the mute button, <laughs> sorry. So who's up now to decide? Um, Bougina. 
Yelian Bujana. Alright, let's see what's going on. 9,500 to make the call. What he, do? he has folded, yeah. And we have uh, Smedman has made the call. Wow. So yeah, we've got a big pot developing now. What does he have? It's going to be interesting to find out. Um, what do you think he's having? 273 on the flop. It's not really a, an action flop, that. Oh. Um, Paul is in position as well. Ten of clubs on the on the turn. Smedman is going to be first to act here. Smedman has actually bet 15,000, which is a very big bet. He's only leaving himself 15,000 behind, yeah. yeah. And I think we have an all-in and a call. Paul has a set of sevens and a pair of jacks for Smedman. So only a jack will save Mr. Smedman. That's a king, yep. Yeah. So we, uh, we lose Smedman. Good news is Paul Valkenberg does add an extra. No. Yeah, by the looks of it, an extra thirty odd thousand, yeah. thirty five thousand, yeah. So excellent stuff from Paul. Yeah, he's added an extra forty seven thousand, so he's now got one hundred and forty five thousand. Excellent work, Paul. Excellent work, yeah. <laughs> you played that well there. Yeah. 18 minutes to go. Yeah. So Paul is now going to be uh, very nicely stacked going into day two. Yeah. Um, sleep well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, he does have a 10-week-old baby in the, in the room. Yeah. <laughs> He'll sleep as best as he can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. What time does the tournament start tomorrow um, I think it's two-ish I think yeah. not 100% sure we are playing around nine levels um, so around two-ish I believe it's actually one o'clock so it starts at 1 p.m. Central European time 12 o'clock in the UK it's Sunday. Sunday is two or three yeah <laughs> How long have you been on? This is her second hour now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fantastic. An hour earlier, an hour now. <laughs> she's doing well. Yeah. yeah. Well, she's, she's a lot of fun. We're, exactly, yeah. we're literally just having fun. Yeah. Give some beers. We haven't watched any poker for two hours. Da bomb. We don't even know what's going on in the poker. Da bomb. Da bomb. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need another round. We need another beer here. Yeah, more beers, please. <laughs> yeah, come on, Andre. Andre, get us Andre, some beers. Two beers. Two beers? Yeah. <laughs> Come on. It's over in 17 minutes. You don't need a beer. We need two beers. Two beers. <laughs> 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 and a shot. We need a Jaeger bomb. It's always, it's always yeah, free. Yeah, come on. Beers? No. Sprite is free. It's Sprite. Yeah. yeah. Sprite and Diet Coke are free, not beers. Come on, Andre. Hey, two so beers. We need two beers. Just order at the bar. Yeah, you just ask the man. Yeah, so Mark is uh, the brains of the outfit. Mark's just telling everybody <laughs> that uh, the live streaming won't start until uh, around about 20 past, uh, half past three Central European time. But the tournament does start earlier. Um, it gives us obviously enough time to set things up and to get our, our players going. Thank you. So yeah, Mr. Mark Partridge, sir, here's the, the brains of the outfit. <laughs> I don't know if he's heard me yet. Pinky, Pinky and the brain. And he's drinking beer as well. Yeah. Wow. Oh, he gets a point. And now they're going to keep on playing basketball games again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> back, back to the important stuff, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, so we got 60 minutes left of day day 1B. Yeah. We got 60. If the barman would move out the way. 63, I think. 63 players left. Yeah. What's the average, Chipka? Uh, 53,333. Do you really want a beer? Should I get a beer? If there's beers on offer. Huh? You'll have beers if there's beers going. 
Yeah, shall I go get a beer? If you want to, yeah. Yeah, okay, I'm back in one minute. I'm gonna get <laughs> us a beer, okay? Heineken? Yeah, why not? So Mark's winning at the basketball shoot uh, on their Apple Mac computers. Um, Mark, I don't understand how you're winning. You were absolutely diabolical earlier on today. Remco was kicking your ass. So was, so was Matt, if I remember right. So we got a uh, Jalon with the raise to 3,000. Michelle Yakov. Has he made the call? Yeah, he's made the call. Paul Valkenberg folds in the big blind. So we've got two people to the flop. Eight, three, nine. Rainbow flop as usual. We're getting uh, quite a few rainbow flops at the moment. We do like it when there's a, a pseudo flop just to try and get some action going. Meshayakov has made the, uh, the check here. Jalen has 67k sitting behind him. Um, what's he going to do? Bet's 4,000. Meshayakov makes the call straight away. Mark, I am mightily impressed. Mark has the highest score at the moment with 207. Well done, man. The nine hours of practicing today has paid off well. All right, I'm back again. Anything interesting happening or? Yeah, we've got a bit of a pot developing. Um, oh, okay. Mesha, your cough and Jelen, Jelen. 22,000 in the middle at the moment. That is, uh, Mark's got the highest score in basketball, apparently. <laughs> 207, so. <laughs> Meshayakov bet 3,000 there. Called by Yellen. Meshayakov shows Jax. Yellen the Queen 10. Queen 10 takes it down, so. Yellen increases his stack by another 15,000 there. And he's now up to just under 85,000. Changing. Yeah, not bad. We've got 11 minutes left to go. A few more rounds. Yeah, 62, rounds. 63 left. Not too bad. We're going to have around about 100 players coming back tomorrow. 100, okay, yeah. yeah. Pretty 46, good. 46, I think, from day one. Yeah. Our 1A. So yeah, about 105, 106 possibly. Let's see, what Paul is really doing well. Yeah, Paul's massive on here. 143,000, which is 119 20. big blinds. Yeah. Alonso is a newcomer to our table. Uh, see if we can get his, his full name for you, if possible. That looks like Alonso there. I don't recognize I him. I thought was a Formula One driver. Fernando. Yeah. Fernando Alonso. <laughs> That would be good if he was here. I don't think it's him. It's a shame it wasn't the, Mon uh, the Monte Carlo Grand Prix this weekend. That yeah. would have been fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the best. 
Sorry guys, can't come into work today. I'm at the Grand Prix. <laughs> yeah, I'm driving past the car now. <laughs> One hour now. Paul's next to act. He's on the small blind, which is 600 at the moment. He puts oh, some yellow chips. He puts Alonso all in. Bunch of yellows. He takes his chips. Ah. Oh, three more so hands. So there's not nine minutes left. We have three more hands left for the rest okay. of the day. So the card has been drawn from the deck. They've said there's going to be three more hands. At the end of these three hands, the players will count their chips and come back tomorrow for day two. Yeah, it was a brilliant day. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a long day, but it's been fun as well. Yeah, I agree. So have you enjoyed your commentary experiences? Have you enjoyed it? Would you do yeah, it again? Yeah, it was fun. And, yeah. <laughs> enjoyed it for me it's good getting new people coming along and saying hello and yeah. doing, a, doing a few hours on here and you've been doing how many hours today I uh, did 10 hours yesterday and oh, wow. eight and a half today so, <laughs> yeah it's not too bad no yeah I'll come back tomorrow yeah sure and I hope everyone likes it I think we've had I think we've had a lot of fun yeah. that's that's what people want to hear they don't want to hear boring talk or too much cards talk. It's, you can see what's happening on the screen, so yeah. you don't need us to tell you what's happening. No, it's nice for the final table. Like, yeah, well, no, it's just final like, table on Sunday. We're going to be yeah. obviously seeing the cards in the air. We'll be anyway, it's a whole lot more professional. You're going to hear obviously analysis by better players. You'll see obviously the cards in the air. It's a totally different game on Sunday. Yeah. Today it's about having fun, getting to know the players, getting to know some of the Unibet stuff. Yeah, and a few new ones as well. Yeah. Some regulars. Yeah. Some actual champions. Yeah. Like. Well, Mateus. We've obviously had Mateus coming through and did an hour's company last night before we went to the party. Yeah. <laughs> we've got Paul, uh, Dan Glimner. So yeah, we, uh, Paul on as well. Yeah. Well, hopefully Paul never comes on because that means Paul's still in the tournament. <laughs> yeah. So we don't want Paul to do any commentary no. this week. But uh, if he does get knocked out, then yeah, we'd love to have Paul back on the, on the, on the live stream. He was yeah, going to do something is yesterday coming tomorrow. tomorrow. Wart is coming tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. We're going to have some interesting... Well, the first person I ever did any commentary with was in uh, was in Paris, and it was Ward I actually worked with. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there was Fabrice, the French manager, and Ward okay. at the same time. So, yeah, uh, Ward kind of helped me into the, the role a bit. He's a good guy. Yeah, he likes it. He likes to talk. He does lot. talk quite a bit, yeah. He <laughs> likes to talk a lot. <laughs> That's when you realise, oh, sometimes it's nice to be dev. JD, what do you mean, was there any card talk? Of course there was. We've done at least three hands in the last hour. <laughs> what is he saying? Too much card talk. Was there any? <laughs> yeah, well, I'll talk about uh, it now. Ah, few. What, 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 what do you want me to talk about? Let's have a look. Okay, so Paul Valkenberg is now raising... I'm sorry, it it's my fault. It's my <laughs> fault. <laughs> yeah, but JD, you've been distracting us with putting pictures on um, a yeah, fancy like dress costumes. Pregnant nuns, pregnant and, nuns and, and strippers. Sexy dresses. <laughs> 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 okay, let's let's, let's we step two more hands. Three more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> two more hands. Okay, two more hands left for today. Sixty-one players, I think. Is that remaining? Uh, uh, Sixty-four or sixty-one. I've never seen a card room have a, a grey background with white writing. It doesn't uh, make yeah, much sense see. at all to, to anybody. Is this the last ten? No. Uh, two more. Last, this yeah, one and then one more, yeah. Bolo, it's been fantastic having you in the chat box again. You're missed over here at the moment. It's a shame you all, you all didn't make it over. Uh, look forward to speaking to you tomorrow. Have a good sleep, my friend. Good Don't night. drink too much beer. <laughs> Don't listen. Don't yeah, listen drink to as much colleague. as you can. <laughs> <laughs> Within reason, obviously, sir. Yeah. We don't need getting upset or injured. Real. 
wear a helmet. <laughs> Safety. <laughs> In a padded room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So Mashayakov here has raised it up to 2,500. You're not going to see many many action hands here in the last uh, last three or four minutes. No, it doesn't happen like that. So fold, fold, fold. You may well get the small blind or the big blind calling here, but they're all happy with what they have at the moment. It's so a fold by Yellen. Holm says, no, I can't be bothered. I'm folding as well. So there you go, that's the second last hand of the day. We are now on the final hand, and I'm going to make a bold prediction. Okay. One Bring person on. will raise, and the rest will fold. <laughs> or is that the last hand? Oh, I think it was. Wow, we've been so excited we missed the hand. Oh, Somewhere. sorry. <laughs> wow, it was awesome. <laughs> Oops. Tomorrow, another day. Yeah, good night, guys, in the chat box. It has been a good pleasure. Good night. Yeah, thanks uh, for joining George, us. George, thank you very much for all of your work. High five. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, it was fun. I'll speak to you tomorrow, of course. Yeah. We'll come on, on the live, live stream and yeah. have some fun. I will. But for everybody in the chat box, everybody from Unibet, uh, we do appreciate watching it. Uh, you're watching us at the moment. Come back tomorrow for some more fun. Thanks very much, guys. Yeah, good see night. See you tomorrow. Good night. Have fun.